The following is a special presentation from E-Star Studios. Gary Harder. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. We are here at the E-Star Studio for the grand conclusion of the Dominion Series 2021, baby. Woo! You have made it to the finals. We are about to watch the greatest for honor in the world. We have a full day of action for you, and I am joined by just the greatest for honor minds that have ever existed on this show. We have our boy, so hinky and vivid nice. Gentlemen, we made it to the end. Ahoy, me pirates. Uh, pirate will not be joining us, but uh, ahoy anyway. Hell, how you doing, vivid? I'm doing great. I know you're a big fan of Pirate, but unfortunately we won't be able to see her today. And I'm just excited for us to finally see the conclusion of this Dominion series. We've had a lot of heated majors leading up to the grand finals here today, and I can't wait to see how it all concludes. Yeah, it's been a long winding road getting here, Naz, but we are here at the finals. I'm super looking forward to seeing the action today. A lot of meta changes, so changes completely and then reverting back about halfway uh, with that Shinobi rework and nerf. So I'm excited to see what the teams are running, who's going to be bringing them out and who's going to be skipping it. But uh, either way, it's going to be good fun today. That's right. Much like Vivid Nas's uh, humor, uh, uh, the Shinobi has been missing throughout the entire show. I'm so happy to have it as we now enter this final. Now, this is how we got here, by the way. Three majors per region. Each team give it points. The highest points make it to the end. You guys know how tournaments work, but here's the important ones. Due to your feedback, double elimination bracket here today with a reset. That means that if the winning team happened to lose, it's a bracket reset and they get to come back in, which makes the grand finals even more hype. And uh, that is extremely exciting for us. In fact, well, let me tell you about the game mode that we're playing, my friends. Dominion, you 1v1 scums. Let's uh, remind you what it is. Dominion is a 4v4 team-based fight to control different areas of a single battlefield. Each map contains three zones that can be captured to gain points. Zone A, B, and C. Zones A and C are captured by staying in the zone for six seconds without any opponents. While in zone B, waves of soldiers fight in a game of tug of war where you push their army to the opposite side to gain control. A team earns permanent points for every second that they control the zone. Once you reach 1,000 points, you're breaking the morale of the enemy team, and they will be unable to respawn. Kill all your opponents while their team is breaking, and you win the game. One thing to know, just because your team is breaking doesn't mean defeat. 100 points can be stolen back by capturing an opponent-controlled zone, and the battle is never over while one of your warriors remains alive. Remember, it's more than just for glory, it's for honor. That's right, my friends, we are playing Dominion here today, the premier eSport mode for For Honor, and it's changed a lot for us, too. Uh, we casters, you know, we're always in groups together playing this, prepping. Uh, I used to be a Warlord spammer, now I gotta be a Shug spammer, but uh, life has really changed for us in Dominion, but the game mode is still the same. Y you still like it as much as you used to, Vivid? Yeah, always been a big fan of Dominion. I think we shouted for this ever since the start of For Honor, that this is the competitive game mode for this game. And what I've loved that we've seen throughout the Dominion series is throughout the majors, there has been a different iteration of how this game mode has been played, whether it be due to how the meta's changed or just the play style of the players. So I'm really excited to see this last iteration in the grand finals for the Dominion series. First of all, Slacks, I just gotta say, Shugoki fits you really well. No one expects someone to throw out as many hugs as you do just with reckless <laughs> abandon. Uh, it's true. <laughs> but in all, in all seriousness though, Dominion, I mean, this mode has the hype built into it. I can't think of anything more cool to watch than the double breaking scenarios that we see sometimes in this game mode. And I'm definitely looking forward to that, perhaps in some grand finals action today, uh, seeing some of that hype. So let's uh, let's get it. Absolutely. Much like my father and his unwanted hugs, we are going to have a little <laughs> hug together and take a very, very wonderful look at these competing teams. My friends, I want to know a little bit about it. So, Hinky, or excuse me, Wakator, just tell me about the team, So, Hinky. 
Yeah, well, we had Nemesis Esports there with some changes. Uh, Russian mind games as well. As you can see, those ominous uh, silhouettes in the background. The Oversleepers overslept Ooh. the first major, but they are here in the finals. And of course, our LCQ winners, extra cool gatchers looking to make a name for themselves here. And we've had a bit of a tumultuous road for these teams to get to the finals. Of course, our top dogs at the number one seed spot, winners of the major two and three. Nemesis Esports are looking to remain the kings of EU, but with a few roster swaps, will they be able to uphold that in the grand finals? And on that second seed, Russian Mind Games, after a very high note on the first major, they've never really quite been able to relive those high moments. And third, we have Oversleepers as our third seed coming in today. They did have a very close upset towards Russian Mind Games, but weren't able to close it out in the last major so looking to do something here and as we said the dark horses coming in from the lcq extra cool gatchers are hoping to walk away with that sweet prize pool and a piece of that pie absolutely let's go ahead and take a look at our bracket here today this is the action that you guys are going to be watching we're going to start off with a nemesis versus the extra cool gatchers and then rushing mind games and over sleepers Dropping down the lowers, you win in the uppers, you go to lowers, you get eliminated, you get decapitated. Not in real life though, don't worry guys, players, you're gonna be okay. And then we make it to the grand final of the final where that big boy Skrilla lives. Very excited to see it and super, super pumped to see who is the greatest Dominion player in all of EU. But I'm even more excited to see my analysts get it wrong yet again. Gentlemen, I would love to know your predictions for this tournament. Uh, it, we've had some rough runs here, Vivid, but this is your shot. This is your chance. Tell me who's going to take it. Look, we're 0-3, and we're about to make an 0-4 <laughs> here today. And I'll be no. predicting Nemesis Esports. Look, 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 I'm telling you. Nemesis Esports, there have been some roster changes. A few staple members have are not part of the team anymore, but we do have a new member in Setmix. We've spoken about this guy before and his impact in his previous teams, and I'm really hoping he can bring it in to Nemesis Esports. Look, if we're going down, we're going down together. I'm going to pick Nemesis Esports as well. Uh, oh. Honestly, just seeing Setmix and Tote Mine back together again, I think that synergy is going to be there. We alluded there's been a lot of roster swaps happening. So just any familiarity, I think, is going to give you an edge on your opponents today. Setmix and Tote Mind have played together quite a bit, so uh, I'm going to give the edge to Nemesis Esports. Absolutely. Much like our pubs together, gentlemen, you will die together on our home point screaming for somebody to protect you. As uh, let's go ahead and see it. not just the players, not just the teams, not just the heroes, but the maps. That's what's so interesting about Dominion, my friends. These are our tournament legal maps here today. And uh, Vivid, what do you think about these bad boys? What are we going to see here today? So we've seen a few iterations of how these, game, uh, how these maps have been played. One that didn't really change that much was Sanctuary Bridge. This one's always a sort of snowball map that we see a few teams kind of going towards if they really want to test that team fighting capability of the other team. But one that's been interesting for me and the evolution of how this map has been played is Overwatch. Initially, we used to see that 2v2 split in C and B, but as the majors kind of went on, we saw a lot more priority be put onto the A point, and I just want to see if there's been any more iterations on how these maps are played coming into the finals here today. Yes, and maps are important coming to the finals, but you know what's even more important is what we're playing for here, the prize pool, and it has been elevated just as you would expect for a grand finals. That is right, you are not reading that incorrectly. $10,000 for our first place team here today. Second place is me walking home with a cool 5,000. Third place with 3,500. And last place, just for showing up today and making it to the finals, you're gonna go home with $2,000. That is 20,500 per region. Ridic. Ridiculous. Woo! That is what I am talking about. That is the Skrilla right there. That's so much steel. $10,000 on straight up steal on your account. Absolutely fantastic. But the players are not the only ones getting prizes, my friends. No, you, the uh, the trusting viewer. You also get prizes as well over on Twitch TV. Make sure that you're answering questions. Make sure that you're watching all day because you can get these fantastic drops just from being here. My friends, they are beautiful for the finals. We've had a lot of uh, Dominion series uh, items so far, but nothing like the fairy tale winter battle outfit. Yes, you can make your own fairy tale about murdering your enemies with this wonderful 
wonderful set. Oh, the fashion is out of control here for the Minion series. And look at that, the Ice Fairies ornament. You know, fairies in real mythological cultures, terrifying beings. They, they bring you to the water, they drown you, they make you have nightmares. I don't know, I don't actually have the ability to read, but that's what I have heard. And then also, of course, a new effect, the Sword of Ice effect. This is the top one. You're gonna have to stick around, answer some really smart For Honor questions all day, but it's absolutely worth it. Look at that beautiful fairy-like effect. Fairies are terrifying, guys. Uh, don't believe the Disney fairy stuff, all right? They're deadly creatures, they bite, they stab. Very frightening guys, but uh, at any rate, my friends, welcome back. What do you think about those rewards? You're a very fashionable guy, Vivid. I've seen your heroes. They, they are very nice. Just as you're saying, I'm actually trying to get these rewards myself. Of course, for the previous majors, I wasn't able to do what you do so expertly, Slacks, and that is multitask and also answer all those questions in a timely manner. But that tier four, I need to speak to someone. I need to get that on my warden to make him look as the most beautiful warden on the battlefield. Yeah, anytime you uh, cut to me during the EU section and it sounds like I haven't been paying attention, that's because I've been answering Azur's questions. I'm not going to lie. I'm trying to get that, uh, that effect for myself. <laughs> that cool stained glass effect sitting on the ground there with uh, with all the bubbles coming up. I need that in my life. Mm. Absolutely. True story. I was begging the For Honor uh, guys on Twitch to do like 10 more questions last round. They did a lightning round at the end just so I could get that beautiful, beautiful effect. And I'll probably do it again here today. I am a shameless, disgusting person who's literally just here for the cosmetics. But uh, unlike me, I know all of you guys are here for the four honors. So let's go ahead and talk about our schedule here today. We have the EMU Major coming up next, of course. That's why you're here. The best of the best playing Dominion. We'll wrap that whole series up at the end with a post-game show. And then we're only halfway done, fam. We've got all of NA to go through. We've got so much for honor. You are in the right place. If you love decapitation and rotation, baby, that's what I'm all about, my friends. So this should be one hell of a day. We're so excited to get it started. So let's head on over to the EU Major. Let's go. It's undefeated. And won't be stopped. The most meaningful way to measure greatness is time. requires so much more. The very best have a unique relationship to time. They feel its unending pressure, yet bend it to their will. Time and again. You arrive at the right place at the right time. And in due time, you become time. Oh, time. It is time, baby. It's time for the EU Grand Finals in the finals. Oh, my boy. Oh, howdy, boy. 2021, we've done, been doing this for a year, my friends. Welcome to the Minion series, ending up 2021 in 2022 with the beautiful humanist. Humanist, oh, I've known you for a few years now, and every day you get you get more aged like wine. It's so good to have you here on our show. How have you been enjoying your time, sir? Oh, I've been having a great time, Slacks. Um, hey, what a warm welcome. It's always a pleasure to be on a broadcast with you as the host, and uh, to be here with Vivid Nas in, in a moment like this with all the best players from around the world coming in here for the finals of the 400, 400 Dominion series, it, it just doesn't get better than this. 
not only do I have a unique relationship with time, I do have a unique relationship yeah. with my casters here today. And I'm excited oh. for the EU side of the bracket. It has been quite the journey getting here to the grand finals. And I can't wait to see how it concludes. Absolutely. Gentlemen, this is going to be one hell of a show here today. Uh, very excited to see not only the teams, but all these new heroes that are going to be fighting here today. But let's go ahead and it sounds like we're about ready to get into the action. The winner's semifinal is coming up. We have something new for you here, by the way, chat. You know, it's on the top left there. Exclamation point nemesis or ECG, the extra cool gadget here. So you guys can vote on who you think is going to win. I see you guys in the chat all the time. How come he didn't do this? How come he didn't parry that? Show us how smart you are. And it looks like we also <laughs> have the map draft ready. So uh, walk us through this one, my friend. Okay, so this one's super interesting. We do have the start on Sanctuary br uh, Bridge. This is probably Nemesis Esports' way of trying to test out extra cool gachers, 4v4 team fighting capabilities. But they are resorting to that Temple Garden if everything goes awry. We have seen the, the 2v2 capability of this team. And hopefully this is a steadfast map for Nemesis Esports if everything goes wrong for them here today. But with that game one, we are kicking off in Sanctuary Bridge, and we have Sahinki standing by to give us that map preview. Yes, as Naz alluded, Sanctuary Bridge starting things off here strong with some good team fighting action. This is basically just one long lane uh, that you have to fight over. It's a bit of a tug of war, but obviously a lot of that action is going to be that 4v4 fight to control B in the middle. And we'll see what our time our teams decide to do here. We've seen Set Mix's teams in the past really push for the home point of the uh, enemy team as soon as they get a little bit of an advantage. I'm definitely looking forward to see it. Let's get into the action and uh, take it away, Humanist and Naz. All right, my friends. Sounds pretty exciting here today. Let's go ahead and take a look at some stats here. Now, uh, Humanist, I failed statistics four times in college and had to drop out. So uh, what do you see here that sparks your interest? Well, it's great. I only failed it three times, so I'll probably do better than you here. But okay. as we're looking at this, you see the overall match record for Nemesis is blowing ECG out of the water uh, in all categories. But, you know, ECG, they came through the last chance qualifier. They earned their way here. So Nemesis is going to have to really put up a big fight if they want to take this team down. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much for reading those numbers for us. Extra cool gotchiers. Looking like they're ready to go. We got the sunglasses on them. They're ready to rock here against Nemesis, the favorites. In fact, chat says 88% on Nemesis. 15 Dang. for the extra cool boys. Vivid, do you agree? 88%. It's changing in real time, by the way. So as I start to get excited, it goes the other way. But uh, Vivid, what do you think about this? Is chat right? Are they actually smart? Have I been wrong this whole time? Look. Look, all I'm saying is chat follows the premium analyst, and the premium analyst did oh. dictate that Nemesis Esports <laughs> will be winning it all in the end. So, of course, I would also vote for whatever Vivid Naz says. So, yeah, honestly, good on you, chat. Yes, absolutely. Who wouldn't vote for whatever Vivid Naz says? And so Hinky predicted too. All right, uh, Humanist, we didn't get your prediction. Do you agree with uh, chat here, or are you going to go out on that 10% that limb, my friend? No, if Chad's saying Nemesis, I'm definitely going to ECG on this one. <laughs> oh, it's a contrarian. You're supposed to be a humanist. You're supposed to be the uh, collection of the people, <laughs> sir. I am. Oh, I don't okay. know if the chat are humans. I don't, I don't even know. All right, all right, enough. We're going in the game, ladies and gentlemen. Our first game of EU, Nemesis Esports, going to be facing off against the extra cool Got years. Oh my god. It's been a long Dominion series, and we're gonna get started in the final event right now. Gentlemen, your casters, take it away. Well, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages. This is our first match on the first series of the EU finals for the Dominion series. And this is going to be a real banger, Vivid Nas. I mean, you coming in, you're picking Nemesis, but we've had roster swaps, uh, players in and out. This is a different Nemesis team than we've seen before. And the ECG, they're coming right off of that last chance qualifier win. They might be just riding that high all the way through this finals. Yes, exactly. We do have a few roster changes, which we should probably address on Nemesis Esports. We have Set Mix stepping in and Ashcroft as well on the Zanhu. Ashcroft may be probably the biggest novice here in Nemesis Esports, but you do have a veteran Barak and 
So that makes hopefully looking to help her. We also have some staple players in extra cool gachas as well. KV11 is Nature, who has been playing in the previous majors before and is a staple player in the competitive community. But we can see it all kicking off here on a point B to start us off. Yeah, this is how it's typically typically going to play out. You leave one person to go ahead and cap your home point. Uh, we see the 3v3 here in B. And this this is interesting that they go Sanctuary Bridge as their first map. Um, you know, this shows the confidence to pick this because it really does get absolutely crazy in here. And this map can swing back and forth just when you think you've locked it in your way it goes right back the other way so we're watching uh ashcraft on his jj here on the side looks like he wants to go ahead and take baron down he'll give him a little poke one light should be able to seal the deal but a guard break buys some time for baron no nah, he's caught out himself someone could have dropped the 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 trap there and gotten some double kills even on their own teammate execution comes through ecg three make that four players down in the first minute and a half and with that nemesis come out swinging this is absolutely huge here for Nemesis Esports. There, Ashcraft gets the critical kill on the Shinobi just to push his team's advantage and get the triple cap. This is what we spoke about previously when it comes to Sanctuary Bridge. This is a, such a snowball heavy map. Look, they already have a 400 soft point lead on Extra Cool Gatchers. Extra Cool Gatchers just trying to push out on B, but already they are, they are a renowned disadvantage, they are a point disadvantage, and just momentum is just not on their side here. And they have no points. So none of the home points are captured by Extra Cool Gatchers. If they're trying to heal after, let's say, a bad fight, they won't be able to get any help and will just probably have to look for the suicide as to not give any renown to the enemy. Now we're watching Tote Mind in a two versus one situation. I I've been loving his Shigoki play really just holding it down he's great through team fights also great in these anti-ganks and right here buys time for ashcroft to come over and help him out so once again not a place you want to be if you're ecg they like to just be able to get that kill and move on but this is going to be a stall uh and with that kv taking a lot of damage as he's pinned up against the wall toady throwing some zones through here that'll be one kill make it two as miyoshi goes down <laughs> there's three dead across the board and, and nemesis basically taking everything they want here at this point yeah at this point it's just really not coordinated on ecg you don't really know what they're trying to gain here on the map they tried to go for the home point of Nemesis Esports, but Ashcroft and Toei there just played that expertly, getting the kill. You can see here, renowned advantage across the board for Nemesis Esports. Barak on 277, basically unlocking that tier three, nearly working his way to that tier four for that Fury Flask, for that incredible damage, especially on a map like this where everyone's clustered up. It does absolute devastation to the enemy. Yeah, it's uh, when I'm Fury Flasking, I'm basically I throw it at my own feet and destroy my team. These guys, perfect placement, and it will devastate your opponent. Now, Nemesis, if they can hold on here uh, to this A point, this could potentially rally them towards the breaking point and end of the game. Uh, KV3, pretty low. Barrack dropping low as well. Actually, it's going to be the first death to come through uh, for the side of Nemesis. Let's see if they can hang on here because ECG will go ahead and spawn and run back out. But another down makes that three and Toadmine swings for the fence as he'll get himself an execute <laughs> nemesis. They hold on to the triple cap. They will defend their opponent's home point. And uh, this could be all she wrote here. Literally complete domination. There was a few question marks coming into this newly revamped nemesis roster, but they seem to be basically quenching all of those doubts and showing that they're still very much the top dogs when it comes here. Of course, Extra Cool Gatchers were the LCQ, um, uh, didn't make it through, through the LCQ. So maybe we're expecting a bit too much from them, trying to challenge the top dogs here, but so far a stellar performance from Nemesis. Yeah, incredible performance so far. Uh, Baron getting taken down by Barrack there. And once again, we're not even fighting on B, we're fighting over A, the home point. And this is one of the situations where it's like, I, it feels like you just have to run for a back cap and at least like pull them off of this A point. You've been losing team fights here consistently. Uh, with that said though, Nemesis Esports, down one hero on the map or at 950 points with A contested, they're holding C. It looks like B's gone back over to ECG. Again, we're watching KV who doesn't have his tier one feet unlocked. He's out of his stamina at this point. It's really awkward position to be in. There's a tier one feed. It's going to be unlocked at the same time. That's two kills coming through for ECG. About the best that they've uh, fight they've had so far as Setmix and Toadie finally dropping here on that A point. 
yeah, I'm really surprised actually. You can see here Nemesis didn't actually opt into taking the Shinobi. Obviously, Shinobi was reworked as part of the last season, but uh, had a quick nerf just before the Dominion Series Grand Finals. Some teams decided to remove him from the rotation. Some teams kept him. Extra Cool Gatchers was one of the teams that kept this uh, character, but I'm not really seeing the impact that this character needs to have to be able uh, to be able to maybe clutch out a victory here on, against Nemesis. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, and I, I think this is one of the, the metas that I really was going to have a hard time predicting which type of heroes we'd see. And uh, here in this moment, this is Nemesis playing very, um, not so much cautiously, um, but moving as a unit. And it feels like the communication must be on point because to have, you know, people playing so patiently uh, before they make the engages here in this B point means that everybody's talking on mic and we're watching over the shoulder of Klor as Klor is going to get a very important kill taking down Barrack. Um, both dancing around these minions. Looks like the longbow did come out there. It means Klor is going to go down to Ashcroft now over the shoulder of Ashcroft. Dancing around looking for this attack onto KV. He'll get him up against the wall, but KV trying to reposition. Gets the back dodge. Comes over the top. Parried off. KV, one light might do it. Guard break is there. Zanhu falling forward, trying to get it. Another block's going to come through. This counter guard break as they pull this fight off to the edge. And look at this. It is Nemesis who's put ECG into breaking. With that kill there, there is no coming back. And this looks like it will be the end of ECG here in our first map called Sanctuary Bridge. Ooh, burn, baby, burn. But not the way Nemesis wants it. Chlor forced off down the edge of these stairs, and it should be a matter of time as time oh, no. will tell all things. Yoshi, it's time to dance down the pit, buddy. Down you go, down the trash chute, as Nemesis flushes the toilet on ECG in game one. Yeah, I just feel Nemesis Esports with absolute domination there. ECG didn't really quite recover from that first team fight and were constantly pressed at their home base. They did win some naggling team fights here and there, but weren't ever able to claw back any sort of position in this game. Yeah, I'm glad I predicted Nemesis uh, to be the team to win this here. Look at overall Clore standing out with five takedowns, five deaths, but that means you're really playing. Uh, everybody taking one objective at this point, but it's Barrick nine and one, Ashcroft eight and one, seven and two for Toadie on the other side. Really just all-star <laughs> performance from Nemesis coming out, just looking like that elite dominating team. Yeah, I love this uh, as a little bit of trivia as well. Mr. Setmix has not really played much on the JJ, you can see there from the level, only being level 14 on this character, did very much have to pick it up on a whim. And another bit of trivia is he's not even using the controller that he regularly uses. So to see him still performing uh, adequately here has been uh, has been a good one to see. But Barak, once again, staple member of Nemesis, was able to do a lot of damage and consistently just not die. You know, with a 9 one KDA, this guy, which is complete menace on the battlefield. A uh, complete menace. And... Uh... You know, if there was an anchor for me, like an anchor point of Nemesis to see what they were kind of always uh, relying on through that and what they'll be relying on for the rest of the day, it's Totemind. I mean, he playing that Shigoki and doing a great job. We saw him multiple times, two versus one situation on his opponent's home point where he's able to hold that down, allow the teammates to rotate over. And then once you get into the 2v2s, the, the 2v3s, Shigoki actually does really well. So um, Totemind uh, really playing great. I'm really excited to see how the second map goes. This is the map that ECG did select. Uh, more 2v2 focus, so we'll, we'll have to see a more split up play from Nemesis Esports. Will this be the kind of the point where they falter or will they also be strong, uh, strong in these 2v2 matchups? So it'll be interesting to see how this one goes down. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's only a matter of time at this point. But let's go ahead and talk about our prize pool here uh, just for a second because there's a lot of money on the line here in the Dominion Series Finals. And you see first place overall is going to be walking away with 10 Gs. Second place cut in half down to 5,000, 3,500. And fourth place walking away with $2,000. So uh, beats a poke in the eye with a sharp stick if you're last place here. But overall, you want that 10 grand and $20,500 total per region. Money, money. And uh, it's a lot of money on the line, but let's go ahead and talk about our next map here with Sohinki. Heading into Overwatch on game number two, as Naz pointed out, this map tended to be previously a lot more heavily focused on the 2v2s on C and B at the start. That being said, in the last major, we saw a lot more attention paid 
to that C point uh, in the initial breakout of the map. So look for another big team fight to start things off. And then as uh, the rotations get a little more wild when the fights break down, I have to imagine though, just because of how well Nemesis performed in those 4v4s, they're really gonna put that emphasis on C and controlling the middle of the map as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Overwatch, definitely one of the staple maps probably one of the most played overall um along with citadel gate and a few others um what stands out to you on overwatch here uh for me it's definitely those those early team fights it's basically how do you split up your team going into the start of the game originally we saw that heavy contesting on c and b maybe you'd send one to b to contest the minion wave and three to c and then we saw that 2v2 split where you send two to c two to b and then, uh, mm -hmm. I think it was the last major, we actually saw, you know, just send one member to A. We did see that Orochi before he fell off. Maybe, maybe with, with ECG, they do have that Shinobi. They will have that super quick rotation with his sprint. Get him to A, capture A, and then look to rotate and uh, uh, help the squad in whichever uh, place they, 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 need, um, they need assistance. Yeah, definitely. I think we do see uh, ECG. We see ECG uh, make that rotation over to A uh, with the Shinobi, like you said, makes total sense. Use the speedy little guy, get across the map, cap that and rotate over. Uh, the question is, do Nemesis look to press their aggression, especially after just dominating on Sanctuary Bridge, which is kind of a flex pick? Um, I, I, you know, with that pick, I would say that they're very confident coming uh, through this. So knowing that you're on this typical map here of Dominion series, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see them take it a bit of an aggressive rotation early. Yeah, it'll be exciting to see. I, I do know Barak and Semix have been doing a lot of 2v2 um, uh, scrimming. They've been kind of working on their comms together. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how they split up if they do decide to go Semix, Barak and Tilt and Ashcraft if we have that sort of 2v2 split. Uh, but ECG, it's kind of all or nothing here if they want to remain in the winner's bracket. Extra cool gotchiers versus Nemesis Esports. This is game two. If ECG take this, we'll go to a game three. If Nemesis take this, they will move on forward in the winner's bracket. Uh, you know, this is what it all comes down to here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on Overwatch. You're watching the European Dominion Series Finals. Let's get it on. ABC, it's time to rotate out and let's see, Nemesis, will they be making any aggressive moves? No, it's a 3-1 to C with B being the one and two moving out with the 2-2 two, two, uh, from the side of ECG. So a little bit of a mix up there, but they have to take control over B early if they want to do something. Yeah, super interesting. We're going for that 3-1 rotation, uh, just completely ignoring A here, which I'm pretty surprised. But you can see here it's all kind of kicking off on this C point, as we kind of predicted. Semix just kind of getting zoned out from uh, his the rest of his teammate is already half health. Health advantage so far going to ECG, or just doing an absolute excellent job of zoning and putting in attacks wherever he can onto Barak. Gets an excellent parry into the wow. punish. Another GP wow. into that top heavy. Barak completely zoned out of the fight and is probably going to get taken out. And ECG just looking absolutely on top of this fight on C. Yeah, that was amazing. I mean, what I'm watching there is this, both JJs were hanging on the edge of the fight, Clore and Sedmix respectively. Um, but it was Clore that's able to get on a Varric, and it, there was no peeling from Sedmix. Unfortunately, it just didn't come through there for them. ECG looking great in their first fight over C. You talked about how important this is. You can have move over, watch Baron just heal up here, uh, stack some of that Renown, and then make rotations across the map. C, A, B, all capped by ECG. There we will have finally Nemesis along with Setmix down in B. Gonna go ahead and recap that back. What a way to come out of the gates here in map two. Yeah, absolute brilliant start here for ECG. You honestly couldn't ask for a better start in this case. You can see here KV already on 160 renown, looking to push for that third feat. And the game's only started. Of course, Raider still probably has one of the strongest feats in the game. And for him to be that far ahead this early is a big warning flag for Nemesis Esports. Yeah, huge warning lights flashing. As you see, Nemesis has gone back over to C to contest. Again, Barrack low on stamina. 
fighting off to the edge. Um, oh, sorry, rather, Baron staying right here with Barrick on the backside. He was low in stamina. And now Baron on Barrick, looking for this kill onto Barrick on Nemesis, hanging back. He's caught here. One light. They'll be able to get the kill now, moving back. Set mix. Can he get away? I don't think it's going to happen. Turns around, gets himself a parry. Looks oh, because he knows he can't yeah. get away, and Baron chases him down. That was delicious. Baron showing as to why Shinobi is uh, was was so powerful after the reorg. Not as powerful as uh, before the nerfs, but still able to be an absolute menace. A little mosquito on the battlefield and uh, just be a complete pest here. You can see here ECG still pushing their advantage. They're at a huge renowned lead and also huge point lead. Uh, Clore nearly unlocking that tier 3. Baron uh, catching up, especially as an assassin. Assassin notorious for not really being able to pick up as much uh, renown as some of the other characters, the heavies and the vanguards. Uh, so seeing him being able to do that well this early on is such a great sign here for ECG. It really is a great sign. And it just feels like their team fighting capabilities um, are really shining this game as opposed to our first map on Sanctuary Bridge. And I don't know if that's because it's less 3v3, 4v4s, um, but they're doing great in these 2v2s. Um, we're watching over the, the eyes of Baron on C here. KV as well. Remember, he's doing great farming up his renown. Now, Ashcroft moving up to the high ground on the Zan, who he will be able to contest, but eats a lot of damage below 50% health quickly as everybody stacks on him. Turning around, Tote Mind here, the anchor for Nemesis in map one. Really not able to do much. Can't connect. Looking to get KV up against the wall, but it's KV that's connecting here. Toadie switches targets, but he's punished up against the wall one more time. Ashcroft is low. Tote's low. It looks like Ashcroft, one light, will be able to take him down here. And Nemesis, they can't hang on. They're, they will not be able to hang around. And with that, they're going to be able to actually get the execution down the stairs. KV and ECG holding on. But in the meanwhile, Nemesis able to grab points A and B. Puts this at about a 150 point lead overall. Maybe a little bit uh, tighter than that um, as they're coming back into this game. Now B goes back over the way of ECG. Um, so the, you know, ECG dominating, but Nemesis signs of life. Yeah, it signs a lot there. It's that you usually deploy of the counter not to do much against Baron. Baron just kind of controlling these 2v2 fights and being able to kind of do what he wants and move about uh, tab target in between different targets. Massive team fight breaking out here in B, and Set Mix is burning. Looks like Clore will be able to get the kill uh, onto Set Mix. Ashcroft's fallen, Barrick's fallen. No executions, so they will be able to have fairly decent respawns. As look at Shigoki trying to run away from the Shinobi, but Baron with his Naruto run will be able to chase him down. A little headbutt. Time to buy some time here. Tote mine, how long can you last? Can he proc off uh, some revenge here? But you see Baron waiting on the edge. He was out of stamina. Now Toady low on stamina. Not exactly where you want to be. We have the respawns. Nemesis, 50 points away from going into breaking. Everything's on the line here in our first series of the day for Nemesis. Not everything on the line. Oh, I'm exaggerating a little bit. KV standing his ground. Tote mine finally drops, but he's bought time for his teammates to rotate out. Ashcroft not able to deal the damage, but he's taking a lot from KV as well as Miyoshi. Oh no. Shoving Nemesis out of the points here. Really devastating. 30 points from breaking, 20 points from breaking. This is about to be ECG just with a dominating oh, no. force. There's the break. There's the kill. He's got the execution. And ladies and gentlemen, ECG wow. putting Nemesis into breaking, flexing all over. I mean, honestly, they could just play and dance the rest of the game. That's incredible. I 100% believe that ECG no, meant that. They were waiting for as soon as Nemesis went into breaking and then they went and pushed for those kills at the end there. You did see two members with critically wow. low health. There was about 20, 20 points left. They waited it out and were able to clutch out the victory there on the end. This is ECG's map. They were very confident in picking this map coming into Overwatch. And what a stellar performance. It was like a different team from the team that we've witnessed in Sanctuary Bridge. So very well played there from ECG. Baron had a great game. And we can, if we cut across to the scoreboard, KV11, he didn't get killed. This guy, Nature, is an absolute machine 
on this warlord uh, sorry on this raider this game Clore was doing very well especially peeling off keeping set mix away in that especially in that initial fight baron all over the place didn't even die at all this game humanist and miyoshi just doing what they had to do there in this game yeah i mean it was it, it did feel like they were playing like a different team in in game number two there and for me if i'm gonna you know try to analyze this i think it just comes down to more 2v2 fighting and they really excelled in their 2v2s as opposed to that brawling style on sanctuary bridge what nemesis excelled at in game number one so we're tied up 1-1 in this best of three so next map will uh take the series here and and, and i feel like it's just going to be a complete toss-up at this point and i think it's temple garden uh for map three correct me if i'm wrong on that uh and if that's the case i really do feel like ecg has a great shot at taking this yeah uh it's, I, I feel like temple garden very much echoes how overwatch is played there is that, obviously that initial split and there's that priority on c and b and i feel like now kind of seeing how nemesis performed on overwatch maybe maybe it was just a fluke maybe it was just a bad game that they had together but ECG were, you know, they, they really pushed them to the edge and were able to secure it up, you know, pretty convincingly, actually. Yeah, indeed, very convincingly. Um, but let's talk about Temple Garden. This is going to be a lot of fun. So, Hinky, break it down for us. Game number three, not a thing I thought I would be saying after that first game, but wow, just two stomps in both different directions heading into our third map on Temple Garden. As you alluded, this is going to be much more 2v2 focused as we're expecting on Overwatch. And I think normally we would have thought that Nemesis would have the advantage there, but ECG proving that they are down to play those 2v2s and do it very well. A lot of attention can be paid to that C point as that allows the fastest rotations into middle. And uh, honestly, this is anyone's game. Most excellent. So hinky. Uh, as beautiful as this Temple Garden map is himself. And uh, my gosh, I, you know, this is a coin toss here. Both of these teams showed that if they get the footing, they can take the map. And, I, I, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just say whoever wins C first, wins this match i feel like that's what it's kind of come down to you take a point that's a little bit more important you have the ability to drop back and heal uh i don't know if you're seeing anything else Nas. what stands out to you buddy uh, i think for me uh if nemesis want to claw this back we need to see a better performance from tote mind uh i feel like uh, you kind of pointed out in the first game he did have a lot of impact but in the second one you, you kind of saw on the scoreboard he didn't have any any takedowns uh whenever they would split up with him and ashcroft the communication would just be kind of lacking and it would constantly lose these 2v2s. Mm -hmm. So they just need to kind of step up these 2v2 games and hopefully we'll see a better side going into game uh, three here. Game three. Let's go. Minions make their way out onto the map here. And let's watch for these rotations. ECG have to have a bit of confidence coming off of the second uh, or their win in the second map there. And it's going to be a 3-1. So this really this will is come down to... Tell, tell us all about it. We, ha the, we, we, we got, you know, the split. The the, the OG players here, Tilt Mine, Barak, and Setmix splitting off to fight on C while also leaving the Zanahu to go for that clearance on B. And so far, it's not really looking in the favor of Nemesis Esports. No health bars here fighting on C. But you can see kind of there in the Shinobi is struggling against that midpoint. Yoshi just kind of being pushed away from the point. Tote Mind gets that excellent parry, but cannot fall up on the damage as he does get stopped by KB11. I, I gotta say, Chlor is really standing out on this JJ for me, hanging out on the edge of the fight and just knowing exactly when to jump in here. We do have kills for each team across the board. Nobody able to grab control just yet. Now Toadie's low on health, but with that revenge rocked off, he's got a couple more seconds to try and do some work. Nice zone coming through. Barrett getting damage onto two, but he's getting chunked down himself. Barrett's gonna fall. Toadie's gonna fall. And this is ECG taking point C and taking potentially control over the map and the game here. This was my prediction. If if they can take control of C and this first fight they probably take the map but let's see how this is going to play out well it was interesting because you had ashcroft on the zan who did manage to win out the initial fight on b and i'm guessing he rotated to a so captured it back so 
even though the, the fight on C did look pretty bad there for Nemesis, they, it, it wasn't catastrophic. They were still able to generate points and were still able to boost that point and not keep them too far behind. They're only slightly behind on soft points here. So it's, it looked bad, but it's not catastrophic. All right, well, I'll take your word for it. And, uh, you know, as much as I trust you, I'd love to bring in our in-game expert, uh, Sohinki, to just talk about it for a second here. What are you seeing out of ECG here in game two and three that they didn't do in game one? A rather right. than reinforcing the C point, those reinforcements came back in onto C from the side of extra cool gatchers, and that's why they ended up winning out on that fight. That makes sense. Uh, so Hinky, and as I just while I have you here, I'd love to just kind of elaborate a little bit as far as Toad Mind. Definitely just kind of uh, felt flat. Are you seeing him picking it up here in uh, map three? Uh, I think he's playing a little bit stronger. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm not quite sure what happened in game number two there, but uh, it looks like he's playing a little bit stronger here. He's able to proc off that revenge, and even though they ended up losing that C fight, he lasted a lot longer than he should have. He was sitting on about 20 life for like a full minute there, so uh, definitely playing a little bit stronger in game number three. All right, thank you very much. So, Hinky, we'll maybe possibly bring you back later. Uh, for some more questions, but here is what stands out to me. It is Nemesis in control of A fighting over B while C is held there down by go. ECG and everybody talks about it. ECG, you know, like if you can control C, this is so easy to rotate and heal up from B. That's what they're doing right now before they make the rotations back out across the map. Yeah, Toadie having a, a better game as kind of alluded there by Sahinki. And you can kind of see the versatility of point A. Originally, there wasn't really much focus on it, but just by capturing point A, the point deficit isn't that much in uh, in ECG's favor. Even when they capture B here, Nemesis does take the lead from it. So it was actually a really good early rotation from Ashcroft just to capture that point A after kind of knowing the, the C fight is uh, just not in their favor. So we're seeing here this 1v1 matchup between uh, Zanhu and um, and the Shinobi. It is kind of favored in the Zanhu's, uh, Zanhu's favor. This is kind of why this character kind of came back into meta just to kind of answer the Shinobi. Of course, he does have his own matters outside of it, but it is very good in the sense of covering the Shinobi. Nemesis in a great position here, Vivid Nas. As they move over, Baron wanted to drop back and heal, but two players, Ashcroft, uh, coming over here with Barrick, oh. and to get into the C point, Klor tries to drop on in, and Klor is going to get chunked down as well. They get the execute, Barrick taking oh, both no. kills. He's going to be getting his tier two feet unlocked off the back of that. Now they have control over A and C. All they have to do is heal up, drop back to B. I mean, wow, what a turn of events. Look, they're doing the exact same thing they did in the first map. They are just going over to the home points. They are telling to ECG, you can capture B, but if you need to heal, you have to go through us. And we kind of saw a situation there where two members, Baron and KV, tried to go for health, but just weren't able to just because there was already members of Nemesis Esports on point C. Yeah, and with that, it's put a little bit of emphasis on A as the contested point because uh, ECG really need a place to heal on this map. They don't currently have one. Miyoshi fighting up against Barrick and Setmix. Setmix getting down low. Revenge over on the side of ECG from KV. KV, he's swinging for the fences. Does catch Barrick here. Faint over the top. It's not going to connect with him there. Parried off. Now he got him. Oh my goodness, Barrick chopped down, Set Mix falls as well, and ECG dominate on A, giving them a chance to claw their way back in this game, take the lead here, 740 points for the 640 of Nemesis at this point, and respawning after this execution, we'll have 4v4 back across the map, but it's Clore and Toady going toe-to-toe -to -toe here in this mid lane, Clore. Nice headbutt. Toady wanted Ooh. to come over the top of the wall, trolling him out here on the edge. He'll try to connect, but Clore rolling away just a little bit too fast. Clore dropping back okay. in his feet, which is contested. Not where you want to be. Barracks happy to go ahead and take him. He'll get himself another kill here as Nemesis 
are just dominating. Uh, they've turned it up to 111, but the point lead still 960 to 560 from ECG. Nemesis have to win this. Even though they had a great fight, it's not in their favor. Still, oh. Nemesis, what can you do? Ascroft finally gathering his stamina back. You got to take down Baron and you got to take him down now. Toady, you can't go. You can't go down. You cannot allow him to connect. They could just oh. throw a pebble. And Ashcroft will be able to get the kill. Baron drops down. Cody able to get him. Miyoshi trying to stay on C, trying to trying to keep it contested. This is Nemesis in breaking. I feel like they're going to have a chance to come out of breaking here, but they've got to get the kill. And they've got to get it now. Miyoshi, can he stand his ground? Can he stay alive? He gets the counter guard right, but the damage is there. Nemesis, they'll be able to take him down. And it's just not enough. KV has made his rotation off the spawn back out into C. They just can't seem to cap this Vivinon. Oh, it's absolutely incredible here. They nearly blundered it in the initial fight on C. Ashcraft nearly giving revenge to Baron, but Varag got that heavy, which started off his chain effect of them that's dying one by one coming into the point. Exa just trying to see, trying to hold this position and stall at the heels as long as possible, knowing that in about five seconds, they'll be putting Nemesis in breaking. And here we have it. This will be hard for Nemesis to break. They need to win fights oh, consistently. Barak gets, uh, he gets parried and he oh, dies. Man. Because the last person an extra oh. cool catch. And progress through to the winner's finals. What a comeback from this team, Humanist. Unbelievable. You know, I, I predicted it from the beginning. ECG, just really a, a team to be reckoned with here. Uh, absolute stellar performance from all of the team there. You can see Clore there. You had a lot of great words to say about him. What a great performance from him here on the JJ, coming out as the MVP of that last game. And I know you've been watching in the back, Slacks. What do you think about that one? Oh, okay, okay. The JJ was good, but come on. Raider, bro. Legendary. <laughs> no deaths in that uh, game before. 10 for 13% on Twitch chat. Thought that your boys could make it through. My analysts, they thought it was Nemesis, 100%. Only Humanist, the only man with the knowledge to know that incredible <laughs> series there. Absolutely <laughs> what we are here for, for some For Honor, my friends. Oh, that was absolutely fantastic. Who would have thought? Extra cool, making it all the way. I mean, again, guys, this is the finals. We have been building towards this for so long. Three events, three majors getting to this point. And uh, when it came all on the line, they were there, my friends. Oh, oh, those 15%, bro. Those are, those are your college grads right there. Those, those are your big brains. I told you, you just do the opposite of what Chitch, the Twitch chat says, and then you're going to be fine every time. 15% <laughs> galaxy right. blur brainers. Absolutely. It, it's hard to be a galaxy brain like that. So, Vivid, uh, what do you think was like the big moment of the series um, that we just saw? I mean, I, I know this isn't the nemesis that we saw throughout the entire Dominion series, but what do you think was the biggest factor to get this win? I think it was extra cool gadgets kind of stepping up as a whole team. The, the first game performance wasn't exactly quite there. But then I also want to say that there was a few weak performances from Nemesis Esports. In that game two, Totemine didn't really have a good game at all. And we kind of cut to game three. I just felt the presence of Setmix and the JG just wasn't there at all for, for Nemesis Esports. So hopefully those were just a few bad performances. They might be able to bring it back from the lower bracket. But ECG, let's not take away anything from this win. Absolutely no. stellar game from all of them. Everyone putting in their piece of work. And what a what, what a great performance. Absolutely. Well, if you missed any of that action, let's go ahead and check out a little bit of a replay here. We're going to walk you through it. Uh, Humanist, why don't you uh, remind our viewers of the action we just saw? Yeah, definitely, Slacks. Uh, you know, the game one was on Sanctuary Bridge, which is kind of known to be uh, a sloppy team fighting, uh, you know, gambling type of map. And maybe that's why they, why Nemesis decided to choose this map. Uh, it did work in their favor. They just kind of threw everything against the wall to see what would stick. And they, they did win a couple of fights, which just snowballed over ECG. Uh, you see them consistently where they were just uh, back capping. They held down B. They won 3v3s, 4v4s. And it looked like Nemesis, as they closed out strong, 
we're potentially just going to 2-0 ECG and roll forward uh, on the winner's bracket, flooding team two. This is where everything changed. We had typical rotations out to the C point on Overwatch, but Setmix and crew couldn't put it together. Totemine seemed like he was just nowhere to be seen on the Shigoki on the second map. And look at the overall point score as we came into the end here. A 700 point lead, maybe 650 points, 700 point lead for ECG as they dominated and stomped sending us into game three, where ultimately ECG were able to close this out and take the series. They did it in a dominating fashion by cont uh, continually just punishing uh, bad fighting, uh, poor rotations. Uh, it was phenomenal uh, from A to Z. Congratulations, ECG, in this first series. Absolutely. Fantastic. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at our bracket here. Uh, as you see, extra cool gadgets. They move on, and Nemesis drops to the lower, but it is time. We just got some information, and uh, would like to share that with you guys. Uh, Russian Mind Games it appears that we have found uh, some discrepancies there, and uh, they have been eliminated from the tournament. Uh, just a quick word on this, you know, uh, eSports, and especially uh, Ubisoft and the For Honor scene, uh, you know, it's all about fairness. It's all about trying to make sure that we have the best game possible and uh, in the interest of the community and all of these fantastic players who have really dedicated so much to making this a fantastic up and coming esports title. Uh, you know, we just got to be really vigilant on this stuff. We're not messing around. So unfortunately, Russian Mind Games will be taken out, but very fortunately for the integrity of the tournament, we will be moving on. And that's a big sigh of relief, of relief for Nemesis going straight through to the lowers and moving forward. Uh, guys, uh, feel free to take a moment and uh, talk about that if you wish. That has some pretty big implications here. Vivid, I, I think I'll let you have the floor on this one if you'd like. Yeah, of course, for competitive integrity, it just kind of had to happen, and I'm glad the decision was made. But of course, this kind of puts Nemesis Esports in a bit of a weird situation. They've kind of gotten a buy, they're on the lower finals, but they just kind of have to hope that they don't roll ECG again. Because if I was to be thinking of a logical thinking, um, I w if I was Nemesis Esports, I want to give myself the greatest chance of winning that prize pool. And I feel like against ECG, that won't happen. Over Sleepers, they've had a lot of practice against. They've played this team, you know, so many times in all of the majors. So for them, it's probably waiting for Oversleepers to come down to that lower finals so that they can have a better chance of getting to that grand finals. Absolutely. But they had practice, though. I mean, yeah, you lost. But as many esports guys <laughs> say, the best learning experience is losing. That's why, of course, Humanist is so smart. Loses almost every Dominion game that we play together. He's a genius. <laughs> That's how he's able to uh, pick out these wins <clears throat> and be so good. So yes, the bracket's a little bit adjusted now, but in the interest of fairness, very confident, very happy that we are moving forward in this direction and we get to see the greatest for honor that is humanly possible here in the finals. Now, humanist, my boy, we got a new series coming up very soon here. Uh, was it, did that go as you expected? What, I mean, uh, obviously, yes, you're the only person in the world that guessed that yeah. correctly, but uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> me and 15 other people. Tight fight? <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, you know, coming into this one, it's just so hard to predict, right? Because we do have different players than what we've seen in the past. So it wasn't going to be the same nemesis, although it's an elite team overall if you're looking at, you know, who was there. But ECG, sometimes it's, you know, slacks, it's about momentum. And, um, you know, as our intro stated, it's coming together at the right time. Um, and a a as time progressed forward here, we see that they're rolling forward. They won that last chance qualifier. They're through their first series of the day. And now if you're oversleepers, if you're facing them, you really kind of have to be telling your team, like, we're not messing around here because this team, they're one win away from heading to the finals and taking away that 10 grand from us. So yeah, you got to play tight here if you're going up against DCG. Absolutely. Well, actually, uh, let's bring it back to Barack. Uh, just got knocked down, unfortunately. But Vivid, you had a chance to uh, meet with him earlier this week and do a little interview. So let's check in with Nemesis Esports now that they're in the lowers and see how he's feeling for the rest of the tournament. Thanks so much. We are joined here with Barack, a member of Nemesis Esports, the number one seed of EU. And we'll be getting a bit more information about what brought him into Froner and what what gets him going as a person. So starting off, 
this is a question probably asked uh, many a time to yourself, but how did you get into For Honor and kind of what kept you coming back to this game, Barack? Well, first of all, For Honor is a very unique game. There's nothing else like it. And I really appreciate that aspect about the game. I, as a fighting game, it truly stands out from every other fighting game. It really broke the formula. And for that, for me, it is very impressive. I'm at a big love-hate relationship with the game, but I always come back because it is where I belong. I, I love this game. I've been playing it for years now. I've been playing it competitive. Competitive is what keeps me playing this game because I always just love the competition, the drama that comes with the competition as well. But I also do love, and it's also the reason why I'm here playing in the Dominion series, I love the thrill of winning it as well, which I've had part of a lot in the last two years. With each new season of For Honor, we do see a lot of shifts when it comes to the characters. There's been nerfs, there's been buffs, but coming into the finals, Barak, what would you say uh, What would you say for the viewers to keep their eye on when it comes to the meta shifts? Well, uh, one meta shift that there has been is the Shinobi meta. Shinobi was released in For Honor and was outstandingly good. But uh, since the Major to now, he has been nerfed and I'm really not sure how his viability is going to go. I know some teams are still going to run him. Nemesis decided not to run him, but he is a really questionable character. And some teams just have uh, different preferences. For example, we have Shugoki to fill in the gank of role, as we have Mine being extraordinary at that character. But uh, we've seen other teams go with other choices as well. And you kind of mentioned one of your members of your team. We can't go an interview of Nemesis Esports without bringing the big elephant in the room. Recently, we saw the resignation of Clutch Meister from Nemesis Esports, and that kind of shook the Brawner competitive scene. This guy has been a staple of the team for quite a long while, and I just want to pick your brains as to what happened in this situation, Barack. Well, uh, due to personal differences between Clutch Meister and the rest of the team, uh, he decided to leave Nemesis. One day after a heated practice session and a long argument, Clutcher decided not to play anymore with me and Silencer because of the frequent arguments we had. I will say though that the team environment I was in was a bit toxic, but since he left, things are looking good again for us and we've been performing quite good in scrims and we have a really uh, excitable new fourth that we are very happy to play in finals with. What would winning this final mean to you? Winning the final Dominion series, and where well, I have to ask this as well, what would you be doing with that sweet prize pool at the end of today? Well, first of all, I believe that uh, winning today's tournament will be a really big accomplishment for me as a foreigner uh, competitive player and in my foreigner career, as this is going to be the biggest tournament I have ever won by far almost double the second tournament I have played last time, which was the first Dominion series that I won. But uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. The prize pool, I'm going to use it in my portfolio. It's going to go to investing. It's, I know it's the uh, sad adult answers, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make more money out of it. That's my goal. Well, thank you very much for your time, Barack. I hope that you have an exceptional tournament. And I'll toss it back to Slacks. Thank you very much. Man, that Barack, uh, he is a smooth character. But welcome, my friends, to the winner's semifinal. Here. We got Oversleepers versus the Extra Cool Gotchiers. Don't forget, you guys can vote right now. Go ahead, exclamation point ECG for the Extra Cool Gotchiers. And of course, exclamation point OVR for the Oversleepers. The Oversleepers, gentlemen. Uh, we've seen these guys before. Oh my God, we're, we're about ready to go into this draft. Forget it. Welcome to the map draft. We already got it rolling. Vivid, walk me through it, baby. Okay, I guess, I guess maybe Oversleepers was, was watching the first series and realized that Extra Cool Gadgers, maybe Sanctuary Bridge is not exactly their map. So they're probably going to try and exploit this and look for a first win here on Sanctuary Bridge. But of course, that Overwatch map has been a staple for ECG. They played exceptionally well against Nemesis Esports. And I'm hoping if we do get to see uh, my game three, we will be on Harbor. I think it's the first time today. And it'll be interesting to see how they play about this map. But kicking us off, we do have Sanctuary Bridge. And let's get a map preview here from Sanky. 
as alluded to it, I do think that it was probably the case they were watching that first series, starting things off here on Sanctuary Bridge. Perhaps a weak point for ECG, not necessarily as strong in that 4v4 chaos, uh, but that's what we're going to see a lot of here today on point B. Uh, obviously, we don't know how Oversleepers is planning on playing this, but clearly they think that they have the stronger team fight heading into game number one. Absolutely. Thank you so much, my friend. And uh, with the maps taken care of, we now have one more thing that we do need to take care of. It is you with your viewer rewards. I hope you're answering questions in there, my friends. Don't forget to be on Twitch right now answering those trivia questions. You get points for watching. You get more points for answering those questions correctly. And the top three also get a boatload of steel on top of these effects. And you guys can trust me in the chat. I'm I'm actively trying to get these myself, so uh, I won't lead you astray, okay? You can trust me. I'm not purposely trying to, you know, tell you the wrong answer. No. There's no reward in that. Not at all. So, uh, gentlemen, let's get into it. It is time for Oversleepers versus the Gachi Boys themselves. Take it away, my beautiful, beautiful cast. Well, you can say beautiful one more time if you want to, Slack. Beautiful. But we're cutting your mic off. Yeah, you're out. You're cut off. You're out of here. We're into our second series of the day. And while our viewers will be trying to get the fairy tale trinket, we potentially have a fairy tale story as ECG has come through the last chance qualifiers, rolled through their first series 2 1, and now facing over sleepers, a team that many have stated could be potentially the top team in Europe. We are going to find out right now if ECG can keep this momentum rolling, Naz. But I'm telling you, over sleepers, this is a team to be reckoned with. Yeah, they, uh, ECG here, have the potential to win it all. Of course, Sanctuary Bridge what, was not a great showing from them in the first series. So hopefully they're going to look to rectify that and show that they actually do know how to play this map. And, you know, the first game was just an anomaly against Nemesis Esports. But already, KV, pretty low health in the initial fight here oversleeper is still looking incredibly healthy oversleepers is, is consisting if a lot of members that we have seen before fikis mina yobu have been consistent uh players that I have, we have seen in the majors uh either as part of different rosters or as part of oversleepers themselves miyoshi just kind of getting tagged out here by the shigoki shigoki looking to build this revenge tag fikis here just knocking away miyoshi and looking to assist their team and once again extra cool catchers extremely low health in this initial point B fight. Yeah, that was a great job by Oversleepers to spread the damage out and then to focus in and get their kills. So they take the fight in B. As we look over to A, it is contested as Miyoshi's there, but Miyoshi will be chopped down. And with that, this is going to be a bit of a spawn time before they can get back out. And Oversleepers are back capping. So this is the question that comes into play, KV. Looks like he either goes for B or runs straight across for his own back cap, but Sleepyhead is waiting there, so it's not going to happen. Really great strategy thus far. Yeah, once again, you can kind of see ECG just get rolled in that initial fight. All four more members go down. They have no renown to show between them, and they've lost both uh, both home points, so both healing points here. And you can see here, um, You've got two members of Oversleeper just trying to, to, to stall out as long as possible. Mina B on this Shinobi, uh, followed up with the assistance of the Raider here. Just trying to see what they can do. KV is low health here, a bit critical, but so are the two members of Oversleepers. Yobu as well as KV on the edge of the fight, trying to connect with some of these nice long range heavy swings. Not going to come through as KV will go down, leaving Baron in a 2v1. There's a chance that he could get this, but it will not go his oh, way. No. Mina B secures both of those kills, will get the execute, and tell us all about your Ono. Yeah, Yobu and uh, Mina B, they're just playing expertly. These players have been playing in these majors for quite a while, oh. so. You can kind of see their expert uh, there. <laughs> we got a little legend tag there. Uh, you can kind of see their experiences kind of shine there on that initial uh, 2v2 fight. And uh, once again, ECG have nothing to show for their progress. They captured the midpoint, but what does that what does that matter when you're constantly losing on these two home points? KV just stalling out, Nature just waiting until he can get some sort of support from his teammates. They're all coming out of spawn. And it's uh, just not looking like a good start here at all for ECG once again. 
No, it's not. But hey, I mean, we got to remember that if they can take this fight here, um, I was going to say, well, B's in their favor, so they just can rotate to, <laughs> to, the, to the C point. <laughs> now uh, even B is contested, so it, it's not going great for them. 650 points to the 200 of ECG over sleepers in control as Mina B dancing around over here uh, with Baron. And it looks like Baron getting a little bit of an advantage. Ooh. We got to remember Yobu's here as well. And as ECG try to connect they're just constantly getting chunked down baron one light will be able to get him the counter guard break is there baron staying alive after they're okay. able to get that kill mina b is the one that's going to go and drop down ecg clutching out a fight here when they needed it the most and uh yeah i mean if you're going to have a chance in this game they absolutely had to win that fight and they've done it I honestly thought Yobu and Mina B had that 2v2 there. It very much looked in their favor. They had the health advantage, but a great sequence of plays there between Baron and KB to win out that crucial, actually, probably cr very crucial fight there. You see Baron topping up the store scoreboards here for ECG, but let's just take a look at over sleepers. We have Sleepyhead who, <laughs> who just basically got his tier four here. And all, all up as well as Suvi Mist, Phalanx available. And these are such great team fighting abilities. On a map like Sanctuary Bridge, it's absolutely heaven on earth here for Oversleepers. Oh man, you want to? You, you make me want to sing a song with your heaven on earth and Miyoshi. Uh, it's going to go for a, a little bit of uh, oh, a no, dance. Oh no, two members! Oh, make it two! Oversleepers Three. are playing for style points. My goodness, Chlor's going to oh, be dropping no. down as well. And it is almost all over here is ECG getting pummeled. Oh, not the horn! Not the horn! It's devastating! Oh, that was... Over sleepers have turned it up to a hundred! Oh, that was so sad! Three people fell to the exact same well, and Baron there just executed in style as over sleepers look to absolutely dominate game one. Tier 4s unlocked all across the map. I think only the only tier 4, uh, the only noticeable um, feat they're used was soothing missed by the JJ. Everything is still very much up. You got the, you got the, I think it's the staggering blows there available from Fikis. Just pops it there. He does pop the juggernaut and he's going to be an absolute machine on this home point here. KV just backed up into a corner against Slippyhead and Fikis and the hug comes through. The big damage follows up. And it is looking dire. Does get the revenge here. Can he stall out for a little while longer to get the support from his teammates? Uh, let's see. I mean, it feels like oversleepers are just super confident and for good reason. ECG oh. is in breaking. It is a bloody mess as KV will be taken down. And only a matter of time as time will begin to seal the fate of these players. Oversleepers lose one. ECG, they're not going to go down without a fight here. Fikas off to the edge here. Baron doing what he can to be elusive. Dance around, use that speed through these fights. Can he land some sickle? Oh, they're going to burn down. Oversleepers have lost two as the flash comes down here on this A point. Yobu has got a shield for the time being. He wants Baron. Baron gonna go ahead and roll back to reposition, but he's caught from behind here. Gotta get out of the, the damage AoE zone. KV with the counter guard break. Jumping forward is Baron trying to connect onto Yobu. But Yobu, revenge, timing out. Can he get takedown? Yeah, they will be able to get a KV finally getting himself a kill there. Uh, but Oversleepers, um, they still have ECG in breaking, although ECG with four members. Yeah, an absolute exceptional showing here from oversleepers the only the only silver lining here for ecg is a lot of tier fours have been used here by uh oversleepers even though they're at such a deficit they will need to win fights constantly to be able to claw back anything baron going for the back cap as uh sleepyhead holding it down here on b miyoshi trying to connect but not really able to get the damage off that he needs to now sleepyhead He's going to have all the shield in the world here. It's really not what ECG needed. ECG 200 points past breaking. I mean, this is the point of no return. You can't be afford you can't afford to die here. And Clore just doing the dosy -si do with Sleepyhead. Uh, you know, Clore does have some minions around him. They're not doing a lot of work, but it looks like just enough as Sleepyhead's going to be executed, buying some time. ECG did lose one, so it's going to be three members only fighting out the rest of this on Sanctuary Bridge. And 
you, you know, you think normally you'd try to drop back and potentially heal, but this is a situation you have to clutch it out. Uh, they're able to get Yobu as well. These are such important kills right here, and Chlor had to stay alive. He will drop. He is revivable at this point, but being as where he fell, there's so much action. You have to imagine that he won't be able to get picked up. Yeah, you have Barra there, uh, Baron kind of dropping out super early uh, in that initial team fight. Ficus just trying to hold the point. He knows that the, 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 he doesn't need to do anything heroic here. There's two members down. They can never unbreak. And all they have to do is wait for their teammates and look for the support. KV11 is trying to see what he can do. Does have all of the all the feats up here. Fury Fire Flask is available if he wants to use it. I'm ready. Fire Flash I'm drops down it. there, but only one person still probably actually did more damage to Miyoshi there than Ficus in that matter. KV Fury used, Fire Flash used, all he has is Inspire, Rush used, and unfortunately it is looking like a wash here for Oversleepers. What an exceptional first game performance, but I would like to remind the viewers at home, Extra Cool Gashers did have a terrible performance on this map last time around against Nemesis Esports, so I wouldn't take this as any indication of their performance going into game two in Overwatch. Yeah, absolutely not. Um, congratulations to Oversleepers to take the first map off ECG. Um, it is reminiscent of our first series of the day, but uh, look at these numbers. Amina B, Sleepyhead, both taking 11 takedowns, but five objectives capped uh, for Amina B. On the other side of the board, Baron standing out for his team uh, with Chlor at six kills, but to the deaths just raining through. Nine and one for Ficus on the side of Oversleepers. I mean, all of them just playing incredibly well. Yeah, uh, shout, shout out to Mina B and Sleepyhead for absolutely exceptional performances there for Oversleepers. Uh, extra cool gachers. I feel like I just kind of expected that this performance would go down in game one. <laughs> Sanctuary Bridge, it seemed like there was just a lot of misplays when it came to that initial team fight. And hopefully, if you know, uh, a few of the teams are probably going to be watching this if they ever roll against them again. Probably Nemesis Esports will look to try and put priority on that Sanctuary Bridge. Uh, it seems both teams very much beat out ECG when it comes to that map. Looking at uh, the, the chat, I was predicting ECG at 81%. That's a <laughs> pretty heavy margin here. And uh, man, I would have to go the other way if I was sticking to my routine. Uh, but ECG looking really good. Yeah, like you said before, though, they got rolled over in their first map uh, in their first series. It was Sanctuary Bridge. And I just I just feel like I'm watching KV um, and on this radar, he looks like just like a cat in water on Sanctuary Bridge. Like he just he doesn't want to <laughs> be there. It just did not really himself. Um, I think when we, we get into like this a little bit wider map, when we see these 2v2s, this is going to be a lot different team uh, from a, a lot team, different team performance from ECG. Yeah, and I just want to remind the viewers at home, if you do want to vote, the votes are still open for the whole BO3. So please get your votes in as to who you think we'd win. Don't be like me. Don't be a dummy. Don't always get it wrong whenever it comes to these teams. <laughs> but we are kicking off our second game in Overwatch. ECG did very much pull it out of the bag when it came to the first series against Nemesis Esports on this map. And I'm really excited to see their performance coming into game two. So we'll toss it over to Sahinki, who will give us a map preview. Heading into Overwatch for game number two, uh, ECG looking to make it a repeat of the first series of the day. They didn't come out on top that time on Sanctuary Bridge, but they did look a little bit stronger, and I feel like this team is warmed up heading into this map that is much more 2v2 focused. We saw, actually, the points that they started clawing back into the map last time were when things did break down to those 2v2s, and I think that they really like their Raider and Shinobi pair. That 2v2 feels very strong for them, so we look to see ECG come back strong out here on map number two. Love it. Uh, so, Hinky, you know, you, I love the way you break it down. We're probably going to have to pull you back in for some in-game analysis as this one starts to play out here. Um, so, Overwatch, this is uh, this is where, you know, uh, everything is going to kind of take shape as far as the rest of the tournament, tournament yeah. is concerned, uh, in my opinion here, because ECG, they either turn it up to 100 or Oversleepers basically roll all the way through here. Yeah, it will be interesting to see how Oversleepers perform on th this map. I feel like this will be an indication of who will basically win this all. And I feel this is a very pivotal map for both of these teams. 
We did see a really good 2v2 matchup here from Oversleepers, Yobu and Mina B consistently winning out on those 2v2s. Even though one of the last ones they did lose against KV and Baron, I feel like it was way too close to call. And uh, it'll be interesting to see the initial split that they go for coming into Overwatch. Indeed. And, you know, I don't know what these players are thinking about it right now. Uh, depending on their bills uh, and their bank statement, potentially. But a uh, winner of the series will uh, lock in, correct me if I'm wrong, second place in $5,000 at minimum. So that's a pretty big deal for whoever wins this series. Yeah, honestly, we should have just competed and also uh, cast it at the same time. Just think about the paycheck. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I didn't see it in the Dominion series rules <laughs> anywhere. Um, and maybe Ubisoft yeah. is listening uh, or not, but yeah, we'll have to look at that rule set for uh, the next Dominion series and get on in there and potentially get some of that yummy money. Uh, I'm bummed that I'm, I, I can't uh, try get that uh, fairy uh, fairy trinket. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, uh, I do have my my phone answering questions in the background. I'm trying to I'm trying to multitask as best as possible. But honestly, I might just give my Twitch account to to Slacks in the hopes that he can uh, answer these questions for me. But here we go. We are kicking off the game. We do have a very much similar split to the last time we saw Overwatch. We are seeing that 3-1 split initially from both of these teams. But one of the teams opted to roll the Shinobi onto B and the other opted to roll the Shigoki onto B. So it's a very interesting split here. Coming off of the bat, Yobu very much being isolated here at the start. Half health already in the fight oversleepers across the board are much lower than ecg here and um yeah we see kv here just trying to throw out these big unblockables not landing on many of them big parry there into that heavy there from yobu onto kv can he finish off the kill that is a, such an important kill there for oversleepers picking up the first kill in this initial fight sleepyhead trying to finish off miyoshi miyoshi in critical health did stop the execute not exactly actually the Execute comes out on Miyoshi as well. Sleepyhead oh, and man. Yobu teaming up on Klor and Baron oh. Top Heavy lands there. Klor is down and the C-Point looks all but controlled here by Oversleepers Humanist. Yes, but ECG won the B point, so they did rotate one over. Now Baron is here. Not exactly where he'd like to be in a two versus one situation, rather be dancing around the map uh, or, or running around, not in a 2v1 situation, but he is caught out there, but not before KV able to make his way back over to C. So C remains to be capped yet. Uh, B contested, A has been taken by oversleepers, and now ECG begin to flood in over towards the C point. Let's go ahead and watch over the shoulder of Miyoshi as he wants to peel for his teammate, but not able to do so. He's getting shoved down the stairs, and now at about 25% health or so, he wants Mina B. Mina B looking for the opening, but being patient. Gets the kick. Isn't there a follow-up? Mina B swapping targets. So Mina B just doing everything uh, that, that they can to stay alive at this point. <clears throat> and by time, Miyoshi, though, getting chunked. Mina B doing amazing work on the backside. Miyoshi will finally go down. Fikas holding it down there as Shigoki looking for the guard break. Should be able to get the kill, but interrupted. Revenge will be there to be procked off, um, but it did buy time for ECG to draw back and keep their members alive. Really look at these, it's just insane how they're able to juggle damage long enough to continually stream somebody in, you know, someone's died, they continuously respawn and stream back into C and nobody able to cap it just yet. This is a different story uh, than, than our first map. I'd love to bring in Sohinki just for a second to, to just talk about, are you seeing the same thing here from ECG that we saw in their first series of the day? Uh, it's definitely looking strong, however, Oversleepers are doing a really good job, and I want to highlight the play of Mina B here on the Shinobi. Really, it's coming down to who has the numbers advantage with a Shinobi in play, because as we know, the gank of the Shinobi is incredibly, incredibly strong. That being said, I don't really know exactly how they're doing it, but ECG is doing a good job of flooding back in onto this C point, and now, of course, we see ECG with the numbers advantage up against Oversleepers on C. Yeah, they finally seem to have uh, an advantage here. Across the map, A is contested, but it's Yobu that's about to go down here. He's gonna get chunked. He's gonna get his head ripped off. And on the other oh, side, Miyoshi is gonna be able to take down Fikus. So uh, this is just a dominating moment here. Maybe a, a turning point as ECG flex across the map. Let's watch Mina B. Oh, he wants a little bit of sickle rain over here. It's Mina B. 
uh, not getting killed. That goes to Sleepyhead, but great damage coming out. Now KV, KV, what can you do? We'll be able to avoid the kick there. Gets himself a parry, looking for the zone, but he'll cancel it off. Gets the guard break, finds some damage, turns around. It's KV taking down Sleepyhead. Turns around. What's up, Mina B? I'm over here. You can't kick me if I'm dodging around constantly. KV looks like he's just absolutely a different performance. Very comfortable on this map as opposed to Sanctuary Bridge. Patient, waiting for an opening. The counter guard break is there as KV gets back onto Yobu. Yobu looking to come over the top onto KV. KV continuously to, uh, to block and stay alive. You look up over the point board. Uh, this is a very contested, very tight point race over here overall on this Overwatch map. Uh, C and A both contested B in the favor of Oversleepers. Uh, it looks like Clore finally taking down Mina B there. This is a great Ooh. job, but it's kind of wild to see them uh, contesting on A for so long. That, yeah, KV doing an absolute stellar performance there, stalling out multiple times here for ECG. And you can see ECG just kind of winning out fights wow. across the map, captured both C and A, now looking for that push onto B. Baron actually earlier on in the game did an exceptional exceptional stalling out on C waiting for his teammates to arrive and it's just been just been a great performance here from ECG we did say going into this game this is a map very much it seems favored into ECG they probably put in a lot of practice on this map and you can see it shine just by how they rotate how they stall out and how they play these more isolated fights all right, this is going to be really important. Oversleepers have decided it's time to contest on point C. Um, we've seen ECG win a couple fights here in a row, of which has given them a, a pretty commanding point lead. Um, Miyoshi gets sleepy up against the wall. Flash is going to come through. Oversleepers have two down below 25% health, very low. ECG, I think JJ's dropping down pretty low there. ECG's going to lose one. Oversleepers lose two. Baron, low health, on fire. Go ahead and backing up across the stairs. Gets himself a counter guard break. Punish coming out here onto Yobu against the wall. He will get tonked out. Can they connect on a light? Can they? He's got all the blocks in the world coming through. And they're actually going to trigger the revenge. So with that, Baron says, yeah, I I'm out of here, buddy. KV, you got this, right? You know how to play Raider. Now KV dropping low. He's going to get his shield off. Means just, oh, come on, get a, get a counter guard. Yeah, there you go. Finally, Yobu will be taken down, and I believe he got the execution off. Yeah, KV gets himself the execution. All his beats unlocked, already used his Fire Flask, uh, doing a great job so far. Oh, nice. Look at that. Sleepyhead gives him the old 1-2 to take him down from about 30% health. But just what a little combo there from Sleepyhead. Miyoshi trying to oh, circulate nice. between Sleepyhead uh, over here and Ficus doing well so far. All he's got to do is just buy some time. He can apply damage if he wants to, but now his teammate has rotated back in. C is contested. ECG continue to hold down point A, while Oversleepers continue to hold down point B. Yeah, that was absolutely incredible there from the Yoshi. Knew that Claw was on his way and he needed just to stall out as long as possible. Didn't throw out any attacks. Managed to dodge all of those hugs and expertly done there. Getting the knockdown, followed up by KV to finish off the Raider there. And you can see ECG just holding steadfast on this point C. They do have a pretty large hard point lead. They also have both of the healing points here on overwatch sleepy head trying to see what he can do Mina has been an exceptional performance here on the shinobi can they do something here to assist the team gets a nice gb to follow up on by sleepy head you can see here kv out of stamina trying to see what he can do only rush available for this character nice little chains on the heavy there from oversleepers now they're winning a sequence of fights just as they're breaking Sickle Rain comes out into the top heavy. They're followed up by another top heavy. Sickle Rain again. And what a beautiful cover. That is why Shinobi is so strong in this meta. If you could have a teammate follow up so expertly as Yobu did there, you can see basically 100 to 0 combinations coming through these characters. What a beautiful play to unbreak them in this game. Wow. That, that was whew, that was exceptional. I, I love watching stuff like that. It, nice. it, it makes Ooh. me go red. Oh man, that was beautiful. It was raining sickle rains. Uh, let's see if ECG can get the get oversleepers back into breaking. 
It seems to be reminiscent of their first series of the day. They are playing better here, but Oversleepers are not out of this one just yet. We've seen their best performance about in the last minute here uh, in this Overwatch map in game two. Oversleepers down, uh, but not out at this point. Mina B fighting up against Baron. Baron has less health overall, but Mina B continues to play safe. He's got Sleepyhead up against the wall. Nice chunk damage coming through, but Sleepyhead says, hey, I'm gonna give a little bit of barrier to my whole team. Oh, heavy over the top coming through, but parried off Baron, trying to look to get himself out of here. He's caught with the guard break and with a light, they will Ooh. even take Baron down. Got him, Sleepyhead making some phenomenal plays clutch plays that he absolutely had to make in this moment and look at it, it's a triple cap here at the last minute oversleepers wow. might have done it 50, 50 points away from the ecg and a break in yoshi he's on low health oh. this is really really bad for three ecg right now does he get him before breaking does he get him he's executed oh my gosh they are breaking he's not coming back that's three down vividos this is an absolute absolute disaster Oh no! Sleepers have done it here at the end. Oh, Clor, he's burning down too. You can't do this. This is not possible. I can't believe what we're seeing. Defenders are. My God, Oversleepers might have just done it. They did get the revive. They did unbreak for a split second. So we do have KV back on the map, but Clor is still very much out. Okay, we unbreak once again, and look how close the points are. KV does fall down, but it's not enough for her to trigger no respawn. There is still enough time for him to respawn Baron, trying to see what he can do here, he is getting constantly comboed here by Yobu and Fikis at the same time. Oversleepers are back into breaking. It's a back and forth. It is reminding me of major three flashbacks for Oversleepers here. I know, man. I, I don't even want to know what my blood pressure is at right now. Uh, or these players, I'd love to have heart rate monitors, but let's watch Fikas. Can he connect? Yobu is down low. Baron's got him pinned up in the corner. <gasps> Fikas has got to peel for his teammate. Oh, they're going to do it. Fikas able to get the kill, but they're not going to be able to take it oh. down. Oversleepers have lost two. We're in double breaking right now. ECG, they picked up their teammate. There's four on the map. It's a 2v4. Oversleepers can be revived, but I don't know if it's going to happen. Sleepyhead, well, rather, we'll go over, we'll watch from Mina B's perspective. They're going to drop down into C. Oh, the avalanche is coming. ECG, rotate everybody over. It's a two versus four. It's time to throw all your feet onto the table and see what sticks here. Mina B, you've played phenomenally, but you are in a stuck situation. 2v make it 3v1. And KV gets himself the kill. ECG coming back here in game two to tie this series up. 1-1. Oh my goodness, wow, we have sir. a series. Wow, 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 we will. Wow, wow, we will. Okay, what an absolute banger performance. It seems like oversleepers love this double breaking situation. We've seen it in Major Free. We've seen it here. And what a game we had to watch there. Look at the amount of takedowns from both of these teams. It's almost like a match, <laughs> a matchmaking lobby. But exceptional performance there from ECG. Not as strong as we kind of suspected coming into this map. They did very much defeat Nemesis in such a convincing fashion. But here, they had their missteps. They did get put into breaking. It did look like Oversleepers might just have it. But then, in a huge turn of events, maybe it was just the Oversleepers choke potential. We've seen it happen before in the previous major when Ooh. they were breaking. But ECG managed to clutch out the win here and it puts us onto game three once again and this final is very much delivering for us here humanist absolutely i i don't know if you saw it at the end ecg had nine objectives taken to the four of oversleepers so i think this is really showing the pl the difference in the play style it's like ecg is playing turbo mode where they're like we're gonna take the the, the objective we're gonna rotate we're gonna fight we're gonna do it again and again and again and oversleepers are like, we take this point, we hold it. They're trying to play slow and steady, but ECG has got oversleepers on the back foot um, as we are going to be having a, a third uh, game in this series. So this is this is absolutely what we love to see. This is why we're here. And we're going to have a preview of our third map right now with our in-game analyst, So Hinky. Well, it was Temple Garden in series number one. Now we're going into Harbor in series number two. This map, very similar as far as play style to Temple Garden. There's going to be a lot of attention paid 
to that C point because of the fast rotations into middle. That being said, this map's middle does clear a lot faster than a lot of the other maps. So we saw as Dominion series has developed, a lot of teams paying more attention to A. We'll see how teams decide to break out onto the map here. That being said, I do think I give the uh, advantage to ECG coming into this map, especially off of that win, but they do seem to have the rotational advantage and they really are doing really well in those 2v2s. Oh my goodness. Uh, ECG, they turned it up to 1,000. Oversleepers are turned up to 999. This map is <laughs> one of my favorites in the entire game because it's it's so beautiful, but it's really fun too. There's there's epic ways to move around this map. We don't see a lot of the, the drop downs uh, in point B where you can climb up those ladders, but you've got these ropes from B over to point A and C. You can get around this map really fast. Uh, so if you're playing fast, this feels like a game for you, a map for you. I, what do you think, Nas? Yeah, I completely agree on this. I, I also, in this map, it's very important to kind of lean on the strategy of stalling. You can see how close these these points are to the actual spawn points. You need to win out of these fights as quickly as possible to stop the enemy rotating with full health. And, you know, I honestly love the storyline that we're kind of crafting here. ECG coming from the LCQ and, and all of a sudden kind of bringing it up to these top dogs that have been a staple teams in all of our majors. Well, right now, this is what it all comes down to. And, you know, what the viewers can't hear is the, uh, you know, we, we can't either, is the team in-game communication. These guys all have their mics um, and they're communicating. And it seems like ECG uh, is doing really well as far as the rotations, et cetera, et cetera. What I'm, I'm wondering is, you know, do they have a calming voice on this team that's able to keep them centered in this fight here? Because fights like this over on C, they get so sloppy, so messy. You lose one of these early big fights, it can stress you out really bad. Miyoshi chunked yeah. down over here, Sleepyhead and Fikus looking to, to take him down, but he'll reposition off to the side, leaving him in a 1v head with Sleepyhead. Can't cancel that. Yobu oh. coming through, but he's dodged out. They will stun him up and give him the old 1-2. Wow. Oversleepers taking A, B, and C in a dominating fashion a minute and a half early on into this game three. And Oversleepers have taken everything and given nothing. Oh, that's so unfortunate. We full on had a 4v4 on point C. Miyoshi was just dodging. We were just dodging left, right, and center. And you just saw his allies fall beside him. And you can see here, we do have that constant stream of people coming into point C. We spoke about this earlier. It is important to win out these fights and it's important to win them out at the same time so you're able to regen your health capture these points and be able to push through to the rest of the map but you can see oversleepers already in full control of the map they are losing point eight but they have a very strong choke hold on this game Sahinki. a very strong choke hold indeed and i have to really shout out baron able to stall quite a bit on this point c even with his entire team down 1v3 doing a great job and that's the only reason ecg is back in this game that being said yogurt getting another long execution here and I think the biggest problem is just the fact that they're constantly streaming in off of the respawn because of these long executions. But I feel like I feel like oversleepers haven't actually been able to move out of this point. You can see extra cool gadgets have just managed to capture the whole map apart from C. And oversleepers are constantly streaming in members, trying to hold this point C as long as possible. But EZG have always got one person there stalling for as long as possible. You see here, Klor just gets taken out by Sleepyhead. Just trying to rotate, see what he can do. And finally, they seem to have fully captured point C. Fully captured point C, and now they're finally, as you alluded to, being able to leave that point for basically the first time this entire map since the beginning. Breaking out here into middle, we'll see what nature can do. Trying to take control of the middle of the map. Yogurt here with Mina B. This 2v2 has been very strong for them. Ooh, gonna get caught there. Is nature by that unblockable? The externals from the Raider have been so powerful in these team fights. It's actually ridiculous how much damage this character can put out. It's it's actually been incredible, but unfortunately for KB, he's not really been able to have the renowned lead that you kind of expect from a Raider at this point in the game. Yobu basically unlocked Fury, going on to that flask for that big damage. Clore 
in exceptionally low health, manages to pick up Yobu, picking up their allies, and hopefully looking to move on to point C. Mina is trying to stall out as much as possible. Up heavy lands here from Chlor. Mina B, trying to see what she can do, and gets the side heavy to pick up the execution on Chlor. Doesn't fully really follow through with it. Minions do stop them there. These little pesky minions, ever since that update, they've always been constantly ruining these executions, constantly losing your style points. You can see in the scoreboard here, Chlor performing super well for ECG, but on the other hand, we have Yobu with an absolute dominant performance. Fury, Fire Flask unlocked, able to use Juggernaut unlocked here for Ficus, and you still have KV on only the rush so far he missed. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of come down to which Raider is uh, unlocking these feats, getting the kills early on, and it's not KV so far, but this might be a fight where we start to see things turning back their way. Two kills for ECG on point C as Mina B makes the rotation on over. Can Chlor follow through with some damage? Nope, Revenge going to be tagged off. That's really something they wanted to avoid here because if they could have got the kill before the respawns, this means they would have grabbed C. This is going to continue to be stalled out. Mina B even getting himself a parry, counter guard, Break there. Gonna fake this out. Clore really just feels like oh. it was just one there. You'll be able to go and get that kill, clean it up. You knew it was just a matter of time. Switching over. Ficus and Clore on the edge of the fight. Clore pinned up against the wall. Ficus just throwing these wide heavies. Connecting through. Tries to get the headbutt. Not quite there. Over the top, but goes into the guard break. Should be able to get the kill. Just poke him. Just poke him. Just, just get the poke. Clore. <laughs> Doesn't stay like Clore's gonna go the other way. He's, yeah, he's, he's had enough of that. Uh, but you know who it is? It's KV time. He wanted to chiropractor visit, so that back break's gonna be just fine. He says, Ficus, you can embrace me anytime, buddy. And Miyoshi hangs on the back here, letting KV absorb most of the damage, but someone's behind you! It has turned into a horror story for Miyoshi. A 2v3 KV hanging in there. Can he get the damage onto Yobu? Nope. Yo oh, no! He's got himself. Oh! Oh! KV! They still get it in uh, the end, taken but down. unfortunately... I thought the GB attempt there, I thought it was completely ruined there by, by Fikis managing to hit out Yobu from the confirmed damage, but they still get the kill in the end and they still manage to secure C. But if we take stock on the map, you can see tier fours are back up for uh -oh. Yobu. We have Sleepyhead on that tier three soothing mist. We do have Mina B with the tier four, but unfortunately just kind of dies in the back of the fight on A and uh, Sleepyhead just kind of on their own here. Yep, a Sleepyhead's gonna be stunned up. A couple heavies come through, puts Sleepyhead below 50% health. Nice combo out of ECG. A rotation in uh, from Shugo makes this a 2v2 uh, on this point. And with this, Sleepyhead's gonna have a little bit of heals coming in for his team. Will it be enough? Whoop, 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 whoop. Hey, we're back. Mina B. Oh, wants Chlor. Chlor dropping down the stairs. Chlor's gonna go ahead and falls. Mina B able to get that one right back into action. A Sleepyhead still stays alive over here. Dun, da, da, da. Baron and Miyoshi finally have made it on in. And with this, they just chunk down me to be absolutely blew him up. Ficus on the Shugo. Can he stay alive? Sickle rain. They give him the oh, one, two, nice. one over the top, kick it back. But that's a lot of tags and revenge triggered off. Ficus, he's gonna get the knockback. He's gonna buy a lot of time. And with that over, sleepers can rotate wherever they want. But look at this point score. It is very even, although if oversleepers able to grab one of these points back, it will go heavily in their favor by about 100 or 200 points. So this game's tight, but it is not over yet. God, the undodgeable tracking on the the, the Shinobi is, uh, is is quite something on that heavy. Mina B trying to see what they can do here. Miyoshi critically low health. What an excellent placement for the Fire Flask there by Yobu. Once again, this one two one two play between Mina B and uh, Yobu has been an absolutely star performance from both of these players. Yobu picks up the kill and is he's. He's basically oh, got the entire boy. Oversleepers on his back, and he's like, you know what? We are winning this, and we are winning this together. Mina B, Ficus on this 1v2 against Baron. Not, not the best place to be as a Shinobi. You probably do want to be the character ganking with your team, but not the one being ganked by the enemy team. Breaking is coming out here for extra cool gachers, and they are in a dire situation. Yeah, they really are. It looks like a Phalanx has popped here on uh, the side of Oversleepers. Mina B uh, really stalled this out, but was able to use Revenge to stay alive. Now Clore shoves him out towards the edge of the fight. 
uh, will be able to finally take him down. Kalora taking down Mina B. This is incredible performance for Oversleepers, but they have not put ECG into the dirt just yet. They were able to get out of breaking just for a second here. It looks like they're about to tick over three, four seconds here. KV knocked down. He'll turn around, give some damage back over to Yobu. Yobu, definitely the Raider that's been shining uh, in this in this game here, this uh, game three. And I, I would say probably the MVP overall. Uh, we'll have to talk about that after the match is all said and done. Miyoshi on the side with Yobu. They're really playing it safe here. They gotta be so careful. ECG, they're gonna lose Chlor. That puts them in a three versus four situation with Baron on the other side of the map. It's a 2v1 over here for Miyoshi and KV. They have some low health bars on their opponents. They might be able to do it. Fikus has actually dropped Miyoshi, able to get that kill. This is so clutch. If you can stay alive here, ECG, can they do it? Sleepyhead, sometimes you want to get that last attack so bad to get the kill that you leave yourself open. But oh, right there, KV stunned up and Mina B chopped him down with a quick respawn. Ladies and gentlemen, over sleepers have done it. They've taken Harbor, they've taken Vayne 3, and they have just locked in $5,000 for their money bags. Oh my goodness. Over sleepers looked great here in game three. Yeah, what an absolute exceptional performance from the whole team combined. Oversleepers, we talked about him being the first seed. Very much felt like a middle of the pack team here for us in the Dominion series, but they have come out clutch and completely decimated ECG oh in that last map. And look at, look, look at the scoreboard. Yobu, Mino, what are these takedown numbers? <laughs> Is that a glitch? Oh, Is what that a glitch? Oh. It literally, yo, can we, can we check these scores again? Like, it, what a great performance from both of them. Yobu, Yobu unlocking tier four within like three minutes of the game. It was absolutely incredible. Slags, I know you've been watching in the background. This is the performance I expect to, oh. to see from you when we play together, okay? Okay, take it out. Take it off the screen. I don't I don't need to see that anymore. That is not safe for any children watching. They should not see a scoreboard like that. All right, all right. That is unprofessional. <laughs> My God, that was a that was unreal. Well. Very happy to see them making it into the grand finals now. That is the kind of for honor that we are here looking for. Over sleepers, they have awoken inside of them the demons. Goodness gracious, that was a hell of a series. Humanist, uh, what happened to your boys? These are your 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 boys here. Take it over. Uh, they, they just want to play as many matches as they can today. Oh. So that's, that's what's going on here. They're going to drop down. They're going to come back. They're going to take first first overall but hey, 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 hey let's talk about over sleepers i mean they won this series okay uh i think really centered around their 3v3 and their 4v4 team fights when they get together as a whole unit that's where it really looks scary and it seems like they come out on top almost every single time in that situation that's absolutely interesting when they is, actually show up we, it's good it's good go ahead David. <laughs> What was interesting is in Harbor, we typically see a, a, a big split, a 2v2 split. But what we actually saw there was the initial fight. Oversleepers probably knew that they just won team fight. So they just committed every single member to see and just completely decimate them and decimate them in that initial fight. So it was pretty good performance there from Oversleepers. A very good adaptation from the map. We don't really, really see that much uh, in these Dominion Series games. So very well played from Oversleepers. Very much deserve its finalists in the Dominion Series. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, on Harbor, I know that uh, hopefully some For Honor devs here are watching. Uh, that wouldn't have happened if Horatio the Guardian Donkey was still on the map. You guys <laughs> removed Horatio, our beautiful donkey that we love so much. We named with the chat. And uh, that's what you get on Harbor. You start getting, you know, 5v5s. You start getting all this disgusting team fight. Right, Harbor's about rotation and running away. That's why it's the best map. It's for... <laughs> Okay, uh, this looks scary. Goodbye. That's why it's so great. But uh, this is what happens when you remove the donkey. So, uh, yeah, we saw a few asses out there for sure. And we saw some getting <laughs> spanked indeed. So, uh, at any rate, uh, let's go ahead and check out that match in case you missed any of those highlights. Uh, Vivid, why don't you walk us through and uh, remind us of the carnage. Yeah, so in game one, we had Sanctuary Bridge, which almost seems like it's ECG's kryptonite. They very much got absolutely wiped here by Oversleepers. Yobu and Mina B putting an absolute exceptional performance, stalling out that uh, home point as long as possible. Uh, we did see a, a few kind of performances starting off here from ECG. They, they, they kind of all fell into the well here at one point, which was, <laughs> which was very sad and got completely wiped. And once again, I just kind of want to note 
Yovu and Minabi's performance stalling out this point for as long as possible was absolutely incredible. And cutting into game two, we very much saw the 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 stalwart map for ECG, which was Overwatch. In Overwatch here, they were very much able to claw back this victory. A lot of great 2v2s coming out from ECG, which we didn't really expect as much. Not many team fights, which is probably the detriment of why Over uh, Oversleepers lost this game. But Yobu was very much silenced this game. So was Mina B. And I feel like when those two players aren't able to shine and show up for Oversleepers, Oversleepers just don't perform as well. There we go. We had the 100-0 combo once again shown here, which is absolutely beautiful showing of oh. teamwork between Mina B and uh, Yobu. It, it, it gets me going watching stuff like that. And it kind of set them up for game three. It was basically all or nothing at this point. Game three, Harbor, traditionally a 2v2 map. We expected that split to happen a, a, a frequently, but actually Oversleepers noticing that they probably win out in a lot of these team fights if they force them. And what we saw was they just stacked as many times as possible. And at, with with that, we just kind of saw absolute dominance from Oversleepers. We saw Yobu probably have the best performance we've seen in Dominion series in one of these games with an absolute stacked takedown uh, count. Absolutely, and you'll be seeing Overseers making it to the grand final. They are guaranteed that second place in this huge prize pool tournament, and they are waiting to see who will face off against them. Who will survive? that lower bracket final. Again, Russian, Russian Mind Games, excuse me, uh, eliminated already due to uh, some discrepancies. Uh, you know, maybe they kept trying to pick a pirate over and over again. We'll never know. Uh, we actually will know, and I'm sure that we will know <laughs> soon. But uh, that is not what happened. Uh, trust me, <laughs> as we will soon see. Extra cool gotchers versus Nemesis Esports. That is your coming up next to crown the competition for the Oversleepers. Gentlemen, a hell of a series and exactly why we're here to see that badass fight. Um, getting ready for our whew, lowers here. Somebody's going home. Someone else is going home. Someone is going into breaking and will be pathetically decapitated. I cannot wait. I mean, these are the best teams that we've seen throughout this entire tournament coming here for the final event and they are now going to be fighting for their lives. This is my favorite moment of these tourneys. Uh, Humanist, do you like the lowers? Are you a fan of the lower bracket? Uh, or are you a big uppers guy? Uh, you know, hey, the lows and the highs, they all have their benefits. Uh, this is going to be a great, uh, great series no matter what happens. I feel like Nemesis have had a chance to recollect themselves. They've seen EC, they played ECG, they've seen ECG play another series. So, uh, you know, you have to imagine that Nemesis was sitting back, watching, talking to themselves, what went wrong? What do we see Oversleepers doing to them? I, I think it's going to be a, a different performance from Nemesis uh, here in this series. I wouldn't be surprised to see them take it. Well, we saw Nemesis Esports perform really well on their game one. They did come out gun swinging and in Sanctuary Bridge, almost it actually was probably a better performance than Oversleepers had against ECG on, on Sanctuary Bridge. The problem yeah. is they kind of faltered when it came to game two and game three. It felt like it was just a few weak performances from some individual members. And hopefully that can be rectified. That hopefully when, when it comes to this next series, they'll be able to work on their, uh, on their flaws and be able to show a better performance coming into this one. Absolutely. Well, you know, teams have changed, but the meta has also changed, my friends. It's been a long time since we started the Dominion series, and I uh, thought we'd catch you guys up on kind of the uh, player meta so far. I, when I started this thing, I dreamed of Raiders and Shinobis. That dream has finally come true. Uh, Vivid, why don't you talk to us a little bit about how this has changed and uh, what you think about it now? Probably in, in, in this Dominion series, going into the Grand Finals, there hasn't really been... A, a huge change. We did see a slight nerf onto Shigoki and Raider, just stamina numbers, damage values across the board. We did see a pretty significant nerf onto Orochi, which kind of completely eliminated him from the uh, from the, the rosters here. None of the teams seem to be running Orochi at all. And with the buff and rework to Shinobi, we've kind of seen him become a staple of some of these teams. Of course, this character brings a lot of what Orochi kind of brought. There's a lot of uh, a lot of great ganks set up. He has a lot of great ability to just roam around the map and be able to, to assist any of the teammates. And kind of as a result to the, the climbing of Shinobi in the in the in the in, in the tier list, we've kind of had a Zanhu kind of come back into the 
uh, actual foster just because of his natural um, natural strong uh, what's the word I'm looking for um, I've completely brain farted that's not exactly okay. what I'm looking for but he just seems to fit into fit into that role to be very much against Shinobi yes absolutely uh, a bit of a counter if you will you know I mean the heroes have changed so much since that's we started one. this thing I remember war war mommy <laughs> my a girl, she used to come in that, oh. that poison. It was so unbelievable. Nobody would fight anywhere near each other. Warlord, the only hero I can play was... You were an idiot if you didn't have a Warlord. And now uh, it's great to see that the game is constantly evolving. We're constantly seeing different things. In fact, uh, some of my yeah. favorite moments were just the Warlord shield charge off. Oh, those were good. But it's been a really long road, guys. We've been going for a very, very long time. Uh, Humanist, I wanted to ask you... Uh, what were some of the things that stuck out to you from our series coming up here? Uh, what was uh, uh, one of your some of your favorite moments of the Dominion series so far? Uh, I mean, coming <clears throat> to this point, like there there has been such a different meta from all these different majors. Um, you know, one of the other heroes that, that that we didn't mention just now was Black Prior, it was being picked on like oh. every single team uh, constantly, and that that felt like one of the biggest like. Um, just like strong points for teams that they were really playing around that. Um, uh, I miss the Warmonger, of course, as well. It's interesting to see like how fast these these heroes move out uh, of the meta. You know, I think I'm really excited to see that Raider is still one of the, you know, he's, he was slightly nerfed a little bit, but still very playable. And it, it does feel like um, the better Raider player, um, if, if one of them is taking advantage of the game, tends to be the one winning the game. They, they get they unlock this tier four feet super fast, Fury Flask, and then control the map from there. And the quiet one that we haven't talked about too much is JJ. And I feel like uh, JJ has just oh, been so JJ. impactful on all of these teams. And it's just kind of like locked this hero in, great in team fights, um, just great stalling out. With Sifu's pose, you can do so much to be versatile through these fights. So yeah, uh, all, all of these heroes, great. I'm looking eyes on the Raider as we get into these uh, series here. Well, I hope you're ready to get those eyes, my friend, because it is time for us to move on to the loser's final. Don't forget, you in chat can vote right now, exclamation point, Nemesis or ECG. It's rematch time, baby, and it's time to see if there is something up their sleeve to make sure that they don't lose again. This is the big one, boys. Winner of this goes to the grand finals. Vivid, here is your map selection. What, what, what knowledge do you glean from this? <laughs> look, I think Extra Cool Gacha has very much got the map one. We're like, look, guys, I think we should probably ban Sanctuary Bridge. It might not be our best map. So you can already see it in the band rotation. But instead of that, Nemesis Esports very much still leaning towards that initial team fighting map. And Citadel Gate very much gives them the advantage in those regards. Game two, of course, ECG, they always look to tie it up on Overwatch if they don't get that game one necessarily. But to finish it off for the first time today, if we do get a game three, we will be seeing Beachhead. But starting off on game one, this will be a super exciting way to start off the losers final. For the first time today, we'll be Citadel Gate and we're tossing over to Sahinki. It only feels right that going into our very last losers match on the EU side, we would get El Clasico, Citadel Gate. This is a map that is very, very similar to Sanctuary Bridge in terms of how it is played, but a lot more wide open, a lot more room for rotations, especially after that early B fight ends. It looks like Nemesis Esport, as you pointed out, is trying to target that team fight in both of their picks, and we'll see if they get the advantage here on map number one. Absolutely. Thank you so much, So Hinky. And don't forget, guys, if you're watching on Twitch TV, which you should be, you can be getting some prizes yourselves. These guys are after that money. They're after that honor. They want that steal. And you can get some steal as well. Viewership rewards are active. You guys got to be answering those questions. I know I literally just answered the last one while I was on panel. If I can do it hosting the event, Lord knows you guys can do it as well. Stick around. Trust each other, my friends and hit those prizes as you will get not only these drops, but the top three get a nice steal bonus as well. So enjoy yourself. I, what, what more could you want? You know, you get some four honor drops, you get some fashion, you get to watch the best of the best kill each other for your amusement like Dominey in the arena. I mean, this, this is the greatest thing any four honor player could ever dream of. 
I mean, fairy tale winter battle outfit. Absolutely wonderful. So, uh, guys, there you are. Look at those beautiful fairies. Oh, the ice, it flows like wine. I love the fairies. And there they are. <laughs> and, of course, uh, uh, the uh, beautiful, beautiful animated. Uh, oh, here they come. Everyone, hold your... <gasps> oh, it's gorgeous. Absolutely. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, Player for Honor fashion, if you'd like. You will get those drops just for watching here today. And we will see Twitch's prediction right here. Ooh. Ooh, hey, a spicy. little bit different now. A little bit different. Oh, that is spicy. That's a little spicier. <laughs> the 50-50. They haven't learned their Vivid, you look... yet, Slack. <laughs> talk to me. Talk to me about it. Hit you me know up what? You know what? I've, mean... not, I've not... I've not... <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I've just got to say, I've not Go seen ahead. a 50-50 this good since the Warden shoulder bash. You can see here, chat's oh, very much geez. kind of leaning towards... ECG, it was like, a, what was it? Like 70% Nemesis last time around. So the, the gachers <laughs> yes. have very much come out in this game. Yes, yes. Humanist, uh, any words? Yeah, I mean- Shut up, Humanist, uh, as we go into uh, Nemesis Chat Esports, the time is over. Shut up, shut up, you idiot, I got you again. Nemesis <laughs> Esports, for the extra cool gotchas, we're gonna see this lower elimination match. Loser goes home, winner goes to grand finals. That's what we're here for. Let's see some heads roll. Gentlemen, take it away. Literally, we're about to see some heads roll. This is, I mean, you know, honestly, for probably half of the people watching, we could have just started the tournament right here. This is literally everything <laughs> on the line for these teams. Uh, you know, it looks like they got a guaranteed third place moving forward here. Uh, you win the series. You're in the grand finals of the finals of the Dominion series. Everything's coming to a head right now. ECG won their first series against Nemesis. Nemesis has had a moment to collect themselves. We'll see if they can put it together here. This map is wide. It is spread out. And I don't really know who it favors. I'm leaning towards ECG, though. I, I think I, I, I'm probably leaning towards Nemesis Esports only because of the initial team fights that they've kind of shown to be very good at. It's just when they start splitting off, that's where we kind of see the cracks in this Nemesis roster. Well, early on, we get the home points. Cat turns into a 44 uh, melee here in this B point. And uh, watching Baron, Baron has been pretty important for ECG, uh, playing on the Shinob and just dancing around to the edge of the fight. He's fast, he's elusive, he's looking for the, the, the damage to jump in. And saw an opening on a set mix, but it's Ashcroft who moves forward, able to get the peel form. Ashcroft hanging on the edge of the fight. You see that Toadie's low, looking for the peels. And you know that they're talking on my, you know, he's saying, hang back, hang back, peel, peel, peel. Um, and we got our first kill coming in. Nemesis has lost Ooh. one, but Shinobi is very low for ECG. Baron's got to drop himself back. Miyoshi finds himself in a 1v1 with Ashcroft here. Gets the guard break. Ashcroft is low. We'll go ahead and get himself a block. Shoved back. Ashcroft giving a little love to Miyoshi. Miyoshi, his back against the wall, but he does find the kill. Chloric taking down Burke as well across the map. And Nemesis have lost the initial engagement. This is a bit of disaster for Nemesis based on their overall play style and what we've seen so far. So they did lose the initial fight, but it seems like there wasn't enough healthy members of ECG to make that full push into B and even look to attack the home point. Sometimes attacking the home point can kind of be bait. You think that you might have the advantage attacking there, but then what that causes you to do is go in with low members, then you have the enemy team respawn, kill you, and then they'll have map advantage coming out of the home point. So, but you can see here, um, it did look kind of bad there at the start for Nemesis, but they were able to claw back B and are able to make this push and look for the second team fight. You know, one thing that I'm seeing is a little bit different here on this map. The, the B point is so wide open that while it's a 3v3 or 4v4, I feel like ECG have the ability to spread these fights out a little bit more than they were on the other maps. Like Sanctuary Bridge, you're playing 3v3, 4v4, it's very tight. You can't dance around and, and, and remain on the edge of the fight. And it's a little bit easier to do here uh, on this big wide open map. We're watching uh, Barak here trying to land some damage. He needs to peel. McClure is low and KV 
We'll go ahead and watch over his angle now. So he wants set mix. Set mix incredibly low. Clore dropping back as well. Will he be able to get Clore down? Clore gets back behind his buddy. Tony oh my God. Swings for him. Doesn't connect. Barracks going toe to toe with Clore. Clore finally dropping. KV switches over. He wants Barracks. It's not going to happen. Clore drops oh. down. KV drops down. Nemesis take two. That was two executions. They had three dead at the same time. With that A and C are capped for Nemesis. They'll heal up, and you have to imagine they're right back out into B. Ah, this is so unfortunate. <laughs> you almost, they were trying so hard to kill Setmix there, ignoring that Totemide was on their case and looking to finish them off. Totemide there and Barak just kind of finish off the fight there, pushing from B and going to the home point. Now, this is a good capture of the home point. You do have a lot of healthy members apart from uh, apart from Barak, who just kind of fell there on the back, but Totemite trying to stall as long as possible, waiting for those respawns Ooh, to come up. But Baron nice and shot. KV once again, absolute, absolute masterclass in the uh, Shigo, uh, Shinobi gank there. You saw a lot of damage there coming out from the both of them, and Totemite going from 100 to 0 real quick in that scenario. Ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a match up here. Uh, you know, I think this would be a great time to bring in Sohinki just to talk about what we're seeing here. We've, we've seen Nemesis kind of excel in these large team fights, but ECG bringing it back. Uh, do you think either of these teams are playing to their play styles a little bit better? Uh, do you see anything standing out here? But Naz was talking about a little bit in that uh, making pushes onto the home points in these maps can be very, very risky, especially because of how big they are in terms of getting reinforcements into the points. So you can't really reinforce the enemy home point very well when you're capturing it. Uh, I think I would have liked to see Nemesis after they won that fight middle cap it, but maybe not commit so hard to the fight. You saw they did commit really hard. Uh, Tote Mind especially getting in there on the Shugoki and uh, eventually was 100 to 0 right there with that Shinobi gank. So uh, we'll look to see Nemesis hopefully come back and play a little bit more uh, reserved. And you see actually right here that uh, it is ECG doing just that, realizing they can't win this fight and backing off. That's what uh, Nemesis should have done. Yeah, great call there, Sohinki. Uh, I, we kind of saw that playing out in real time as you were talking about it. They got low health, and it's really nice to see them drop back for the heal instead of over committing to the fight, losing two or three, and then losing the entire map and everything that they worked for up to this point. It is 720 points to the 570 of Nemesis. ECG have the lead. Let's see what they can do. Three versus two here in mid. KV and Miyoshi dropping down low. Miyoshi's trying to back out of here, wants to get back and heal. As you see, Clor moving out, frontlining for his team, peeling there. And now he's going to be the shield. He's going to be the meat shield, the wall that Nemesis have to get through if they want to fight on the point. And he's going to do a great job of it so far. Finally, a guard break and a top heavy will come through as Ashcroft able to land that. You know, I, I feel like Ashcroft, uh, speaking of him, has been playing a little bit better um, in, in this map here than we've seen thus far. Uh, so far in the Dominion Series Finals, Clore and Ashcroft still toe-to-toe. -to -toe. While there's a big fight on the home points, it is C and B capped for Nemesis as ECG has lost B. They're down in the point total right now. <clears throat> and Clore actually losing this 1v1 fight. This is going to be really big. Now, Ashcroft is going to be able to move up if he wants to contest the home point from ECG. He's going to get the execution as well. And this is not what you're looking for if you are extra cool gotchers. Yeah, at this point, you can kind of see, similar to what Sahinki kind of mentioned there, Nemesis have just gotten a bit better at noticing that they probably don't want to take the fight. I'd like to remind the viewers at home, Citadel Gate does generate the most points from the minion lane from any of our maps on the competitive pool. So actually just having two of these points and just clearing out a minions is a really good way of generating points and just extending your advantage. A lot of fire coming down as KV taken down low. Setmix, he is on the scene here looking for this raider. Setmix also dealing with Kalura on the edge. We'll watch over the shoulder of Barak here as he's on the Miyoshi along with Setmix. Kind of picking their time, biting their time, picking their targets very carefully. Setmix, oh Ooh. my gosh, even a minion could have been able to take him down at that point. KV falls. Ashcroft credited with the kill there. He's working on his way towards his tier three feet, getting unlocked. Clore hanging with his back to his minions. It gives you a little bit of safety when you have the minions to your back. He'll get the guard break coming over the top. Goes into a parry. Ashcroft able to do that, fainting out uh, the kick there. So Ashcroft, 
he wants to go ahead and drop self back. ECG now put into breaking. Oh my god, that happened quickly uh, as this game was back and forth, but suddenly it looks like it's out of control. ECG do have one dead, but he's going to be revived right now. That means there's four on the map. Nemesis have two down, but they'll both be respawning. ECG have come out of breaking, but their backs are completely against the wall, and Nemesis seem to be in the driver's seat. Yeah, Nemesis very much in the driver's seat, but just as we say that ECG managed to claw back some advantage on this map, do capture the B point, and just look at, look at the number of minions here. It's ridiculous on Citadel gig. Baron, seeing that a lot of the members are away from their home point, is very much just going to go for the back cap here. No one in Nemesis is there to stop him apart from Ashcraft, but you can see extra cool gutchers are under breaking, and uh, Nemesis Esports do need to play this out. They can play this out pretty slowly, because all they Whoa. have to Whoa. all they have to make sure is they don't lose their home point. If they don't lose their home point, they'll be in this breaking scenario for quite a while. Tote mine gets taken out in the back there by Miyoshi. KV looking to push for their home point, knowing that extra cool gachers need to win this go. fight if they want to be put out of breaking. Uh-oh, Setmix had got murdered so fast in B that he's already respawned and he's making his way back out of the home point. I don't know, nobody's here to save you, KV. Oh my gosh, I, oh, you know, no. would just really be hoping he could get himself out of there. He's executed. There'll be no respawn for him. There'll be no revive uh, for him as, uh, as well. And Nemesis, they move forward now like the force of the ocean. Wow. It's only a matter of time before they reel this thing in here. Oh my gosh, you gotta be devastated if you're ECG to just lose uh, control of the fight 100%. in that final situation at the end. 100%, there must have been some form of miscommunication. KV was probably shouting on comms, look, I'm gonna go try and stall it in the home point, I'm gonna need some support, but you just see a lot of the members, you had Barrett, uh, Baron back at the home point trying to heal, you had Miyoshi clearing out B, there honestly just seemed to be like a breakdown of communication as to why no one came to support KV, or why KV even went to the home point there in the first place. Baron trying oh, no. to stall out as heroic as possible, but it looks all but lost as Setmix picks Woo! up the execute. And it's kind of beautiful to see Setmix that have a really good performance this game, was really pivotal in all of the ganks that he set up for Nemesis Esports, and they do win out on this team fighting map. Kind of expected. Uh, as part of what we saw in Sanctuary Bridge performance, is all about going into Overwatch. Will Nemesis be able to step up on this map that's very much eluded them? Yeah, we'll see, but let's take a look at these numbers from game one here. You can see Totemine showed up, nine kills. I think that might be the most for him so far on the day. Three objectives taken as well. And I, you know, we said it early on when Totemine's playing well, Nemesis is playing well. On the flip side, we did have KV showing up for his team, six kills, seven kills for Chlor. They just have to put it together, play a little bit tighter. As you said, it could have been a communication thing, but whatever the case, these are two evenly matched teams and it's whoever plays just a little bit better is going to be the winner of this series. But Nemesis is up one, two, zero. Yeah, I've got tingles as to uh, what's coming up in the next game. Of course, it is a map that <laughs> that probably Nemesis doesn't want to doesn't want to remember that game. Uh, it was very much a complete stomp. They had lost fight after fight after fight, and maybe they should do something similar to what Oversleepers done. Look to force these team fights push with four members onto these points and try to win these fights before a member of. Uh, extra cool gachers can rotate to come and support. I think that's the only way that Nemesis can look to win these, especially in a map that they were completely decimated on. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll see. I think this is the map uh, where we saw Totemind kind of get shut out in their first series, and we saw that he was one of the top dogs showing up there, I think nine kills um, <clears throat> in, in the first game of this series. So. Um, that's kind of my player to watch if if I was gonna go ahead and make a prediction here. But let's go ahead and break down our third or our second map here with So Hinky. Heading into map number two of the series, we might as well call this ECG Watch because they've been owning this map all day. <laughs> We'll see how it plays out. Honestly, Nemesis, I agree. They need to look to force more team fights. They don't seem to have 
quite as much experience in the 2v2 realm, which kind of makes sense, right? A lot of that really has to do with uh, a, spending a lot of time together practicing those ganks. So uh, the fact that the roster's shaken up might mean that maybe the 2v2s aren't as strong as they need them to be. But the team fight's looking real strong. We'll see if they go and try to force that big team fight on C, or if they rely on the 2v2s and maybe just shake off the first series as a fluke. Ooh, so Hinky thinking there might be some fluke vibes in the air. Uh, I gotta say, yeah, it's probably gonna come down to this C fight <clears throat> early on. I, I gotta say, man, I'm I'm really scared for ECG right now. Backs against the wall. Nemesis smell. There's blood in the water. I don't know, Naz. What are you thinking? Yeah, I feel like in these sort of situations, the pressure is probably really dialed up for ECG. Nemesis Esports, this is possibly the best scenario to be going into this game, Overwatch. You don't want to be one game down going into this game. You want to play with a bit more comfort, a bit more confidence. And I really feel going in with that one win in the bag definitely delivers that for Nemesis. Yeah, you got to wonder how, you know, I don't have Twitch chat open. I bet the Nemesis fans are starting to come alive here if they're quieted early on here in their first series of the day. But ladies and gentlemen, everything on the line for ECG is win or go home time. Nemesis have the advantage 1-0 in this best of three series. And we will be watching over the shoulder of Set Mix early on. He was going up against Clore. Clore, he's going to go ahead and deal with Set Mix on the edge. Able to connect, has the advantage as far as damage applied. Uh, Barak up on the hill. KV going toe to toe with Tote Mind. And this is where we saw Tote Mind get slayed in his first series of the day on this map. He's get guard broken into a heavy, guard broken into a heavy. He'll be able to go ahead and deal with that, but chop down as he tries to run away. KV has the advantage. Extra cool gas shears have dominated the fight here on C and turned it up to 101. What a performance in this first engage on Overwatch. Like what, what? What is up? Is is there like some sort of crack on this map that all of a sudden extra cool gacha smoke can become these like super mutants on the battlefield? They seem to be absolutely stellar when it comes to this map. I'm kind of questioning as to why they Nemesis sent the Zanhu up to point B. Of course they did. You would want them to clear out the minions there, but I feel like the, the range that the Zanhu offers in these team fights is so pivotal to get those zones in, to get those unblockable lights in. I'm really wondering as to why they committed that member onto B instead of uh, taking him back and using Oshcraft in, 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 in the fight on C. So you can see here, brilliant spot for extra cool gachers. They are boosting both of the points. B point is still captured by Nemesis. They're waiting for a few members to rotate over to C before looking to fight here again. All right, it comes out into a 2v2. Let's see how this is going to play out. Floor toe-to-toe -to -toe with set mix. Barak over here as well. And KV has been playing well when he's with Clore. See set mix. I, you know, I, I, I'm going to bring in Sohinki. Um, I, you know, I think this 2v2 fight is going to just play itself out. Um, but Sohinki, do you feel that set mix is looking comfortable on this JJ? Mix is definitely warming up, but the player I wanted to talk about is Ashcroft on the John who I agree that I believe Ashcroft should have just been put into this team fight on C just because they could have won it and headed over and cleared out B. Uh, you know, people talk about John who being a counter to uh, Shinobi, but Shinobi in a 1v1 against anyone is going to be very strong. They targeted the 1v1 and Ashcroft came up short, and that's why you see ECG taking such control of the map. Yeah, makes sense to me. Um, but th this is the point when you're triple capped and it's a strong point lead as well. Uh, communication's everything. You, so like your back's against the wall. Vivinaz, if you're on this team right now and you're team captain for communication, what are you telling your squad? What what rotation are you trying to make and what are you telling your teammates? I, I would probably just try and lean on to what our team does best. And we've kind of seen it in the previous games and the previous game ones between these teams. And that is just team fun. We need to just look to try and force out as many team fights against the ECG. Even though we're at point advantage right now, let's just try and force onto one point, look for that fight, and that seems to be what is happening here. Oh, KV 
He's going to go ahead and use his Fury. So a lot of damage coming out. If KB is going to be connecting on anyone, they have to respect this. Baron chases down set, makes up on the stairs. Totemine trying to pick a target, but he's just spinning in circles. Baron able to get the kill. That's going to be one down for Nemesis. Make it two. They're dropping like flies. They'll be able to take down Miyoshi, but not before a third falls. And it's going to be four. Totemine murdered up against the wall. Blood has splattered. He's been executed. Oh, this is really tough. If you're a Nemesis fan right now, you are in absolute pain. Toadmine's head has exploded in game and probably in real life as well. I, I'm honestly flabbergasted as to how well ECG play this map and how well they play on this map. It just feels like they're so comfortable on this map that they'll happily take on any fight even if it's a team fight and they know that they're at such an uh su at such an advantage with their renowned lead that they will just basically strong hand most of these fights just with the power that they inherently get from their feet advantage you know th th that makes sense and these players, um, you know, most most Verona players are, are much better than myself, but we're able to analyze this game from a top-down view. And what, what I'm seeing out of, and I mentioned it before, was Set Mix just felt a little bit uncomfortable. I'll say this as Totemine's taken a lot of damage. Um, and I've seen this when I'm watching scrims of these teams, especially you can hear them talking, is on this JJ, I think they're just telling him to try and peel for him too too much and to the point where he's not actually, like, playing for honor. Like, he's just trying to do what his teammate said and just peeling. In that sense... He's not being like offensive. He's not dishing out the damage. And therefore, it's like three and a half versus four. Definitely not Set Mix's fault alone, but you do feel a little bit awkward. Miyoshi comes up with the longbow, gets a little bit of damage on the Set Mix up on the bridge. Baron and Set Mix toe to toe. Baron can drop back wherever he wants. They still control A and C. It's a 650 point lead over to ECG. Down one in this best of three, but it looks like they're about to tie it up as they've put Nemesis into breaking with a triple cap. This definitely could get unbroken. But this is going to be Set Mix dropping down. He will not be able to respawn unless they pull themselves out of this breaking situation. Ashcroft running around down on the floor level. It looks like they will get the revive. So it's still 4v4, but just an absolute disaster for Nemesis Esports. Yeah, it's it's a com it's a complete wash, this game. A lot of our games today have actually been super close. They've all went to the wire. and We seem to be going on to a game three here. Nemesis Esports still has three members up, but the point deficit is so large. Even if it were to win this fight, how could they ever claw back such a deficit? Miyoshi just trying to see what they can do against Barak. Bur it does get a successful top parry there into that side heavy. Tries to follow up with oh. the unblockable heavy. Does not land. Barak just in a pitiful situation oh here. I guess executed by Miyoshi. And I just want to point out Miyoshi. Absolutely exceptional performance here from the initial team fight to the use of that tier four in the corner earlier on in the game, basically obstructing all of the enemy from coming anywhere near him and anywhere near point C. So honestly, really good performance here from once again, extra cool gadgets. I, I, I want to say we didn't expect it, but we basically all had it on the cards. The Overwatch is very much a map that we expected this team to win. Yeah, I think ECG, they always they play map one on Wi-Fi. They they plug in uh, hardline to Ethernet <laughs> every time they get onto Overwatch. Um, and it, 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 all jokes aside, extra cool got shares. Uh, amazing map, too, to tie this series up one to one. That was phenomenal. Look at Baron, 13 and 0. KV, 9 and 0. Chlor, 8 and 0. 9 and 1 for Miyoshi. These guys have dialed it up all the way to the roof and this is just so impressive they had tier fours unlocked in the first like minute and a half of this game is what it felt like on the other side uh barack he only had his tier one feet unlocked at the end of that game I, I, it's just night and day absolutely night and day i i, I just want to say it's a, it's a very sad stat to point out but i'm pretty sure tote mind is zero kills across two games of overwatch which is very sad to see but it, it just felt like a, a poor performance there once again from Nemesis. But we kind of have to point out Baron was playing absolutely out of their mind. They were able to win constant 1v1s. They were able to constantly help out in these ganks and these team fights. And they yeah. were just basically the, the the real big pick here for uh, for this team. 
Yeah, it was so impressive. I mean, every time you had multiple heroes attacking a target, and of course these are pros, but we do see revenge triggered off pretty frequently. I mean, it's really easy to do. Um, so to see ECG multiple heroes getting these ganks and they're not triggering off revenge, but you see just staggering blows, landing heavies, comboing it up. They've shot people 100 to zero a few times. Uh, so it's been really fun to watch, man. I, I think uh, I'm gonna have to give ECG all the credit in the world as we head into this map three. I'm scared for Nemesis, really. Yeah, so am I, of course. Beachhead, we haven't seen in the rotation, and, and th this can be played in two separate ways, where you do attack the home points, or you go for that initial fight on the B point. So I want to see if Nemesis can try harder in forcing these team fights. They can try harder, but the problem is they tried in Overwatch, and they just weren't able to win out the team fights even on that map. So it'll be exciting to see if they can claw it back in this game free. And uh, saying that, we do have the map ready, and Sahinki will take us through it. Beachhead for the first time today in our last match of this lower bracket final. Nemesis looking to force these team fights, I'm sure. But the thing to point out about this map as compared to Citadel Gate, there are much faster rotations between both home points. So look to see whichever team wins this initial team fight, take over the entire map and try to have a stranglehold over this series. Absolutely. This is uh, one of the most fun maps, I think, because it's <clears throat> tight quarters. You can get from all the way from A to C really fast. Um, the bridge on B mm -hmm. gives you an, uh, an area where you can drop down if people are just kind of shoved under it or if they're not paying attention. Um, but odds are we see just uh, early on here a home cap into a devastating three versus three, four, four versus four skirmish in the B point. And uh, it's a wide open B point for for such a small map, is it not, Nas? Yeah, it's a super wide, wide open B point. Very similar in this girth to uh, Citadel Gate. Not as many minions, but we do see it playing a big importance when it comes to B. And I just kind of want to, at some point, probably dissect as to how much impact is the Shinobi having uh, on a team compared to not running them on a team. We do see both Mina B and Oversleepers and also uh, Baron for extra cool gadgets putting in some really big performances. And I'm wondering if Nemesis are just missing out by not having this character. Possibly. I mean, um, you definitely play the, the character more than I do, and we know that it's been effective, but at the end of the day, you have to be comfortable on these picks, especially in competition like this. Toadie, eating some nice damage from KV. They got some staggering uh, blows coming through as well. Barak dropping low. Baron's on the edge. He might get knocked. Will they get these oh. the drop down? But, oh, oh, Toadie, he drunk. You played yourself. Toad mine, he played himself. Baron, he's quickly back up onto C, heavily contested. So A was capped by extra cool gashiers, and they immediately moved over to C. This is crazy. Now they are dropping low. Oh, Mine no. Gets the guard break. It's down. Comes over the top of Baron. But pulls back. Baron, he's so low. Will he be able to get this kill? Toadmine, don't play yourself here again, buddy. Baron, looking over the top of the dodge back by Baron. He is so fast. Toadmine wants to get back up the stairs. Baron, oh! he's another one. Oh, he, I don't know if he had one health remaining. And Setmix should be able to get the kill on the KV Nemesis by the skin of their teeth. Taking the C point, it, that was so important towards winning this match. Oh, a hundred percent. You know, Tomine basically saw the life flash before his eyes, and then out of nowhere, <laughs> Barak, like an eagle swooping down, manages to get the kill and save his teammate. Clore falls one on one. A lot of these uh, players are just kind of jumping into the point from the ECG side and trying to stall as long as possible on the Nemesis home point. But Nemesis are doing pretty well in picking them off one by one. This is hilarious that we're two minutes in and nobody is capped B and that C is still contested. Um, because of the lack of execution, that, that's allowed ECG to rotate out on the map consistently. And they're just flooding in to see while they weren't controlling the point um, they, or like winning the fight to the point where they can control it. They're constantly keeping it contested. And now they have control of A and B with C contested. And Nemesis has some low heroes. Barak trying to get back, but he'll be chopped down uh, by KV. The, the Renown goes over towards KV and that's exactly what you're looking for. This Raider, we want to get the these feats unlocked as quickly as possible. Toadie gets himself a guard break, throws off the edge. 
He, he, was, he, he didn't want to play himself again. Yeah, he was, he was like, thinking yeah, about it. Come back up here. If you want to come back up here with 30 HP, go ahead and do it yourself. I got I got work to do. Totemine slipping out over to Miyoshi, who's usually fighting on the edge of the fights. Find himself in a 1v1 with the Shugo. Counter guard break is there. Heavy over the top. Thinking about heavy. Cancels it off. Gets himself a guard break. The knock back there. Miyoshi finds himself in dangerous way as he lands right in front of set mix with a headbutt. Toadmine, great plays. Toadmine single handedly just dumpstering Miyoshi, leaving Miyoshi with eight seconds to respawn and think about all the bad things oh. that he's done in that fight. Chlor, little backbreaker. Hello, this is the chiropractor, and it's coming out for free. Toadie's turned up. Chlor, back against the wall, two versus one. Throws the CGB down below. Baron's low health as well. KV thinking about getting onto A as it's contested by Ashcroft. So things getting a little bit awkward for nice, ACG. Two rough. members down, one execution, long spawns, and now a chance for Nemesis to make the rotations across the map and potentially pressure A. That yeah, really well played there from Ashcraft, picking up that vital kill on Baron on the home point, allowing to basically calm to his team. Okay, look, we have an advantage. Come to the home point, take some Mayoshi. Ashcroft here Ruh -ruh. is putting in a lot of work here for Nemesis Esports, and they pick up the home point. Ruh -ruh. I would like to point out that it was really well played. They got a, even though they were at a point deficit, there was a lot of kills. Uh, achieved there by Nemesis on their home point. A lot of defender renown was granted. And you can see members all across the board, they're unlocking their tier twos, whilst ECG, even though the points are very much the same, are still on their first tier, kind of building up to that second tier. Barak, tier three feet has been unlocked. He's got the health advantage. Klor, guard broken, up against the wall. Oh my gosh, a Klor. A saved as his teammate comes in and shoves Barack back. Set mix dancing around side to side. Nice parry from Clore. We'll keep him alive for the time being. Tote go for the head, but Clore able to dodge back out of that KV. Uh, nearly full health over here. He's going to go ahead and look to peel for his teammate, apply the damage, be the front line, be a little bit of a tank here. Nice parry on the tote. Oh, they give him the one two as Miyoshi showed up to the party. Miyoshi, nice chunk damage. Set mix and tote low. Potentially one full heavy com coming through on Satmix could take him down, but Satmix is going to be playing this incredibly well. He's got the damage. Miyoshi, one light, takes him down. Miyoshi gets the parry, shoving Satmix backwards. Miyoshi's hanging on the back of the fight. Satmix able to take down Chlor. Miyoshi takes down Setmix. This is just a bloodbath back and forth. But the real deal <laughs> and the thing that matters is C has been uncontested the whole time. Nemesis just chugging along and taking all of the points. Oh, uh, that was uh, pretty pretty well played there from Brack to stall for so long. Picks up another kill on this point. Now Ashcroft's there to support. Nearly 100 to 0. Baron. Baron in critical health after only just arriving on the point. Poor lad. And you can see the Fire Flash whiffs there. Oh no, what a waste there from Barak on the Fire Flash. Such a pivotal team fighting feat. Just absolutely wasted. Ashcroft does pick off one. From the back there, using the arrow strike. Trying to see what they can do against KV. Tote mine there in support. And Ashcroft makes it out alive. What a, what a, what a great performance yeah. so far here on Nemesis. Stalling out this point for so long. Ashcroft's made it out, but if they can kill Toady, they're going to grab this heal up, and then they can make a rotate out onto the map. I'm wondering, where is Bar Barak right now on the map? Is he going to make his way over? And there he is. Oh, there we go. Oh, like Superman. Nemesis have flooded their heroes in. They have continued to contest A. They've got C and B and a 400, nah, not quite 400, the 300 point lead ish, uh, but dominating control over the map. Ladies and gentlemen, reminder this is game number three in a best of three. If Nemesis take this, they send ECG packing and they'll go ahead and be playing up against Oversleepers. So this is so important for ECG here in these last few minutes of potentially their final match here. They've got to take Nemesis down and there are two heroes dead on each team, but the execution for ECG means Nemesis have even an easier time. I mean, I, uh, Nas, you, your your insight is so incredible. I want to bring in Sohinky just for a second though. Talk to me, Sohinky. How is Nemesis able to completely contest this A point for, for literally like the last seven minutes? I honestly think it's just been an anti-gank clinic here on the side of Nemesis. It was Barak and then it was Setmix there just now. 
Uh, Barak found himself in a 1v3 scenario. He popped Fury, had Revenge ready to go, and actually took down two, and they've just been able to be in these 1v2 and 1v3 scenarios, as you pointed out, for like five minutes now contesting this C point, and that's why they find themselves so head in points. They've been able to make sure the person that was boosting the home point over on uh, A is taking control of middle, and now this fight is just lasting forever and ever. Ashcroft rotating back in, Toadie rotating back in. They're able to keep this fight going because of the really good anti-gang. Ooh! Flash comes in. Barack is burning. Baron, he's low. He's going to get killed off. Nemesis take two down across the map. And now, what do you want to do? It's pretty much their advantage, their choice, how they want to rotate on the map. Now, Clore has a health advantage, but they can't connect. Coming over the top, he's going to go ahead and feign it out. Parry's there. Barack one light, but he'll just come nice. over the top, able to get the kill. But they're not able to seal the deal. They can't cap a set mix shows up. Toadmine shows up, and ladies and gentlemen, this looks like it's going to be Nemesis taking this map, barring an absolute miracle out of ECG, which I'm not going to count them out for making, but KV, he's low in health, Setmix is there, Setmix has got the kill, Toadmine going for a headbutt, he's just headbanging, you know he's listening to some, some rock music, so he just keeps headbanging constantly, even though he's missing him, it doesn't matter, he's over here on the Shugo, big boy holding it down, two versus one, anti-gang situation, Miyoshi, you gotta land some blows. They can't afford to put Toadie in uh, to revenge right now. They can't trigger it off. They're looking to get a heavy to finish it off at the end. Clore will come through. He will get the kill. They finally capped A. They have B. It's a 350 point lead over here for Nemesis, but an opening for ECG. Only the slimmest of openings though, Vivnaz. It's, it's, it's very slim. We just saw KV earlier on the team fight use the fire flash so we know he doesn't have that anymore barak's fire flash has come up after being wastefully used at the start of the fight on a does get the parry there can he finish oh. off ban if he finishes them off here there's such a great okay we've got the shield popping off here just in time to save this man you can see phalanx being popped him. off all across Clore with the absolute save the comms are probably on point baron low stamina is breaking now so we do have a situation where it's looking pretty bad for ECG. ECG put into breaking. It will quickly rally. Uh, there, you know, this is bottom of the barrel stuff. ECG are looking for any, you know, any secret, any strategy that you've been holding back, any maneuver. It is time to bring it out. Oh my gosh, Miyoshi rolls all the way off of the edge there. As Totemine just swinging for the fences. MLB might be calling up for a contract after this match if they had any scouts in here watching. Clor. What are you going to do, buddy? He's got his buddy coming in, Baron, as well. He's done so well today, but this is the moment that matters the most. All of the other matches, all oh, of the no. other kills, it doesn't matter if you're going to lose the match three. Barak's down low. He's trying to jump back, but they've caught him with the guard break. They've got the kill. They've closed this, this, this point lead down to about 100 points. Two dead from Nemesis. We're getting the respawns right now. But with the fire coming in, Baron's low. He wants to draw back to A. He's going to tag tag Miyoshi and a little tag team action. KV, full health. That's exactly what you're looking to see. Clore as well. Ashcroft is low. Set mix on the front lines for his team. KV wants to punish. It's going to be set mix. They're looking for the combo. Miyoshi, he's patient. He's looking for the opening. The counter guard break is there. Set mix will be giving up nothing for free. Not today. Miyoshi finds himself pinned between two but just can't really connect on the Sedmix. Sedmix has really stalled this out. If they win this at the end, major credit to Sedmix for the way he just played that super defensively. Nice timing, tote mine. Oh! Burn, baby, burn! As the fire Big comes Yoshi. raining through, the Phalanx popped out here. It looks like Nemesis just said, unleash all hell onto this point C but they haven't closed it out. They used a lot of their feats there, and by some miracle, ECG managed to stay alive. C remains contested. Miyoshi stays alive. Baron, he is lower health uh, than his opponent over here, Ashcroft, but this is them in breaking right now. They've got one dead. I don't know where the respawn is for this. They could look for it potentially based on, on, on where he is on the map, but it's three versus four. Ashcroft pinned up against the wall. Baron, let's go. Let's go for the execute. Setmix. Setmix is low. Setmix gets dropped down. Baron able to... Oh, they actually get two there. It's buying just enough time. Tote mine. He's low health. KV on the Raider looking for it. Baron, he's back. He's 40. He's got the kick. Looking for a little bit of zone. Feigning out the kick there. Oh, the dance no. board. It's Clore getting the kill with Ashcroft. Tote mine falling down as well. Unbelievable Naruto run back across the map. This is going to be an opportunity for Baron to go ahead and heal up. 
Wars over here with KV. What are you guys going to do? How do you approach this? Barak, he's got to play this defensively for a second. Set mixes there. But they get the knock off the edge. KV, he's knocked off and he's killed Klor. He's going to get the drop down. Oh, yeah! They've got it. This is the kill. Barak hammering it down. They get two ledges back to back. What a phenomenal way for Nemesis to go ahead and pull themselves back. But defenders rally. They're all respawned. And ladies and gentlemen, this is so close, about as close as it gets. We've seen ECG, if this goes into double breaking, ECG seems to d excel there. They're gonna have to get the respawn. This is absolutely nuts, Naz. It's absolutely crazy. We saw there earlier Miyoshi using that tier four, basically single-handedly bringing back ECG into the game, forcing out that phalanx from Semix. But here we go, we have that scenario that you just spoke about there. We have double breaking. Tier 4 is being unlocked all across the shop. Tier 4 for Shigoki needs to be used at such a pivotal point, but only after a team fight is started. Now you have this little dance. Who's going to commit first? You see here, Baron has used the tier 4, is probably, probably saying to the team, look, guys, we need to wait out. Even though we've lost one member, we still need to wait out for my tier 4 if we were to commit to the fight. But I think Nemesis already oh, knows this, and they're trying to initiate the fight as soon as possible. The, yeah, I mean, he oh no, I never wasted the flask! Block off on a couple of attacks. That's a missed flask right here. This is not what you're looking for. And now the fight pours out into B. Baron has the revenge triggered off. He's chasing forward. Barak has low health. Can he possibly get the kill? Jumping forward, but a nice parry turning around. Barak just buying time for his teammate. Uh, set mix, he's trying to get the damage in from behind, but a nice rolls forward. Shinobi on the Baron on the Shinobi constantly. Just oh! Out. Death from above! My man, they pulled him right into the point where he Ash got dropped down on. Oh, Clore! Oh, Cody, no! he's gonna get choked out. But Cody, he doesn't mind getting choked out in a moment like this. Nemesis Esports, <laughs> when it mattered the most. They set him up, they knock him down. Totemine's gonna go out with some style and a longbow as he can play with his food. Clore is will be left for the 1v1. It is pure honor. And oh no, Setmix wants it. Setmix just comes in. I love it. I thought they were gonna 1v1 at the end. Setmix says now. Oh but my god. I want that go. Nemesis, Nemesis picked up the Take victory. The series. Oh, Woo. what an incredible showing from them. We saw there near the end baron was trying so hard to prevent barack from getting onto the point but because he had his blinkers on he did not see that ashcroft may potentially let a uh, jump attack him and we saw baron just get taken out by that and then kv at that point uh, sorry kv at that point just couldn't do anything you see there barack with an absolute stellar performance on the raider dropping a 20 takedown bomb this game I mean, absolutely phenomenal. 20 kills. Look at the objectives are pretty low there. But let's have a quick look at the replays from this series. For anyone just joining us, this was really phenomenal. And ECG playing their hearts out. <clears throat> Game one, uh, you know, this is just... Uh, Nemesis doing their thing. They they take these big team fights. They stall out on points. They've played incredibly well. And when it mattered the most, KV found himself isolated from his team at the very end, trying to get a bat cap. But Nemesis had respawned too quickly. And with that, they were able to seal the deal and take uh, Citadel Gate in style, which put ECG on the back foot. But in game two, we found ECG extra cool guy shares are extra cool on Overwatch. And from A to A to Z, they won every fight on C. They rotated across the map. It's like they're playing on steroids when they play on Overwatch. I don't know what it is about this map, but they won almost everything. We saw Totemine got shut down here. KV had turned up. Baron was turned up. And for a second, you know, everybody was questioning what's going to happen in game three. A lot of people switching over thinking ECG is going to take this. But this one was about as close as it could get. ECG trying to back cap. They had stalled out on C for a very long time. But when Nemesis finally broke through the barriers, they were able to not only cap C, but to try and back cap A and kept A uh, contested for the better part of five or six minutes. It was absolutely nuts. So Hinky and Nas, our in-game analysts, said uh, exactly how the, it was broken down at the very end. Uh, just plays so beautiful by Nemesis. This is going to send them into the grand finals. ECG 
going home. Congratulations to Nemesis Esports. Yeah, absolutely. Nemesis Esports absolutely clutching it in the end in that double breaking scenario. Extra cool. They put up a hell of a fight, though. Even every single one of their series making it to game three. But the time has finally come for a grand finals of EU. Ladies and gentlemen, we have made it the final of the Dominion series and the grand final of Europe. Here we are, the best of the best. Let's make it happen, boys! Woo! <laughs> I'm cosplaying. Now, I know most of you might think I'm doing Centurion, but I'm not cool enough to do that. So uh, I'm actually cosplaying my favorite character, the Citadel Gate Defender, Defender Minion. All right, the guy who cuts the bridge <laughs> down for his brothers. He is my favorite For Honor boy. This one's for you, Citadel Gate Defender Minion 7. But uh, gentlemen, welcome to the grand finals. Time to get hyped. This helmet just stinks. It stinks like death. And I'm so excited to be sharing that moment here with you today. Oversleepers versus Nemesis. Did you think this moment would come, humans? Were these the teams you expected? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what I said in the beginning of the day. Um, so it's exactly uh, how uh, I, I, I didn't predict this now. I think I said ECG early on, but you know what? These teams are so tightly mixed. And I just want to say, of, of course, that helmet stinks if your head's in it. So it's like, uh, you know, hey, nothing you new so that you're much. saying here. All right, shut up, humanist. He, uh, Vivid Nas, the band whose opinion I, I actually value talking. on this panel. <laughs> Here we are, the best of the best. Now, uh, Nemesis, they had roster swaps. They had new guys. They still got the mojo. It's like watching the old Nemesis play again. Uh, do you feel like they, uh, were they looking that good coming in here? Were you expect, I, you said that you thought they'd take the whole thing, but uh, live up to expectations. Yeah, I think they lived up to expectations. Bar Overwatch, I don't know what happened to them in Overwatch. But it seems Oversleepers caught the same case as well against ECG. So maybe it's just a map that maybe ECG only plays on Overwatch. Maybe that maybe when they log into Piranha, <laughs> that's the only map that's open up for them. And that's the only map that they can set. But it's 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 really good that we managed to see that these these are the two the finalists. They basically performed in most of these majors, constantly have back and forth against each other. So it'll be interested to see who wins it out in the end. Of course, it is a bit of an advantage to oversleepers right now. They do have that ability for the reset if they are to lose this series against Nemesis Esports. Ah, yes, the reset, the grand reset. You know, I, I've worked in esports where we didn't have the reset. It's a one and done. Oh, what can you do? But that's what I love about For Honor, baby. It's all about that double breaking. It's all about that comeback potential. So I do hope that we get to see that here today. I had literally have no idea how these guys fight with the helmet on. I mean, uh, the field of view, guys, is just so much. I can barely make you out, humanist. Uh, uh, they didn't have glasses back then, so, you know, uh, you would have <laughs> certainly been just dead at the age of, like, seven. But uh, me, no, I mean, <laughs> the, the helmet, it does hurt the vision, I must say. You guys voted who will win, Nemesis or Oversleepers, and that is a, that was a straight 50-50 for a few seconds there. That was pretty impressive here. Uh, after seeing the open, but has your opinion changed at all? Uh, humanist, do you feel like uh, they have a chance of taking this whole thing? Okay, they're actually... All right, well, take it easy, chat. Take it easy. All right? <laughs> they're pretty good. Anyway, Humanist, uh, what do you think about the oversleepers? 50-50? Uh, you know, I'm going to go into this. I'm going to give it to the oversleepers. Probably 90-10. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Relax, relax. <laughs> Vivid. Uh, I'm pretty relaxed over here. Relax! Humanist, you're too excited right now, please. Yeah, so honestly, I, I still very much expect Nemesis to, to w win out the whole thing. And of course, chat is always on my side. At first, everyone everyone thought that ECG would very much have the better of Nemesis after their first series performance. But I was always a believer. My stonks are so high right now, and they are paying dividends. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, congratulations there, my friend. It is looking pretty damn good. Now, Humanist, I want you to walk us through uh, this next little surprise we have here, if you don't mind. I want you to talk me through this journey to get here once more. Uh, can you remind us how we got to the finals? 
Yeah, but instead of walking through, let's run on through with Nemesis leading out the number one overall points, the number one seed, first place in majors two and three. They came in with some roster shakeups, but they are doing it once again. Russian guy mind games, a lot of points over here. The number two seed, first place in major one, but it looks like some things have gone downhill from since major one for this team. Oversleepers, this is a team that I didn't have some respect for because they are oversleeping early on in the first couple of majors, but they got third place in major three, the number three seed. And of course they are here. They're doing work and trying to take the grand finals. ECG, who we just saw eliminated, did win our last chance qualifier, came in as the number four seed in hell. They almost made it to the grand finals of the Dominion Series finals. This this is how we got here and we are ready to move forward that is right my friends now you get your prizes for watching of course hopefully you guys are answering trivia questions i've gotten three the last three wrong very upsetting for me personally but i hope you guys are doing better you will be able to get these fantastic rewards for watching especially here during the eu finals of the finals of the dominion series and uh, you know i'll throw in a little something else i will throw in my sweating helmet whoever gets the most points uh, please dm me on twitter and i will send you this helmet that i have been sweating profusely in whether you like it or not it is unfortunately uh required that you take it you get the fairy tale winter battle outfit though do enjoy that as you uh, have that thing stinking up your entire home here and uh, do enjoy the ice fairies ornament oh my goodness gracious those lovely fairies right on my shoulder and right on my head leading me into glorious battle to die for the fairy queen that is not real lore do not quote me on that and there you go look at that the sword of ice effect as well we're playing along so uh, don't go anywhere you might not have enough points for this bad boy by the end of eu but we still got all of na now coming up just a reminder after this grand finals match we're gonna break it down in our post game show and talk all about the greatest For Honor players in history of Dominion here at the end of the Dominion series for EU. But we're only halfway done after that. We're going straight into NA and doing it all over again, baby. You have got so many For Honor strategies to steal for your pub games so that you can get even better. Welcome, my friends, to the Grand Finals. We've got the map draft. We had the teams pick the maps they wanted to play vivid. How are you feeling about these pickups? Oh my God, Cynical Gate! Uh, my boy, he's gonna die. The, yeah, yeah. the defender, my boy. We'll get to okay, we'll get ahead. to watch we'll get to watch the character you're cosplaying once again if we do reach that game three. But starting off on Sanctuary Bridge, I think this is the probably the, the pivotal match for both of these teams. They both kind of deem themselves as being the better team fighting team against ECG. Will they best each other on this map? And then we'll have that split onto Harbor, where we kind of saw an unorthodox play there here from Oversleepers, where they did try to push for a lot more team fights compared to that traditional split that we see on this map. So on all, all in all, we'll be interested to see if we even reach Citadel Gate, depending on how these teams play. But starting off on Sanctuary Bridge, let's cut over to Sinky, who will be giving us the map preview. It is grand finals time here on the Europe side of things, starting off strong on Sanctuary Bridge. Both teams favor this map up against ECG, but now it's time to see who the team fighting kings are. We're going to see that big team fight in middle over B, and I have to imagine whoever wins that first team fight is really going to set the pace and set the tone for the rest of this series. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sohinky. And uh, we'll go ahead and bring it back. I'd like to look at the uh, predictions one more time from chat. Of course, you know, uh, for honor, it's all about bragging rights. And you will be able to say that you were correct here by voting. We will take a look at these at the end and we will mock anyone that got it wrong live on stream. I will read out every single name. So make sure that you vote right now and get those things in there. Guys, I know it's going to make it to game three. I know it. I know it in my heart. I know my cosplayed character will show up yet again. By the end of this, we will be able to name them, and the time has come. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready. Grand Finals EU Final Day for Honor. Let's hit it up, boys. It is Nemesis Esports versus you know them. You love them. Get them out here. I want to see the goddamn. All right, Nemesis Esports. Taking up a lot of time here. Come on. <laughs> there are like it. Wake up, yes! Oversleepers will awaken. Who will win the baddies or the ZZs? Let's find out. Bring it home to the casters. Take us away, boys. 
Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! We're ready to load into the game. Vivid Nas, this is what <laughs> it all comes down to. They play so many games to make it to the majors. They play so many games in the majors to try to make it to the finals. And they've played so many games in the finals to make it to the grand finals. We have got it all right here for you. Game one, best of three. It's time to turn it up to 1,000. We are about to see the most massive team fight you've ever seen in point B right now. Vivinaz, I want you to call it right now. Who's about to win this team fight? Now, Mrs. Esports, I just feel like they've been absolutely perf performing when it comes to these team fights uh, initially in all of these games. And of course, these teams are probably nervous through the roof. A culmination of a year's work through many majors and many games, all to come down to this grand finals. Nemesis need to look for the possibility of that bracket reset so that they get their chance to win the prize pool. Absolutely. Nemesis is doing pretty well uh, as this fight just spread out all the way over by the gates over here. Barack looking for an opening but getting shoved back. Set mix is low. He wants to peel for his teammate. Nice turnaround. Sleepyhead able to get the parry off. Faint over the top from Set Mix. He's playing the mind games. Sleepyhead lets one rip, but he's parried off back. Set mix shoving him back. Look at this JJ action. Nobody able to get the advantage. But Ashcroft comes Ooh. in from behind. Ashcroft, he's got the damage. He's got the execution. Defenders, Nemesis Esports, so they've got the advantage. They've got a triple cap. Ladies and gentlemen, it looks like Nemesis are starting to walk away with this one early here. Yeah, they just managed to completely stomp out on that initial fight. Ashcroft just doing a bunch of damage, fighting on the point without Barak or Set Mix's help. You can see him here just trying to stall it as long as possible, waiting and biding his time for other allies to arrive. Sickle Rain does land, oh. and Fikas picks up the kill. But just before that, Totemine managed to make it, makes it on to the point to stall out even longer. And the triple cap has put Nemesis Esports in a 560 soft point lead here. Yeah, that's pretty normal, right? Right, Nas? Pretty normal to see teams up by about 570 points. It's not really normal! When you see these top teams going up against each other, Nemesis getting shredded down here as we're watching Toady get lit up by Ficus. But uh, it's a moment for Oversleepers to put their foot on the ground, dig in a little bit, and see if they can move forward. Sleepyhead with his home point capped. He moves into B, clearing this out. It looks like this is going to get shoved back over towards Nemesis. Esports sides and set mix from above, commanding the general of this team commanding his army what will they do the three of them looking up on the ledge like they're ready to drop down and here they come nemesis is ready to party dude i want to see like a hype video with all three of those guys dropping down as the beat drops right here right now <laughs> over sleepers they've got the minions to their backs but nemesis esports they come in swinging throwing some zones catching two it's set mix he's in he's out he's set up toady looking for some love Toady with the GB, but is countered back by Yobu. Not going to be caught out there just yet. Tote mine rotated the minions, doing a little bit of cancel action on his back there. It's really not the spot that Toady wants to be in, but it's a lot of damage coming through onto Fikus, onto Yobu as well. And with this, who is going to drop first? This is so oh. absolutely sketchy. Mina B drops, Sleepy Head then takes Barak down. And uh, it's going to be B getting captured, but immediately swinging back. This is so heavily contested. And what a bloody sloppy mess in B. It's absolutely an absolute bloodbath here on the B point. Barak, as you saw, did fall down earlier, but Samix and Ashkov managed to win out this fight on B. Don't mind rotating as he kind of peels off for his allies to go heal back on the home point uh, and this should mean that um nemesis esports captures both points here barack and Topmine are kind of uh in the in the outnumbered situation fighting against oversleepers here on the forward point of b this game is so much fun as far as just being a combat fighting game but it, it, I just always go back to it. it's so freaking beautiful. And uh, Set Mix, the thing of beauty is he takes down Mina B. Ficus, he takes down Toadie right in the middle of the fight. Toad mine so important to this Nemesis team. When he's doing well, Nemesis is doing well. Ficus swings for the fences, knocks that one over the center field. 
and he'll head back to go ahead and heal on his uh, home point there. Sleepyhead was hanging on the back of the fight with his minions, but caught by Setmix. Setmix coming over the top. He's going to let it fly. Sleepyhead dropping down low. He's got two heroes that he's got to deal with and doing a good job to get his back to the wall. But guard broken. Setmix able to get the kill and not able to secure the XG. I don't know if it was minions or he just didn't uh, quite land it there. But this one in the favor of Nemesis pretty strongly at this point, Vivid Nuz. Oh, 100%. Nemesis Esports is kind of running away with this one. They have the Renown lead, the point lead. Uh, Ashcraft kind of finding himself in a tricky situation here. Does get the parry. Stalling out very well, considering how low health he's on. Oh, the execute just doesn't pan out there. Mina B on low health. Uh, Yobu doing pretty well for health here. Ficus and Yobu just looking to push out B, whilst Mina B just kind of cycles back to the home point. Looking at the points here, Setmix having an absolutely incredible Crazy. game here on the JG. Hasn't really been able to show what he's worth, but he has come out guns swinging for the grand finals here for Nemesis Esports being such a great performance from this player. Has got uh, two of his feats unlocked. I'm kind of surprised how little feats he has unlocked, but Sanctuary Bridge sometimes just because of his cluster nat uh, nature you don't really tend to unlock things as, uh, as as fast as you would on other maps. I'd like to bring in Sohinki just for a second, um, because I think it's really important we see Setmix at 7-0 and just dominating as Nemesis are winning. What's going on, Sohinki? Uh, do you see what Setmix is doing a little bit differently? He felt like he had a slow start today here in, in the, the finals. I think it's actually something you pointed out earlier today, Humanist, in that they've really just sort of been having Setmix hang back and be the sort of healer for the team to make sure that the, the rest of the teammates can get away. That being said, I believe he's just being a lot more offensive this game. Perhaps just like, you know, some communication of, hey guys, let me just play my game. You know, I know how to play. Um, you know, he's a very good offensive player. So really just trusting Setmix more. And then I really have to shout out Ashcroft. You know, we've been saying, oh, whenever Tote Mine plays well, Nemesis plays well, but I think right now Ashcroft, especially in this matchup against the Shinobi, is the the person on Nemesis who really has to show up and so far has been doing it this game. Well, it's a, it's a really great breakdown. Thanks, Hinky, once again for joining us, giving us this in-game an analysis. And um, We're at 960 points for Nemesis. They're about to put Oversleepers into breaking. Oversleepers were holding C and B, although B is contested. A actually contested as well. The points have been paused. We're watching Set Mix over here in B, though, dancing around with Yobu and both dodging out around each other. Set Mix, though, absolutely destroyed. Yobu catches them. At the same time, Fika is able to kill Toady and A continues to be contested. This is insane. Oversleepers, they're pouring in. They're low. Ashcroft oh. is down. Barak is down as well. It's a triple cap. They're about to put Nemesis into breaking right now. Oh, wow. I, mean, I just can't believe it. Oh, I can believe it. This has been happening all day long, but this is just insane that they put them into breaking at the very last moment with the back cap here. Blood pouring across your screen as blood pours across the map. Oversleepers have JJ down at about 60%, 70% health. This is insane. Barrick and his team Nemesis moving out. They want B. They're going to let C and A remain, remain back half. They want to grab B, uh, potentially rally up, and then do some other rotations across the map. But oh, uh, this is, uh, I don't know, it, it, what it matters is this is what they want. Is this what they want right here, right now? Literally, Mina just kind of hold it. So basically, you if you're wondering why they didn't stop them from contesting B, they knew they would break them again if they just stood on the points. Mino is so close to unlocking that tier 3, manages to get it through, and they're just going to look for this team fight. It is a double breaking oh, no. scenario, but Setmix is already incredibly low at the start of this 2v2, and it is looking in Oversleeper's side, but you do see... And he does manage to pick up a bit of health there. Is on one bar of health. Vikas is incredibly low. They've somehow oh, managed to turn it around, but Sleepy gets a side heavy there. Oh, the out of stamina top heavy. My poor boy Barak as he gets arrow striked by uh, Vikas there to nine, finish him off. Three down on the map. Tote mine the only last man standing and over Sleepy. Oh, no. Coming out with the hatch here. Unbelievable at the last moment. I mean, these guys were behind the whole game over sleepers. Absolutely stunning performance on Sanctuary Bridge. What a game number one. What a great performance. That was such a great back and forth from both of these teams. We saw uh, a pretty stellar performance there from Semix, but I feel like that just wasn't enough. 
especially when the map rotations just went in the side of oversleepers. They knew how to get them into breaking. They played their own game, allowed themselves to get their feet, and looked for that pivotal team fight. And if you saw there, they managed to split up members of Nemesis Esports. So that they had those 2v2s, and in those 2v2 situations, oversleepers just won. I mean, you look, there's seven objectives taken uh, to the two of Nemesis. Oversleepers were playing fast, and it looks like the team that plays fast there has the advantage. I can't believe that that's how it played out at the end. Oversleepers, I mean, this is uh, something special that they're bringing here in the Grand Finals. Yeah, uh, it's it's kind of, <laughs> it's, it's, it's do or die now for Nemesis Esports. Going into game two, which is a map that I think Oversleepers did select, is going to be a tough one for them. They need to kind of pull something out of the bag if they want to win this. They were so close to winning on Sanctuary Bridge. The game very much felt in their favor for the entirety of that game. And on the last moment, I feel like they just tripped up on the last hurdle and they just allowed Oversleepers to take over the game at that point. Absolutely insane. Look at people predicting Nemesis 57% down there. But let's talk about the prize pool just for a second. If you guys weren't able to, to catch that earlier on. But there's a lot of money on the line here. Um, these guys, the, the lion's share, of course, going to first place with $10,000. Uh, second place is going to walk away with $5,000. And of course, ECG locked in $3,500 for themselves. I, You know, this is a lot of money uh, with $20,000, $20,500 per region on the line for these teams to walk in, to be playing some for honor, uh, winning some cash. It doesn't get any better than this for these teams. So let's go ahead straight into our map preview for game number two. It's so hinky with all of our knowledge about Harbor. I have all of the knowledge and I will choose to share some of it now. Heading into map number two, it is do or die. As we've said for Nemesis, they really have to come back here. Unfortunately for them, Oversleepers did seem to have the advantage in the 2v2 scenarios. We'll see if they try to force that heavy team fight as we saw earlier on C, or whether or not they'll decide to trust their 2v2s. Well, trust. Let's see. I mean, uh, I think there's gonna be some deceit and some defeat <laughs> as we get into harbor here this is really everything literally on the line uh for nemesis who have clawed their way into the grand finals i mean what a season uh for nemesis esports phenomenal no matter what happens here you got to say they had a phenomenal performance across the entire 2021 20, year so we're headed into game two. It's Harbor, Oversleepers, one game away from locking in $10,000 and first place overall. Vivinaz, let's go, Ooh. buddy. It's absolutely crazy to think that. Um, of course, it'll be interesting to see how we have this initial rotation, actually. We, we went for the one two, one here, committing members on all three points for Nemesis Esports, maybe realizing it was a mistake and then instantly moving a member onto C to help out Ashcroft here. You do have this 2v2 setup, Barak and Ashcroft against Mina and Sleepyhead. You can see already the JJ taking such a large amount of damage. Sickle Rain there just used and then backed off. Sleepyhead once again just being focused completely wow. and is already down. And this is not a good situation to be in as the Shinobi 2v1. Will he get the support that he so desperately needs? The Oversleepers, members all across the map actually critically low. Raider, you can just see on the top of your screen, is low. Fighting off on point A, Mina gets Sickle Rain there on Ashcraft. Waiting, waiting aside and brilliant stalling here from Mina. And you can see, basically, hopefully a teammate arrives sometime soon. <laughs> He's like, we, you're just like waiting for the cavalry to show up and <laughs> nobody's coming. You're like, uh, yeah, someone's going to come, uh, right, 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 right. No, finally, it looks like Tote was contesting on the opposite side of the map, which will finally be secured, um, A, over to the side of Oversleepers, but Nemesis strongly controlling C and B. That was a really awkward fight early on, but really well played by Mina B to stall out for so long now. We see Sleepyhead moving in with Yobu over towards this uh, this B point, which is really tight. Swings back and forth very quickly. And uh, this is going to be kind of awkward here. We're waiting. We're playing patiently. Yobu looking for the opening. He's found Barak. Barak right in the thick of things. Trapped between two. Tootmine had healed up on C. 
Ooh. He's now made his way back over towards B, throwing heavy blows with the Shigoki, but he's caught. He's knocked back. Pikas, you know, sometimes Pikas plays a little quiet. He really has showed up here uh, in the last couple of series. Toadie gives him one right back. This is not where you want to be, Yobo. You really low. Wants to move forward, look for the kill. But once again, it's Totemine showing up, throwing that big body right in front of everything. Totemine gets the kill onto Yobu. Sleepyhead takes down Setmix. And Nemesis uh, still control the overall point lead on this map. This is going to be really awkward here on this point A. Oh, okay. I did not expect Oversleepers to be able to heal on this point. I, I guess uh, I guess Nemesis Esports didn't deem it worthy to push for their home point. Of course, members of Oversleepers were all pretty low, but there's probably reasons as to their decisions. And I guess the reason was they also needed to heal up as well. You can see here Mina B and uh, Noah and Yobu making uh, an oversleepers push to try and capture point B. We can see across the map a lot of eliminations coming out here for Team Nemesis Esports. But when it comes to Renown, oversleepers aren't that far behind. No, and we've seen when oversleepers are doing well, they're you know they're kind of playing the slow game where you know, about a quarter, a third of the way into the match is where they turn it up, start getting the objectives, and the renown starts flooding in. Let's see if they can do it here again as we watch Ashcroft dealing with Mina B. Ashcroft dropping down low. Mina B has been deadly today. Phenomenal. The counter guard break into the kick there. Another counter guard break. One light would take Ashcroft down. He continues to stay alive. Dodges Ooh. out the kick. Gets the guard break. Top. I mean, nice. Ashcroft. What a clutch play in a 1v1 off to the side. It's those kind of plays that wins championships. Yeah, Ashcraft really, really needed not to die there. It seemed very much needed him to be alive for that case. And, but you can see here, just a botched gank attempt here from Nemesis Esports. Slippyhead manages to get revenge, going up against Semix, seeing what he can do. But the revenge runs out. Semix tries to get something here, lands the zone, and they... Oh, okay. I thought they both died there, but... Good work there from Setmix. Uh, <laughs> finally finishing up the kill there on the Oversleepers JJ. Ashcraft finding himself in an outnumbered scenario. Totemine does come to support here. And you can see here, Fika's just trying to figure out as to where his support can be best lent to. See, there in the back, Mina just trying to offer up support against Ashcraft, finishing him off as quickly as possible so that they can all focus on Totemine. They get the execute there in the background. Fika's just in this 1v1 situation against a very fed renowned tote mine, which is a, a, a tough one for Oversleepers to play out. Yeah, he's going to get revenge basically no matter what here, right? Uh, I guess right? they, basically what they have to do is not <laughs> no! tag him, and they did that expertly. Oh but basically what they did is just they threw out indicators and they let the raider be the one to wail on him. At that point, revenge tags were all depleted and no revenge was given. And as soon as Fikas saw the opening for that heavy, and he knew that heavy would finish him off before he would get revenge, oh. he just let it fly. Oh. And oh my oh. god, Semix got picked up Yobu. by a GB and Yobu picks up a kill. Wow. Setmix had a lot of health and he was just kind of dropping back to be with his team, heal up. Uh, but Yobu says, no, not today. Not today, my dude. He does drop a little bear trap over there uh, in B. What a play out of Yobu to take down Setmix. And suddenly, Oversleepers have C and B down 130 points or so. They are pulling themselves back into this game. Uh, four kills for Yobu as he's able to grab that one right there. This game is tight. Ladies and gentlemen, remember this is a best of three with Oversleepers up 1-0 to zero currently in this series. Oversleepers a little bit down in this match, but if they pull back, they're walking away as the winner of the Grand Finals. Ashcroft, he has been turning it up. I feel the confidence of Ashcroft growing Ooh. exponentially as he gets these 1v1s and these team fights. Ashcroft doing 360, spinning around. He's going to pair it up with Totemine, take down, get the kill onto Mina B as we fly back into mid. Barack is low, not where you want to be. Uh, you you got to drop out of here. Set mix is low as well. You have to respect that Fikas is there, and especially Yobu starting to snowball on this raider. You don't want him getting that tier 3, tier 4 feats unlocked, especially off some easy kills in this B point. Yeah, I, I, I just want to point out, Ashcroft's been, uh, been putting in a pretty great performance, completely shutting down Mina B to the point where Mina B's impact has been so so little that i just genuinely don't see the impact at all for oversleepers because just trying to pull back as far as possible does have the support of 
Yobu at this point. Barak in this 1v1 nice. against Yobu. The Raider Mirror matchup. They're just gonna let heavies fly. But Barak knowing he's probably has such a health deficit, he doesn't want this fight anymore. Probably better off to help out his teammates who are stuck in this 2v2 scenario. Oh. Yobu realizing that he needs to go assist as soon as possible. Comes and helps. He does see the um, the feet there, just gets used, and uh, Yobu deciding against helping his teammates. Yeah, a little bit of waste of time from Yobu, but, you know, he chased him down and he's forcing rotations across the map. Now, this is a point where C has been contested. Nemesis have the advantage, they have the lead, they have A and B, and they're about to put Oversleepers into breaking an awful point. This is not where you want to be, especially having your Raider low on health, Yobu. He's chopped down, uh, but this is a moment where Oversleepers looks like they've rotated back on the map to go ahead and bring B back into being contested. C remains to be contested. Oversleepers Sleepers have to play this perfectly if they want to remain having a chance here of winning this second game overall. Ashcroft out of stamina. We'll go ahead and get it back up. He hangs on the edge. Mina B swaps target, dances around. I mean, watching Mina B on the Shino just dancing around on the edge of the fight and target swapping, he's done an incredible job thus far. But you have to remember Ashcroft has been building his confidence, building everything, and just deadly in his attacks. He, now, he's kept Mina B on the edge of the fight, which means Mina B has not been attacking and landing that crucial damage that he needs. Ashcroft funnels out the edge of the fight, knowing that Mina B is going to chase him. Mina continues to chase. Counter guard raid there. Ashcroft. What's he going to do? Oh. His own. Want to come over the top, but he's going to pair it out. Gets kicked. Gets knocked back. Are we going to get some sickle rain? No. Counter guard breaks there. Ashcroft stays alive. Ashcroft, will he be able oh. to get the kill? No, he goes down. Mina B credited with the kill. As we swap Defender over to cameras, we see uh, Ficus gets the knock on Barak down to the low ground. Doesn't want to get the drop. This game is getting pulled back. Over sleepers are not out of this one. And ladies and gentlemen, they have the point lead, although a soft point lead. Here we go. Little rope ladder. Bro oh, Barak, uh, he dies to the environment. Uh, he had nowhere to heal. Did he do that on purpose? Yeah, yeah, so he did that on purpose, nowhere to heal, knowing that his team was most likely going to go in breaking. So the best scenario for him there was to take the death and be able to come back full health to, to, to look for the fight on one of these home points. They've got one team fight in them if they're being, uh, if they're going to be put into breaking in like the next 20 seconds. Actually, they're breaking now! What no. would you do if Nemesis you had one chance, one It is one all on the line. I'll start rapping. Let's I would just go. start rapping at this point. And oh, you can see here, oversleepers are looking to push their advantage. <laughs> They're looking to push their advantage. Yobu on critical health here, trying to see what they can do. Oversleepers are just relentless. They're not letting Nemesis Esports move an inch. Oh, Yobu, he's going to go ahead and uh, dodge back there. He had the shield, had the barrier. It's going to keep him alive. Dodge the side, look for the storming tap, but he's caught out. Brock says, yo, I play Raider too. Let's go. You don't have your head. Don't lose your head. Well, it's already gone. It's already lost to Sedbix. He's down low. Ficus, though, pulled out. Tote Mine's like, I got you, bro. Gives him a kick to the head over off on the side. Ficus moving back in. He wants set mix. Counter guard break is there. But Ficus, he's out of stamina. If he had stamina, you think he's going to get the kill. It's actually Barak that uh, that had knocked him back there. I think I, I said Toadie before. Barak, what's going to go? What is he going to be able to get in there? He means oh, to keep no. the contested Nemesis. He can't do it. I can't believe it. Barak, the hero the of Nemesis. Everything on his shoulders. The man that has the played Avengers. so phenomenally all season long. Nemesis Esports drops over. Sleepers come back. They play the end game like nobody else in the whole league. Unbelievable oversleepers take map two. They take the series. They take the grand finals. They take the cash. Might have taken your girl as well. Unbelievable, Naz. <laughs> What an exceptional performance from Oversleepers. We thought they were down and out in both of these games where they were losing early game, but they came back in the end to clutch it out and win the game. And I can't believe the third seed of the EU bracket has managed to climb through. They managed to sift through all of the other teams and win it out in the end to become your reigning kings of the EU side. Absolutely dominant. You know, I gotta take take the helmet off. I gotta take a <laughs> moment for your boys here. Nemesis Esports, my God. They put up a fight, but over sleepers were just on another level. I not in a million years where I expect a 2-0 coming out in this grand finals.
Let it go out to say, all you kids right now in college, sleeping through your first four classes, everybody, your parents are calling you worthless. They say you'll never amount to anything. Wrong! Okay, that's what the oversleepers did, okay? They slept in, they slept through, they got that energy, and they goddamn crushed it. EU winners, unbelievable. I mean, we're gonna get into it with the post-game show, so I won't get too far, but uh, humanist, uh, it's time for you to say toot toot tootaloo as we go into the uh, post-game show to wrap up that fantastic uh, grand final. What did you think, buddy? I mean, just a phenomenal performance. Uh, they felt like a great team from the beginning. Um, I think they played really well here. And I don't know, a little bit of uh, magic sauce that they've got uh, at this in-game situation where they got teams into double breaking, or they're almost breaking and they, they managed to claw their way back, flip the script, and suddenly it's like reverse Uno card. No, you, buddy, you're the one breaking. We're the winners. And uh, yeah, congratulations to Oversleepers. I bet this, this you know feels really phenomenal right now. Absolutely. First place, that huge prize pool, and uh, we will definitely see those players and that team again because they are, uh, without a doubt, the winners of EU. They are the best Dominion players in EU. We have figured it out over an entire season of this. So, uh, guys, let's go ahead and go into the post-game show. Thank you so much, Humanist. We'll see you later for North America. But it's time to bring in a good old friend for our post-game show. Welcome back, Mr. So Hinky. So Hinky, I mean, you haven't had a chance to give your uh, opinion yet on what you just saw. Uh, take us through, bud. How you feeling? Don't worry, Vivid. I'm coming. I'm coming. Man, Nemesis, uh, you know, you saw the experience of a lot of the players there in the last game, especially with how they were rotating around the map, but they really just got out fought there. Even some cheeky little plays, Barak actually almost unbroke them at the end there with that one uh, rush that pushed them off the point, but they weren't able to keep them off the point long enough to actually flip it back over. So uh, definitely some some cute little plays and a, a lot of uh, a lot of good rotational play, but really just got out fought by the oversleepers. Yeah, super surprising stuff there that we got to see. In fact, let's see some of those outfightings here. Vivid Nas, why don't you walk us through some of the highlights from that grand final? Yeah, so game one, Sanctuary Bridge. This was very much a test for both of these teams. They'd both completely stop, stomped ECG on these maps, and it was basically who was actually better on this map. Very much early on, we did see a lot of great plays coming out from Nemesis Esports. They did have the lead for the majority of the game, but I think this kind of alludes to the one of the last fights where it all kind of went completely awry for Nemesis Esports, and they kind of dropped the ball at the last hurdle. But going into game two, we kind of expected something a bit different from Nemesis Esports. They did come out gun swinging. We had a very quiet performance from Mina B, who is Guns kind of blazing. a shining star. I just want to. <laughs> I just want to let you go. know it's you guns blazing. Me. That's the third time. All right, all right, he's, all right you're whatever, a he whatever. Know about guns. All right. <laughs> we we don't go. know about guns. Our laws here are very different. Okay. And we saw here very much a, a bit a similar performance where Nemesis Esports at the start of the game were able to completely destroy Oversleepers, but eventually a fight after another Mina B kind of came into our, came into their element, eventually started to pick up kills left, right, and center, and was able to be really good ganking in all these situations. Now, I think that's the situation that Sanky was alluding to. Barak nearly managed to unbreak them by trying to get Fikus out of the point, but unfortunately Fikus managed to make it back uh, real quick. And there you have it there. Oversleepers manages to win out from their late game performances in these fights and be crowned the EU champions of the Dominion series. Absolutely, and there you have it. You can see the journey that these teams took to make oversleepers these badass 2-0 in the grand final. My goodness gracious. Oversleepers absolutely dominant throughout this entire time and then picking up that win there. Very good to see. But, uh, Vivid, I want to talk to you a little bit about Nemesis. I mean, uh, this team, of course, not the same Nemesis that we saw with their journey up. They had some swaps here at the end. Uh, you think they're still hoping this team, they still got the fire to take another Dominion series should it occur? 
yeah, I definitely, I definitely do believe so. We kind of saw a little, uh, uh, a little arc for Ashcroft at the start of the mm. the series. It wasn't really, didn't really have that much of an impact at the start of these games, but eventually kind of grew into his own element, especially on one of the uh, on the later games uh, against the over sleepers. He has stellar performances across Tote Mind and Barack. Uh, so I very much do expect to see more of this squad coming into uh, the next Dominion series if we have one. But uh, you know, I was really Really kind of surprised by oversleepers in general these guys you know we didn't really expect much coming into this uh this this grand finals but they completely blew expectations out of the water and i just want to tag what so Naz Iggy, was saying there yeah but, go ahead uh, yeah yeah i just want to tag it by saying uh we saw of course that nemesis was the only lineup not running shinobi and i think a big part of that was clutch was their shinobi player he was the one that was practicing it in all the scrims and it's really not the easiest character to pick up and when it comes to playing it at the highest level so obviously clutch is out all of a sudden the roster shifts happen and they don't really have a good shinobi player so a lot of the responsibility fell on ashcroft the new player to really answer all of these shinobis who've been practicing shinobi for you know the last several months trying to get ready for this tournament so uh, it was really a lot for him to shoulder i think ashcroft did very very well considering and uh, i look forward to nemesis performances in the future Absolutely. Well, with that, we will wrap up EU again. Congratulations to our boys, the Oversleepers, proving over the course of a year that they are the greatest four on your Dominion players out there. But you might be thinking at home, my God, I'm only halfway to my viewer rewards. Please don't stop the show. Don't worry. We're only halfway done with this bad boy. Oh, my. There's one up right now. Oh, geez. Okay, thank God I've managed to click it. Coming up next, we have the NA pregame show, and we will move on to the North American Major, my friends. Do not go anywhere because this show has much, much more to offer. So many more chances for you guys at home to get stuff. So many more people going to be making some big Skrilla here today, and so many amazing guys going in. Let's go ahead and shoot it on over. We'll see you in just a bit.
The following is a special presentation from E-Star Studios. Gary Harder. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Dominion series. We are still in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, here at the East Star Studio, bringing you the greatest For Honor players out there. It took us a year to find them, and now here they are. Welcome to the finals of the Dominion series, the last event, and we are about to jump in to North America. Welcome with me, my co-host, my analysts, my casters, my everything, the full package, everybody at home. We got Sohinky and Bibbit Nas. Welcome to NA, baby. How you doing there, Sohinky? I'm doing great. EU is done. Get him out of here. We don't even care anymore. It's NA time. It's time. Time for the wild plays. Time for the, the meta shifts. Who knows? I have no idea what we're going to see today. No, but in all honesty, uh, I have a feeling we're going to be seeing a lot of the same heroes, but uh, a little bit less shifting around on the NA side of things as we saw in EU. Still some roster swaps, but uh, we'll be looking to see who comes out on top. My money is, uh, well, you know, I'll save that prediction for later. We'll, save, we'll wait for the it, prediction section. Please. Give me something to look for. I was gonna say, well, vivid, how you feel? I was gonna say, don't spoil, <laughs> don't spoil anything. Um, but yeah, no, we had an absolute bombshell in the EU side. Had some great yeah. games. A lot of them went down right to the wire, and I'm really hoping that we could see the same in the NA side. Absolutely. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at our format here. Hey, everybody, this is how this has happened. We have had many, several different majors. Three, to be precise. The season has gone on for this entire year until we have made it to the finals here today. Four teams have qualified, one of those teams being from a last chance qualifier, the other ones just with accumulated points from those majors. But most importantly, y'all, the double elimination bracket with reset. If the winners from the offers happen to lose, they get another chance. But another chance at what, you might be asking yourselves? What is Dominion? Well, don't worry, my friends. Let me explain it to you right now. Dominion is a 4v4 team-based fight to control different areas of a single battlefield. Each map contains three zones that can be captured to gain points. Zone A, B, and C. Zones A and C are captured by staying in the zone for six seconds without any opponents. While in zone B, waves of soldiers fight in a game of tug of war where you push their army to the opposite side to gain control. A team earns permanent points for every second that they control the zone. Once you reach 1,000 points, you're breaking the morale of the enemy team, and they will be unable to respawn. Kill all your opponents while their team is breaking, and you win the game. One thing to know, just because your team is breaking doesn't mean defeat. 100 points can be stolen back by capturing an opponent-controlled zone, and the battle is never over while one of your warriors remains alive. Remember, it's more than just for glory, it's for honor. That's right, my friends, it is Dominion here at the Dominion series. My favorite game mode in all of For Honor. There's no reason for me to prove how good I am at 1v1ing. I would much rather play Shinobi, run around on harbor, throwing things at people, and never engage. However, unfortunately, I'm not a good player. You won't see a lot of that to here today, but uh, so hinky. Dominion's changed so much since we began this thing. The meta shifts, the player shifts. What do you think? It Has it evolved enough to your liking? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's always fun to watch regardless of what heroes are in the pool. If you have any question in your mind about whether or not For Honor should be an eSport, all you got to do is watch the EU side of things from earlier, all those high uh, hype moments with the double breaking scenarios. I think it's honestly one of the most fun eSports to watch. So I'm looking forward to the NA side of things, Naz. Yeah, and we've seen an evolution throughout the majors on how this game mode has been played. My question is, I really want to see the rosters that the NA side stuck to. We did see a bit of an unorthodox pick, not choosing the Shinobi in Nemesis Esports. So I want to see what the NA side opt for. I myself, I'm starting to believe that having a Shinobi is kind of pivotal to how the game should be played here. All right, Vivid. Well, you want to see new uh, heroes. Why don't you walk us through some of these new teams that are coming in? Uh, introduce us. 
And our first seed, we're bringing in Black Jackal Z, winner of Major 3. And at second seed, Team Killing Service have been putting a stellar performance in Dominion series so far. Third seed on Flask, very much middle of the pack, similar to the over sleepers. And coming in from the LCQ, a few black silhouettes, but we have better than you. And it's been a long journey for these teams coming into NA, which Sahinki will break it down for us. The road to the NA files has finals has been long. There has been some surprises, especially Black Jackal seemingly coming out of nowhere and winning major number three, three and O versus our other finalists here today, looking very strong. But don't count out Team Killing Service, the second place team winning the both major number one and two, O and two versus the other finalists in professional play. But that doesn't mean that they are out on flask. Our third seed here, they won second place in major number two, also 0-2 versus the other finalists. So definitely some question marks here in a lot of these matchups today. And then finally, our LCQ winners, better than you, looked very, very strong in the LCQ, even taking out Guidance Gaming pretty easily. But uh, that 0-0 record versus the other finalists leaves some questions to be answered. Absolutely. And here is what we have coming your way today. We're going to start things off with Black Jackals versus Better Than You. Then on to Team Killing Service and on Flask. After that, we'll know who's in the lowers. We'll know who's in the uppers. And we'll make our way to the grand finals. You get knocked out in lowers. You're sent home. And you are no more. But if you continue through the winner's finals, you make it all the way to the grand finals until we get to the end. Should be a hell of a fight, my friends. And uh, very excited to see how it turns out. How I would, would like to take a moment. I'd like to take a moment before we get into predictions. You know, chat was flaming me for having a, a Dominion explaining video. Maybe you should listen because do you know how I many games I'm in where three people are on my home point for no reason? Only one person can boost chat. So, okay, I hope you're paying attention. For the love of God, get off the home point while I'm standing there as Shugo. Thank you very much. Anyway, predictions, gentlemen. I want to know who you think is going to be taking this North America. So, Hinky, use that big brain. You know, the basically every major I was picking Team Killing Service. I was right for two of them, but they slipped up in the last major to the team that I think is probably going to be taking it all today. Black Jackals. They did have one roster change, it looked like, coming into the finals, but the three of them, I had a chance to catch up with Egg earlier in the week, and uh, those guys are just really close-knit. They've got great synergy. I'm looking to Black Jackals to take this. Ooh, that's, a, that, that, that's a good choice, but so far, I think I'm 0 for 3 on NA as well. I think Guidance Gaming for the first two majors, of course, we don't talk about that anymore. And you know what? I really felt, I, I was on the TKS, uh, hype train for major three and of course they stumbled and lost to the black jackals but i i will say major three i remember speaking to a few of the members and they were telling me that they didn't have as much practice as they would hope for and going into the finals they were just kind of they already knew that they had a place in the finals they didn't try as hard or at least that's what they were telling me maybe they were just feeding me the kool-aid but here i'm gonna go for tks to win it all in the grand finals all right well with the caster's curse officially launched upon these poor teams rest in peace my boys uh may you survive uh we actually got a chance to ask these teams why they thought they were gonna win so uh, let's take a listen i think we're gonna win the finals because we've been working as a team for a while now we do scrims we practice ganks we do a lot of twosies we put in a lot of time and effort and uh, we're ready to ready to get this thing other than the last major win, this would be like the grand the grand final win. I mean, it, it would be pretty cool to win. I feel very confident that my team will come out on top and win because we're simply better than you. What would it mean to us? It would mean everything to us. We would be showing everyone that we are the best there is. Well, I think our team's going to win the finals uh, just for the fact that I think our players are a bit of a step ahead of our competition. And we've also been practicing a decent amount as well. It would mean a lot to our team just because we have been practicing, we have been playing. Uh, this tournament's been almost a year long and we've dedicated a lot of time. Team Killing Service is going to win the finals because all year long since stage one, we've been practicing a lot. We've been doing everything we could to get better as players and as a team. And despite losing some players, we've been reaching out to other players to always improve the roster. And finally, in stage four, we feel like we can win this, this whole Dominion series. You heard it there. 
But in order to get there, they've got a lot of matches to go through. Taking a look at the map pool here for today, just in case you weren't around for the EU side of things. Uh, we have Citadel Gate, Overwatch, Sanctuary Bridge, as our and Beachhead, excuse me, as sort of our team fighting maps. And then we have uh, High Fort, Temple Garden, and Harbor as more of our rotation -y 2v2 maps. Uh, we saw on the EU side of things that the teams were really sort of prioritizing picking those team fight maps, believing that that was the key to victory. Uh, we'll see what the NA side of things plays out as, though. Absolutely. And they are not just fighting for these maps. They're not just fighting for these characters. They're fighting for what, Vivid Knots? The sweet, sweet Mullah. And of course, for the Grand Woo! Files, we just had to up the ante and up the stake. If you were to win that first place, you will be cashing in $10,000 to take home. And second place is a not too shabby 5,000. Third, netting you 3,500. And fourth place, just for showing up, you're earning 2,000. Basically what you would have made in a major totaling at 20,500 smackaroos per region. And I wish I was participating right now, Slacks. Absolutely. Well, in the words of the uh, warden who beat me 1v1 for two hours last night, wow, 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 thanks, <laughs> and good fight. As uh, we continue on, the players are not the only ones winning stuff here today. Not only can you win some new strats watching these pros, you can win some beautiful items by answering your trivia questions here on Twitch. Don't forget, just watching gets you some points, but real points are in those trivia questions. You can get so many beautiful rewards. The top three also get some cold hard steel. The fairy tale winter battle outfit. That is right, my friends. Craft your own grim fable with this beautiful ensemble. You know, like I'm on the price is right here, and this price is right. It's literally free. As now we go on to Ice Fairies Ornament. Yes, I have gotten all the Dominion Series Ornaments before. Yes, they are beautiful, but this one is the most beautiful of them all. That's right. Before you decapitate your uh, enemy on the other side of the field, they can see those beautiful fairies. And finally, the Ice Effect. Perfect for the Pirate. Perfect for the Season. Pirate, we're not going to be seeing her at all in this uh, tournament. She's too new, but you can make her look beautiful with those nice items. Uh, so, Hinky, favorite cosmetic? I need to know. Uh, real quick, what's your favorite? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say anything that goes on the Shinobi that makes him look like Scorpion. That's what my Shinobi looks like. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, I just have to say, though, I'm I'm upset. I'm sitting at 44 Azure's points here, but I'm not going to, you know, as the analyst, it was Naz's turn. He can answer some questions during the match, maybe. Not Not when you're casting. So I think I'm. I don't yeah. think I'm gonna reach the the effects at the end there, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, I remember every time every time we play with Sahinki, he keeps showing me his Shinobi and keeps telling, reminding me how much he looks like Scorpion. For me, it's anything that is yellow. If you have a bit of yellow aesthetic on your character, it is Chef's kiss. A banana boy. Very, very nice. Yes, I do love it. All right. Well, uh, you will notice several times that I completely stop talking and break all eye contact. That is me answering questions with you guys in Twitch. <laughs> as uh, now is a fantastic time for me to do it as we will be heading into the NA Major. It is officially time to see the greatest four honor Dominion players fight head to head after a year of fielding that talent. We are here at the finals. And after that, we will talk about those fantastic teams in the NA post game show. So in case you were thinking about starting a pub, uh, wait just a little bit, because you're about to see all the action you could ever handle. Let's get into it. It ain't major, baby. Time. It's undefeated. And won't be stopped. The most meaningful way to measure greatness is time. Even if your timing is great, greatness requires so much more. The very best 
have a unique relationship to time. They feel its unending pressure, yet bend it to their will. Time and again. You arrive at the right place at the right time. And in due time, you become time. Ladies and gentlemen, I have become time. My unique relationship with time has now come to fruition as it is time for the North American Finals of the Dominion Series. We are here to see the greatest North American For Honor Dominion players, and I am so excited to have the greatest North American For Honor casters here. We have Humanist and So Hinky. Gentlemen, are you ready to see NA? Now, it is a little dirty, all right? And he's famous for some weird picks, a little, a little off play style, but very different than the so-called meta that my team consistently flames <laughs> me for not picking. Uh, Humanist, are you ready to see a little shakeup from EU? I don't, I don't know. We say like your team's the one telling you to do. you you guys were the ones telling me, don't go die by yourself on C, Humanist. Uh, don't go <laughs> charging in by yourself again, Humanist. Everyone, you're always telling me what to do, Slacks. You know what? I'm telling sure. you what's going on. Today okay. is the grand finals. North America is going to be amazing. Europe has started out hot, spicy, and fresh. I'm, you know, I'm. It's an honor to be here. Only time will tell. But this is going to be a great pleasure. If I had to really just sort of put my caster cap on and think what we're going to see today, I think uh, probably a lot of Lawbringer, a lot of Peacekeeper, some Nusha, maybe some Jormungandr. Probably all four of those heroes Ooh. in every lineup. If I just had to guess. <laughs> yeah. That is just so unbelievably incorrect. I shudder to think how you still have this job, but thank you so much for your valuable input here. The winner semifinals upon us. Don't forget, Chad, you can exclamation point BLJ or BTU for who you think is going to win. We will incessantly mock those who are incorrect, so please put it in there. If you guys do get it right, you get an even bigger chance to uh, claiming my admiration, which is very hard to earn. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the map draft. These are the maps that the teams have chosen. Mr. Sohinky, what do you think about these choices? Already we're seeing a switch up here from the EU side of things, starting out on Overwatch and then on map two, picked by Better Than You, going into Temple Garden. Two maps that are uh, less focused on the team fighting, much more focused on the 2v2s and the rotations that we did see. Much more heavy emphasis in map number one, Overwatch, placed on that C point by both teams, uh, or by all the teams over on the EU side. So that'll be interesting to see. And then Black Jackals deciding that if it does go to a game number three, they want to flex their team fighting skills on Sanctuary Bridge. Classic NA saving the hype map for game three, but it's game number one. It's Overwatch time, and we have Vivid Nas ready to tell you all about it. Oh, baby. We're kicking it off with an absolute <laughs> banger. Overwatch was a very contentious map in the EU side, which uh, kind of led to one team completely stomping out every time they played on an ECG, very much had this game on the lock. So it'll be interesting to see how the NA side performs. Will there be a team like Black Jackals? Will they perform very strong on this map or will it just be a middle of the road map for this team? We did see a very large impact on that B to C rotation with an initial fight all around stemming round C. So just keep an eye out for that initial fight. All right, well, thank you so much, my friend Vivid. It is going to be quite the banger indeed. And in fact, let's see if uh, Chad banged <laughs> out some of those answers that we were looking for here. Who does Chad believe will take series one in our finals? We're about to find out now. Uh, yeah, me personally, uh, it's really up in the air. I, I would have to say, uh, what did you say, Sohinky? <laughs> uh, I said Black Jackals, but let me Black just say Jackals, this. Oh, I would have to say Black Jackals. I mean, obviously, okay. obviously, Humanist, who has uh, literally no idea what he's talking about. Uh, uh, did you think Black Jackals as well? Look, at 80%. I knew it. Of course, I mean, it was yeah, off of my it, expert analysis. Thank you. Chat doesn't know. Chat can't count to 100, even if they tried. 
Uh, it's gonna be better than you, and you can just lock it in right now. Okay. okay. Well, you have to I, I do have to say. I do, they do have to say, coming out of the LCQ, BTU did say that they believed Black Jackals to be their only competition. So it's possible that we may just be, if if what they say holds true, we may just be looking at the Grand Finals match uh, starting out here right now. Oh, thank you. Why would you do this now? I, I literally trusted you. As soon as you started talking better this is than as you good as it gets. Take Great, great. Well, now, all right, fantastic. <laughs> well, the game is uh, uh, upon us, my friends. The time has come. It is time to see our first game. Let's go ahead and do it. Ladies and gentlemen, game one of North America. It's the Black Jackals versus Better Than You. Get ready for some NA For Honor action. Casters, my friends, my brothers, take it away. What an introduction, Slacks, with the ultimate handoff as we are ready for map one in our first series for the North American Grand Finals. This is going to be as spicy as it gets. You said so, Hinke, that BTU thinks Black Jackals is maybe their only competition. Tell me more, tell me more. Yeah, I mean, BTU really blazed through the LCQ, even taking out the likes of Guidance Gaming. They dropped a couple games to them, but ultimately made both series that they played against them look pretty easy. Shout out to Norgaz, by the way, on the LCQ casting, did a phenomenal job. Uh, but this is really going to be telling. This series may just tell us who is going to win this whole thing. Uh, it's crazy that we don't have Guidance Gaming uh, in here, but instead, better than you. So ladies and gentlemen, let's get this started. We're gonna kick things off over on C as typical for this Overwatch map. Uh, me, Mo, actually going toe to toe with me, and uh, better than you, taking a lot of damage early on here. You can see there's multiple players that are getting bled out. Black Jackals have full advantage over in C. And it looks like it's only gonna be the only point capped early here. Is so heavily contested. Uh, Kusumago moving in, trying to get the kill, and it's just a matter of time. There you go. Yeah, incredibly decisive win there on the side of Black Jackals, so much so that they were able to actually rotate into mid, closing out that fight as well. And I think we're just about to see a triple cap as Mo gets this long execution over onto his JJ brother. That is an incredible start, a flawless start, in fact, for the Black Jackals. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. You've, you've triple capped. You've got only six, seven, eight points uh, for your opponents, and it's just cleaning up minions over here. B2 moving as three onto this B point, but the full map control is in favor of Black Jackals. I mean, it's hard to say what went wrong there because it seemed like everything did. Uh, Black Jackals just landing all of their attacks, uh, communicating, healing for each other incredibly well. So round two here for Better Than You as they move up into C. Let's see what duty can do. Uh, on the Shinobi. We've seen a lot of Shinobi played uh, across EU. It's been effective, it's been important, uh, but Duty just getting knocked around here, not really landing too much damage as his ally is pummeled up against the wall. Kusumago looking to do the peel, but it's Duty it does land the knockback, trying to get the kill, peeling for his teammate. He actually might make this happen right now, Duty. His ally goes down, but give me a light, give me a light onto the Shugo. You know Mo thinks he's going to try and throw at JJ, able to get the kill. He's going to get the long execute off of this as well. Zada Mago with some great patience there. Uh, one of the nerfs coming in is that Shinobi is uh, much more vulnerable if he whiffs a kick. So uh, doing a really good job of reading when the Shinobi wanted to kick, expertly dodging and then punishing him for it. And then some great patience there, even on one life, to just hold it down, not make any mistakes, not overextend himself, and ultimately clear out that seat. As we take a nice zoomed out view, you can see A and B captured by Better Than You. But with C fight just won by Black Jackals, now they can make some moves across the map. And it looks like they've sent two down towards B. Mo dancing around right with the, the minions uh, in front of him and two at sides. It makes it really awkward for Pilker as he's just getting pummeled here. Now Mo moves forward looking for the heavy, but it's parried off. Can it go back the other way? Let's see, Mo. Not gonna quite connect there, but there you go, right over the top into the combo, and Mo able to clean that up. Very important kill here in this B lane. Very important indeed, as BTU has actually done a good job of taking back a little bit of the map. They're holding down A right now, so even though they're losing out on a lot of these fights, you know, their rotations have been all right. Will Lin, though, however, 
closing out the kill on his fellow Shinobi, and now they're going to retake control of B. Yeah, Will Lin doing so with style. Um, I, is Shinobi one of the, like, just quickest, uh, most fun heroes to play, especially when you can be playing it like that? Kusada Mago, he's got Neo up against the wall. JJ, maybe gonna throw a zone, try and hit a couple of them, but he's picked up. Chiropractor's there, they just is back, but not his health bar. Is his health bar dropping down low? Nice parry from Pilker, as both of them just eating huge chunk damage. Pilker turning around at Longbow. Did that, that didn't connect, did it? No, it actually missed. Uh, Pilker showing up just a little bit too late, and that might be the story here as well for the rest of BTU. Shinobi coming in, trying to do what he can, and it's actually Kusada Magu who's going to get uh, peeled out of that fight and be able to go heal on C. It was BTU able to take mid over right now, and this is going to be a very important fight if you're BTU. Will Lin actually getting deflected there, now going pretty low, lands the Sickle Rain, does duty, gonna take him out there. This is actually flipping over into BTU's favor now, just constantly streaming in, but Mo coming in and reinforcing on the stage. JJ is gonna get guard broken up, eating a bit of damage there, already down at half-life, but the heal is going to come through. Excellent feat there is going to keep them both alive right now. Duty doing what he can to stay alive, but ultimately this is looking pretty... No, actually tons of damage landed onto Mo all of a sudden his best to stay alive as they're trying to zone the shinobi out of the fight great job from villain avoiding the damage of the jj as well and it looks as though actually I mean, this is too close to call revenge is going to be popped oh that is so unfortunate the kick's going to land and that is going to be now a 2v1 means you can be forced to pull out of this point if they can Plus, of course, it just breaks down into one, one. Will Lin chase, but he's going to get guard oh! broken and killed here by Mio. Excellent job and the execution to boot. And it looks like off of that execution, the side of Black Jackal is going to decide to just give up it. Mio, Mayo, Rockin, Ohio. Um, you know, this is, uh, I just feel, I feel the difference in the play style from EU to NA. And it's, it, I think someone can speak to that. Vivid Nas. Can we bring you in just for a second here, our in-game expert? What do you see in the differences between the rotations, play styles out of this North American team here early on versus our, our European counterparts? There seems to be a lot less uh, death falling in, in these games. There's a lot more 2v2 fights that we're seeing. And one person I want to point out is Mo has been playing absolutely ex exceptional here for Blackjacks. He unlocked tier four and was using Phalanx to help out the team. Like within uh, 15 minutes still left, on the clock and this guy has just been absolutely incredible in all the situations where you see them constantly 2v2 i think it's single-handedly making sure black jackals are winning as well as they are yeah makes sense to me i think that's what we're seeing now will lynn uh able to take down duty now looking for more it's mo taking down pilker uh in the b lane it looks like better than you was basically just tying up the scoreboard overall but with a nice couple kills there it puts black jackals back out on top as i say that kusada mago getting executed off with a 15 second execution so that's some time but really it's not enough and w with this extra point cap now it's almost uh black jackals putting btu into breaking Really good job there by Will go. in there to finish that fight into B, and that is what's going to lead to this breaking right now. Doing those dash forward mix-ups there with the throwing stars, that animation is very, very similar to the dash forward heavy. Uh, so using that to fake out as an opponent, making him fish for a parry perhaps, and then closing out the kill with the throwing stars. Mo now getting that guard break over onto Duty. Duty, wow, he actually expected the guard break there, and that heavy's just going to fly. Mo taking him out. Matt Naz shattered it out correctly. Mo has been playing out of his mind. Absolutely. I mean, Black Jackals as a whole squad really playing great, but Mo from the first couple of minutes just on fire. So this is Black Jackals. They've come out the gate swinging and they're going to be taking their first map overall and looking great doing so. Better Than You is going to have to tighten things up moving forward. Yeah, I have to say, Better Than You did a pretty good job of, of stemming the bleeding a bit after they lost so horribly. You know, you wouldn't have expected them to be even close to in the match at all. At one point, I believe the score was about 400 to zero, as you're seeing just how badly they got outfought Mo with a perfect 10 and oh, we shattered it out. Kusada Mago himself with a 10 and one. And then just, I mean, all across the board on the side of Black Jackals, everyone playing so well. Yeah, I mean, literally the whole team's got MVP numbers there. 
It's uh, and you said it. I think it's kind of crazy that uh, BTU did have a couple of minutes there where they were within a hundred points, but it was that that soft point lead that we see. It's like you're holding the point and and it feels close. As soon as your opponent grabs the point, it flips back and you're like 200, 300 points behind. Yeah, I mean, in my matchmaking games, when the match starts like that, two players immediately drop. So uh, better than you, they did an amazing <laughs> job of, of getting back out onto the map. You know, there's definitely some fight in these guys, even though they got so outperformed. If they're able to tie up these team fights a little bit and just perform a little bit crisper, I think that they can definitely take game number, uh, number two. Yeah, just uh, tighten up, play a little bit crisper. It's hard for me to say, like, um, Mo didn't die. <laughs> he just 10 kills, <laughs> yeah. making rotations. It's like, yeah, I can play a little bit tighter, but at some point you're going to have to be starting to get in some kills on these guys. Yeah, really, it all started out with that initial team fight. It was just one so hard by Black Jackals, and it's hard to really say exactly what, what went wrong. Maybe just a, a little bit of miscommunication or not dodging when they should have on some of those external heavies, but just so much damage eaten early on. They won the fight so fast that they're able to just rotate into B super quickly. So uh, just never really gave up control of the game after that. I think, though, it is time for map number two. We got the map preview with Vivid Nas. Oh boy, now we're gonna ruin the tranquility of Temple Garden. So Temple Garden, a map we've seen plenty of times in the EU side. It is very similar to Overwatch in the sense there is a lot of priority initially on the C point and B point, but we did see some teams try and run for this A point and capture it to get those early points, especially if they're the team losing on that initial C point. I think what better than you needs to do this map is to basically silence Mo. I feel like they need to shut down Mo, and if they can shut down Mo, they'll have a good chance of trying to win a map from Black Jackals. Well, shutting down Mo, see if you know if that's the trick, uh, if that's what they have to do. Um, then so Hinky says they have to tighten up as a team. Vivinaz says they need to get on to Mo, crush him, destroy his spirits, not let him start snowballing and getting his his tier four feet unlocked three minutes into the game. I mean, when you can phalanx your whole team, uh, basically at the point where you're starting the snowball, <laughs> it's, uh, I, don't, I don't even know how you deal with that. Yeah, I think honestly, Naz hit on something really important. Obviously, Mo was playing so well, and, and that might just be a matchup thing. So it might be something where they try and isolate him a little bit more, make sure that Shinobi's on him. You know, that sickle rain gank on a character that just likes to dodge a lot is very potent because of the undodgeable version of Sickle Rain. Uh, obviously, that can lead into like guard break mix and stuff like that. So it ends up being a lot harder for the JJ to fight if there's a Shinobi around just trying to make sure that he can't really do what he wants to do. Uh, that being said, obviously, JJ's got tools that he can use to avoid them. And honestly, Black Jackals, if, if they can find a way to not get Mo isolated, I'm sure that they're going to have it in the bag because these guys are just looking so sharp. Yeah, and it was uh, Will Lin that was playing the Shinobi if I remember correctly. Um, but moving in here, this is going to be fun. We got some uh, some Raider action. And uh, that you really got to bring it out here. Better than you looked outclassed. Uh, if, if I don't see it here, I'm going to give up on him and switch over to be a Black Jackals fan. I respect it. Immediately abandoning ship. You know, it's sometimes it's what you got to <laughs> do. When you see the water flooding in the bottom, you throw your bucket away. You say, hey, this bucket's not doing anything. And you bail out. <laughs> Yeah, Bill. Uh, <clears throat> let's see, though. I mean, I, I'd love to see uh, a little bit of a shake up here and surprise us as we move forward into this one. But no surprises here with our early rotation 3v3 over in C. Uh, looks like B was capped by Black Jackals and A capped by Better Than You. So a little bit interesting how they decided to split up on that first and initial rotation. Uh, I'm going to be watching the view over here from Gradonis. He's just getting absolutely chopped up and destroyed uh, uh, up against the edge of these tree roots. Blast of Revenge is going to be triggered off. Now we'll go take a view over Will Lin's shoulders, over Mio's shoulder now, who had the Revenge triggered off. This will be timing out in just a second here. But looking to go back on the Will Lin, not able to quite connect on it, getting just kicked in the face, kicked in the face. This guy, I, he had no teeth left. They were just getting kicked in the face over and over. But look at these low health bars. This is just the prime time when he would want to be thrown in some zones, just connecting on multiple people here. Black Jackals, they're going to lose one. They're going to lose two. It looks like they're possibly going to lose three here. As Willen trying to dance around, but he can't get out of there. 
and Moe's incredibly low, but it's only going to take one flight, one knockback for him to go down here. Oh, stays alive, just throwing blows, not playing with fear, but at the end of the day, better than you take A and C. I'm really surprised, honestly, that BTU was able to take that fight so convincingly toward the end there because it was Duty, I think, that rotated into A to get that quick rotation back over to C once they capped it. And, of course, they've been collecting those points this entire time. The strategy ended up paying off because the late rotation from Duty is what allowed them to close out that fight. Speaking of Duty, it's going to be chopped down by Will Lin on the Shinobi, able to get one kill, make that two, do a backflip, and come on forward as his team just munches up better than you like a little scooby snack uh what seemed to be a powerhouse in the first engagement just folded on that one folded indeed and i think the respawns just came in too fast for better than you to heal on the c point that's what can happen when that fight is so prolonged and shout outs to mo once again able to stall just enough time they were not able to get that heal off. Ultimately, it was Black Jackals flooding back into the point and taking it over. Because now the fighting breaks back out onto B. Gordonis knocked back. Going to go ahead and rethink how he wants to approach this fight. Sadamago, nice damage applied there. He's going to go for another one. That's Duty that's going to be knocked back, making massive chunk damage. <clears throat> Sadamago low on stamina, but waits for that to easily refill back up before re-engaging. He's just doing 360s here and kind of like target swapping with a dodge. You, you see, he's just very quickly can be from one hero on to the next. Will Lin, you can hear the bell ringing in there. Duty, he's knocked up. Will Lin may be able to get the kill, but it's actually peeled uh, by the ally of Duty. He's trying to get back. We'll go down to the minions there, but Will Lin credited with the kill. Will Lin doing a good job of pursuing, making sure that he can't get away, and kind of really forcing him to take that route through the minions ultimately is what got him. But Will Lin now going to get caught in that guard break mix. Is able to dodge that external. I thought that heavy might hit him, but he's able to dodge oh. it. Lands the unblockable sickle rain. Goes for the kick mix up, and that is going to be a kill. Will Lin with the clutch going to get the execution as well. And I have to imagine he's now going to go reinforce C, but it is unfortunately going the way of BTU right now. Looks as though they're just trying to stall oh, the Raider. No, going to... Yeah, gets caught from behind, but here we see the rest of oh actually Willen is going to get caught by duty It looks like in the middle after that execution. So not going to be able to reinforce his squad Really good job from duty off of the respawn making sure that that backup can't come in Yeah, and now duty looking for the rotation while Gordonis is the one that's going to be falling down on the C point Mo looking to have an impact, but this is uh, duty showing up right at the time that uh, he didn't have any stamina So now duty able to just give him the old one two and it looks like Better Than You has an opening uh, to take Black Jackals. But as I say that, it's uh, Jasu moving back in. So they're just kind of uh, stalled on their uh, respawn timers. And it means that people just keep flooding in off of the respawns. It means this is just really a back and forth matchup until someone gets a strong advantage in this team fight and wins it fast. If you look at the point totals here, it is basically dead even. The closest match we've really seen all day. That external coming through is going to be dodged. Really good job there to avoid all that damage. But Will Lin's going to eat a guard break and quite a bit of damage off of that. But one more touch is going to mean that he gets revenge here. So this is a little bit of an awkward spot for BTU. That is going to be the kill, though, landing that guard break. And now Mo going to have to do what Mo does, trying to stall as long as he can, but going to get guard broken out of that dodge heavy. The Sickle Rain's going to come through. This is going to be death right here off of the kick. Excellently executed there by BTU. And now things are going to become a little awkward for Black Jackals as they are trying to get back out onto the map with one of these respawns taking forever. Yeah, I, I'm going to go with this. Not a little awkward, but really awkward. Um, with the Shugo over here up against Pilker, um, you'd like to see him getting some more damage off. And, you know, 60% health. They have to combo him up. They have to get this kill in the next 30 seconds or so. Unfortunately, revenge triggered off. There's no way around it. They're going to go ahead and play through it. The damage was connected. Give me a heavy. I'll just give him the headbutt. Nice parry there by Pilker, continuing to buy time for his team. He's got no health to work with, but Duty doing a little bit of healing for him. Pilker still alive. Headbutt will get the kill from Sadamago. Switching over to Duty. Shinobi in a 1v2. He's going to get his back adjusted as well. Duty very low. And they'll get the kill. This is some critical health there. Nice plays by Black Jackals. We'll seal the deal on A, but still in a point deficit as better than you control C. 
Yeah, it was just that awkwardness of the respawn that causes them to be a bit behind in points right now, but really, really well executed on those ganks with the Shugoki. It's just so hard to avoid. If you have to even counter guard break once, you're basically locked into losing like 80% of your life. Very well executed by Blackjack. Looking in towards B here. It's really, uh, it's, it always feels awkward when you get pulled this far to the edge. Uh, of the lane, and, and you're you're just not on your own side. But duty, he's fighting with some minions to his back as Mo pressures on forward. They're not able to secure the deal. Oh, look at that coming out of left field. Will in <laughs> so fast on that Shinobi, and just rotates and uh, gets on the edge of you so quickly. Great job. That's the, they give him the old one, two, three, two executes. There's the respawn, but two heroes dead for better than you. Another ten seconds, giving Black Jackals the opportunity to go heal up and basically, you know, time to think about where do we even want to rotate on the map. We can do whatever we want. Will Lin has been performing so well in these teamfight scenarios with his target swaps. He's, he comes out of nowhere with a lot of these kicks to close out the damage needed to finish a lot of these fights. Really well played from him there. Even shooting through the enemy minions to make sure you confirm that kill onto Duty, not allowing Duty to get away. And now they're just going to hold mid and A, it looks like. They finally got the point advantage back on their side. But unfortunately, Kusatamago finding himself in a really awkward position here, forced to pop the Juggernaut, is going to land a nice guard break into heavy there. Pops the tier four. Now this could be really bad for BTU. If they lose this fight, this might just be the game here. Nice parry there. Oh, the wall is going to block the hit from Kusatamago. Once again, just really awkward positioning here as eaten so much min minion damage as well. Gonna pop off the revenge and now being forced to just retreat over to C or to A, but it looks as though someone on the side of Black Jackals realizing that a lot of the attention is played in the middle is gonna just go cap C. Oh my goodness, and they've got the kills. Will Lin taking down Pilker. Mayo falling down as well. Uh, he gets healed off the back of that execute. Heals up on C, and that's Black Jackals. Uh, just in the moment, the most critical moment of the entire game, taking huge fights and putting better than you into breaking up 1-0 in this best of three series. It is Black Jackals' game to close out. Really smart job there on the backside of that fight. Duty actually kills his own teammate to try and get the res. Unfortunately, Black Jackals was paying attention. So he basically just killed his teammate for no reason. And now it's unfortunately a 4v2 scenario. It was really just clutch plays, noticing when they could back cap that, that home point. And now being breaking with nowhere to heal, literally the worst possible situation. Uh, uh, not much of an opportunity, especially when you're playing up against a squad like Black Jackals. They knew blood was in the water. They are going to take game two, and they're going to take the first series of the day for the North American Dominion Series Finals. This is a great way to start the series, seeing Black Jackals coming out swinging here. Better than you, they're going to have to tighten things up moving forward, though. Better than you definitely looked a lot better in that map, but the real individual plays on the side of Black Jackals shined quite a bit. Mo with his anti ganks. Will Lin, though, 13 and 3, absolutely popping off in those team fights. Just always got his eye on who's in a vulnerable position and able to use those double dashes to cut through and really just make sure that he always is punishing the side of BTU. Absolutely. A bit of a rough start for BTU, but they are not done. They are down into the lowers now, and we will see them again fighting for their lives. Uh, down there, but I gotta say Black Jackals came out pretty much as expected a very very strong Intro to a team that uh, many believe are kind of the favorites so far coming in here uh, Did it live up to the hype you think humanist did they look as you expected? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think it started off a little bit slow um, But it was great to see I mean Willen on the, on the shinobi was just phenomenal getting a lot of kills and executes as well. It was interesting. We saw the his opponent, Shinobi, doing more rotating objective taking, whereas he was just like a pure fighting style, taking objectives uh, if he happened to be there. And it worked out really well for them. All right. Well, uh, Mr. Sohinki, why don't we go back into some of those highlights from that very quick series here, and you can uh, walk us through what we should have been looking for because it was in a blink of an eye. All right, from moment number one and game number one, it really was all Black Jackals. Kusada Mago here doing a great job in that initial fight, so much so that they were able to turn the 1v1 middle into a 2v1. BTU fought back a little bit. Yeah, I was actually surprised. I thought this was going to be like game one of our first game in the EU series, like a 1300 to 100, but 
BTU did a pretty decent job of having composure even after such a rough start. We see Mio there getting that nice execution onto Will Lin, but unfortunately for them, uh, Will Lin does respawn. It's, uh, it's not like you kill him once and he's out of there. <laughs> he came in. That was the thing I pointed out where he was kind of faking when he was going to throw those stars and ultimately landing them really well done using that feat to close the kill out. And it was just, I mean, it was a master class in team fighting here. And it was just a master class in using your characters. Every single person on, I think that's really what makes Blackjackal so strong. Every single person on the team is just world class. And then going into game number two, it was more of the same. There were some stumbles. It was BTU winning this initial team fight on C thanks to that rotation from duty. But ultimately, Black Jackals, they showed the best composure here. They came back out strong. And they, I mean, I, I don't know what else to say about this team. They're just playing so well. Absolutely. It was quite the beat down there that we saw. And uh, time is coming to ask if anybody is actually able to give them any kind of fight here. But we will find out very soon as we will find their next opponent as well as better than you's next opponent. Thanks to our next series, Team Killing Service versus On Flask. Now, uh, there's a lot of players in here. There's a lot of different uh, characters, but I have never forgotten On Flask because these guys live up to their name. The fire flasks come out like uh, like my redneck wedding. I mean, it, there's just Molotovs being thrown all over the place down in the deep south. So this is going to be one hell of a match that I'm ex super excited to see here. Uh, gentlemen, what do you think about the next one? Let's put that last one to rest and uh, think a little bit about uh, what we're in for. Uh, we've seen both these teams a lot. Team Killing Service, uh, Humanist, I believe one of your personal favorites. You think they stand a chance in this one? <laughs> Yeah, I'm just trying to catch up with what you're talking about, the Molotov cocktails in the South. But, Don't worry uh, about it. Whatever the case, yeah, <laughs> Team Killing Service, definitely one of my favorites. You know it. I It's no secret. Um, I, Scorpion's one of my favorite players uh, across uh, all the regions, let alone NA. So uh, a great squad, and I expect them to perform really well today. Absolutely. Well, let's go ahead and jump into this winner semifinal. It is time to welcome our teams to the arena and get ready to see them take each other apart. And don't forget, chat, by the way, exclamation point TKS or exclamation point OF to determine who you think will be winning this fantastic winner's semifinal. Don't worry if you get it wrong. No one's going to make fun of you except for everybody here. Now, map drafts coming up. These are the maps that the teams have chosen. So, Hinky, what do you think about these? It's no secret from the other majors that TKS really likes sort of more of this 2v2 rotational style, so I'm not surprised to see them pick High Fort and Harbor. Looks like on Flask, looking for those team fights, picking Sanctuary Bridge in game number two. And if they do live up to their name, that makes sense. You know, they want to land a Fury Flask on four people and just burn them to a crisp. But uh, it, basically, it's just going to come down to which team is able to impose their will. TKS, if they're able to force these 2v2s or on Flask, if they're able to maybe pick out some team fights and just, uh, you know, be able to death ball around the map from there. And here we go for the first time in the Dominion Series Grand Finals today. We will be seeing High Fort. Now, I've got a lot of money riding on TKS, so I'm really hoping they pull it out of the bag on this one against On Flask. High Fort is what is the largest map pool, uh, largest map that we have in the pool here today. You do see a lot of these split fights, as uh, Sahinki alluded to, these 2v2 focused fights, where there's more of a focus on that CMB just because of the rotation to that central point. So, it'll be interested to see who wins out in this 2v2 fight. Absolutely. My goodness gracious. Thank you so much. High Fort, baby boys. Now, you don't see High Fort over in EU. I'm super excited to talk about that. But before, let's get through some stats here. Look at the... Oh, my goodness. Zero and two. Uh, humanist, again, our mathematics expert. What do you think about these stats? Yes, well, statistically speaking, Slacks, uh, Yes. No, I would say that this looks like the teams that didn't make it to the finals, um, but this is just their record against the teams that, that were playing in the finals here. So, you know, it's a little bit deceptive. Ultimately, though, um, you know, I, I do favor team killing service. You see that they do have just slightly better stats here um, than on Flask. But at the end of the day, you know, these are pretty two evenly matched teams. Yes.
slightly better beards as well. Uh, very powerful, full facial hair there. I haven't shaved in several weeks, and this is as much as I can get. So uh, very painful for me. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and see who is going to win. And based on Twitch chat's predictions wow. here, uh, Okay, that is extremely close. Uh, that is much closer than I thought it would be. Uh, so uh, AC, statistically would, speaking, Slacks, it's not that close. Okay, take it easy. Uh, okay, and now it's going up, so oh, fine. Uh, what do you think, Zohanky? Uh, team Killing Service? Uh, is this working out for them? Uh, well, the one thing that TKS does have on their side is they have the exact same lineup that they did in Major Number 3. You might think that's a bad thing since that was the one that they lost. Uh, but they have had a lot of time to practice together and really tighten things up with some of the newer members of the team. That being said, on Flask has a lot of veteran players. A lot of people really respect Vayne Nawir. You know, he's, he's a lot of like uh, for honor comp resources people go to. Uh, veteran players like Mambino on the team as well now. Uh, so I think this is really anyone's match. Whether TKS is able to, you know, tighten up what they were losing out on in Major Number Three. Uh, on Flask, obviously, the veteran players might just uh, be able to carry them to victory. We'll see how it plays out. But if I had to give the edge to someone, I'm going to go TKS. TKS. Okay, okay. Well, maybe we'll see a more, uh, I'm not going to say competitive, but at least some longer series in this one. It seems like they are on paper a little bit more even as well here. But uh, you got to be scared winning this game and knowing what's uh, waiting for you in the next one. Uh, Humanist, uh, is this one that you kind of want to you know, maybe ride a little, you know what, forget it. Let's just find out what's gonna happen. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. I've just received word. We're ready to go into the game. Let's check it out. It is Team Killing Service versus, oh, you know him, you love him. Get those flasks in the air. If you're a Viking, get your horn. It's on flask coming up right now. My beautiful caster, please take it away. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, TKS looking for the TKO on Flask here. It's the Dominion Series Finals. These teams have ground all year. They've played through majors. They've played through the qualifiers. And now they have to put it all on the line. Team Killing Service, I feel like coming into this one, has the edge. So, Hinky, you talked about it too. It just feels like they have a little bit of the edge coming into this. They've consistently performed just to a slightly higher degree. But the question is, have On Flash tightened up some of their mistakes and can they come out and shake things up here today? It is pretty evenly matched up and we have hype for it. This is one of the maps we rarely see picked here and interesting to see it picked in this first map. At the point something out here, we are seeing a Warlord on the side of TKS. You know, normally something that we wouldn't necessarily be super surprised to see, but in this meta, definitely have not seen it that much. I wonder if this is a map specific pick. Oh, I was just about to allude to those ledges, but Scorpion getting guard broken in the wrong spot is going to go for a ride. And now Clucky's who wants to use his abilities to knock people off the ledge is going to be forced to move back on to see. You see him go for that storming uh, rush there, but ultimately going to miss. And now, oh, Weed is going to go down as well. I was just going to point out that really the Warlord is who you'd be looking to to do these ledges, but now two members of Team Killing Service get ledged, and that is a disaster. Ah, uh, yeah, that's that's not good. On Flask, coming out hot with a triple cap, 450 points. It looks like they were caster cursed uh, on TKS's side. Rippy doing a little, the full dance, but it's not going to be enough. Flip over towards point A and Scorpion is holding it down, going up against Fusion. I know Scorpion was the first one to get ledged, I believe, and it looks like off the spawn made his way over to A. They'll get the kill. They'll get a nice execute off of the back of that. And Team Killing Service recapping A. Hopefully this will give them a little bit of breathing room and uh, a second to assess their mistakes over the first two minutes of this game. I really like seeing Scorpion on the JJ, you know, he was the Nobushi player back when Nobushi was in the meta, and obviously some similarity, similarities there with the Sifu stance as uh, the hidden stance of Nobushi, so it's good to see him on there, closing that kill out on A, and now TKS looks to hopefully rectify their very early, very bad mistakes. Well, early mistakes, uh, you know, this is a game that you can get snowballed on, and early mistakes can be a real problem for you now. With that said, the game is not a runaway by any means. Team Killing Service have low health bars, but they're getting work done. They have to clear out some of these minions who are chunking them down. 
consistently interrupting that's not what you're looking for if you're clucky as you see him just getting hit one more minion hit's gonna go ahead and kill him fusion knows this so fusion's gonna switch sides keep the minions to his back and eventually does take down clucky he's just a super awkward position clucky's knew if he could he tried to run he would just get killed now we gets jump kicked from the side he'll get taken down that's three heroes dead uh, team killing service across the map. Now one will respawn, but two executions. And another moment for On Flask to take control of this map. Rippy looked like he wanted to rotate in the middle, but ultimately saw that his team was losing out. Really smart decision, I think, to just go and boost A, try and hold on to as many points as they can while the rest of team killing service spawns. Really good, really smart play from them. Very much uh, a, a very controlled play, I'll say. Now Scorpion and Cluckies are looking to take back middle. Willem taking a big heavy damage as we switch over looking at Clucky's this warlord you know a hero we didn't see picked in all of you actually picked up over here and hasn't done in, uh, much for them thus far we watch from the, the side of Scorpion Scorpion he'll slap Willem looking to target swap then right back over to Willem Willem knows that he's going to be attacked consistently from Scorpion if he does try to engage. This leaves him in a 1v1 off the side, gets a nice guard break. Scorpion surprised that he got caught out so hard and will get attacked back to back and dropped on down. Rippy's found Gothic Noir, I think that's uh, Vayne Noir, out on the edge over here. And a nice dodge out by Vayne Noir to go ahead and uh, avoid that kick and get the kill there. On Flasker looking very good. They are looking very strong. Willem able to get peeled out here. Now Clucky's being forced to fight against the Shinobi. Gothic Noir, of course, Vayne Noir trying to back off in this fight now as well. And it looks as though TKS, even though they find themselves pretty far behind, are going to be able to take control of middle, at least temporarily. They had the rotations off of A. This is what they're looking for. Clucky's gets guard broken from behind, though. I didn't quite see who did that, but Fusion here now on this JJ, gonna get peeled off as well. That is three different members of On Flask who have been able to back out of this fight. So even though Scorpion and the side of TKS are winning out in this fight middle, they're not closing out any kills. So there's gonna be a lot of fast rotations back on the side of On Flask. Uh, interesting moment though for TKS. They're contesting C, they're holding A. There's nowhere to heal on the map for On Flask and they're gonna get knocked off the ledge. This is a big opportunity for TKS. If they can go ahead and secure C, it's still contested. Fusion stays alive. It looks like he's going to go down. One light will be able to get the kill. They've got the guard break. They've got the kill. And that's going to be a reversal, a triple cap for Team Killing Service. I mean, everything just came together for them. And this was, I believe it was TKS, correct me if I'm wrong, Swahinky, that picked this map. And I was wondering, even though it played a little sloppy early on, you know, when is this going to swing around? Because typically when a team picks a map, they have an idea exactly how they want to rotate and seize control. Yeah, and I really want to shout out Rippy here, making a lot of the smart rotational plays. It was him that held on to A when it looked as though uh, on Flask might triple cap them. And then ultimately it was Rippy that noticed that they had a lot of hurt players and nowhere to heal if he just put pressure onto the C point, was able to rotate in. And now it is the side of team killing service that has complete control of this map. However, on Flask is looking to have something to say about that here on C. Yeah, on Flask, uh, you know, not leading, but it's a, it's a soft lead for TKS at this point. They have to control C if they want to win this fight. It feels like this is actually what it all comes down to over here. Look at these Shinobis just moving around. How fun is that to be able to get in and out of action that fast? Wheat getting the kill on the Will and Rippy taking down Gothic Noir. And with that, TKS taking potentially control of the game. Uh, so we flip back, it looks like A is contested. And TKS, this was, this was kind of a big deal that they were holding down A. And to look over to see Scorpion and Clucky's low health bars, that's not what you're looking for. Clucky's, what are you gonna do? You're gonna jump off the edge? There's nowhere to go, but he's got no stamina. Oh, revenge, very important that that's triggered off. Possibly he gets a kill, but at least he's buying time for his teammate. Throws his own, the headbutt into the light. Nice place, Clucky's able to get that there. Now I think they will be able to get the respawn. Oh, actually not, because Wheat made the rotation on him as well. We're going to have to do a good bit of anti-ganking here, as I don't think any support is even close by. Going to eat quite a bit of damage off that guard break. But no, Rippy, with another rotation, already has the nail bomb as well. See if he looks to use that to try and secure these kills here. He does drop it, and I think that's going Ooh. to hit one of the members of On Flask. That is going to be a kill there for Rippy on the backside of the fight. The Jean who's going to go down. Now Fusion finds himself in a 2v1. Rippy, with these rotations, doing such a good job, but they do trigger off the revenge here. This fight is not over if Fusion has anything to say about it. The rotations are coming in on the side of On 
Sun Flask as well, but Clucky's gonna pop the Juggernaut. Look to be really annoying from behind with those headbutts, and I think that they are going to kill Fusion. Yes, they are. Guard Break comes in. Raider gets eating so much damage. The Shinobi gank comes in, and now, oh my gosh, Bain Noir trying to hold on to this lead. But look at the point totals here. It is perfectly even. Whoever wins this fight ultimately might just be the team that takes the whole map. This is absolutely insane. This is what it comes down to a fight on A. Young Gravity, he's down low. I don't think he's gonna get a revenge triggered off. Oh, and Gothenor comes in with a kick, kicking Clucky's back, healing for his teammate. Young Gravity stays alive. Clucky's Defender will be chopped down. He A's. will be executed. And uh, not the execution, team killing service. Getting just ripped at the end here on Flask in the most important moment of the game. They're 20 points away from putting TKS into break. There we have it. I think much like me, Rippy thought that if he used that nail bomb to get that kill quickly, they would be able to take that point and force the breaking onto the side of On Flask. Unfortunately for TKS, it was the exact opposite that happened. Those respawns happened so fast for On Flask because they weren't able to get any executions. Ultimately, the rotations came in, and now TKS finds themselves breaking here. They're going to try and hold on flask off of the point but i have to imagine they're not gonna be able to force this double breaking as it looks like vein noir knowing that this is exactly the only way that tks can get back into this map he puts himself on the point and he's going to look to force this fight oh nice nice chunk damage coming out we connecting there as well now they have been attacked from behind but they're able <gasps> to get the, kill, get the kill into gothic noir deep breath coming in really from the there. You, you can hear it. he's just holding his breath Wait, swinging for the fences. Team killing service. They cannot afford to lose anyone, and it looks like they might be doing it right now as Willem gets taken down by Scorpion. Scorpion has Phalanx available. I don't know if he's going to go ahead and throw it out here. Young Gravity Revenge triggered off. He was dropping down incredibly low as well. What an insane fight on C. C, one of the, the, the craziest uh, points in all of Core Honor here on this high fort mode, and Young Gravity chopped all down scorpion happy to take that one team killing service might be losing rippy here's rippy shoved up on the side can anybody peel for this guy they get the guard break gothic noir top down give him a heavy over the top oh he gets the kick rippy what are you doing back up ripping i feel like rippy oh he's only gonna sneeze on him rippy's gonna die here there's nowhere for him to heal on the map and of course he doesn't want to go ahead and rotate gothic door gets the kill there was nothing rippy could do he wanted to just help his teammate but uh, with this, we've had the respawns that made their way back out. Scorpion does get the kill on the Gothic Noir, but you got to feel it's just a matter of time before TKS gets put into the dirt here. On Flask, they will be losing another hero. I mean, I, you know, I love to see that TKS isn't going down without a fight. They're trying for the, res uh, the revive. It's not going to happen. Unfortunately, maybe if they got one more kill, if they got a ledge, uh, something like that. And I'm surprised that we actually didn't see anybody getting ledged here. Revenge triggered off from Weep. These guys, I mean, I want to call that the game's over, but they just won't give up. They keep fighting. If they get two kills, they will be able to get a revive. And they actually did it. Nice. Wow. Are you kidding Absolutely me? They actually got the revive. Insane. Willem being forced to come back in here by himself to try and stop this double breaking, but this really could be them breaking back here. Ultimately, the nail bomb's gonna kill him. They got him. They're gonna force this double breaking maybe on the back side, but no, it looks as though they're being challenged maybe by the Shinobi in the back. So they're gonna get this long execution, but they need seven more points. They need seven more points. Vayne Noir actually is gonna back off. They're, they're gonna, this is insane. They're, they're gonna they forced the double breaking. The time resets. It is a 3v3 to close out this game. Scorpion playing out of his mind along with Rippy. Oh, but Rippy is gonna go down. Now a 2v3 scenario, but the JJ and the Raider on the side of TKS are both full HP. This is very doable. This is very doable. It might feats. be smart I on the side of On Blast. TKS. Please, please. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. This is this is absolutely insane. And what a place to be having this fight. You could say on Flask are, are saying, "Yeah, come come and get us. Look, <laughs> Shinobi's not even full health. Just just come fight us. Why why so fear? Why so scared? Uh, TKS, th they know that if they go out there and take this fight, it is not an ideal position. Make your opponent come to you. You're not going to get a revive in a two versus three when they're all there. But this is insane, right? Because there are so many ledge opportunities on C. One slip up. One mistake. It doesn't matter if you've got 15, 1600 points. If you get ledged, if you go down right here, your team in breaking, this is insane. I have to, I really have to call out Vayne Noir here, who, who saved the game for On Flask. 
with that 1v3 scenario. He went for the parry, he landed it, and he was able to get revenge and stall out just long enough for his team to come back in and put them into this sort of checkmate scenario. They've made sure to camp the body for that kill, and now on Flask, they're just gonna play out the time. Wheat and Scorpion talking things over, realizing that they can't just sit back. It's time to fight. They wanted to make sure Yep, they wanted all they wanted to do was make sure they boosted that point so that it was on flask that couldn't unbreak uh unbreak themselves by taking point C maybe behind the fight. So they're just gonna go back up to point A and heal. Scorpion and Wheat are gonna clear out the minions. They're gonna look to make sure that they have the rest of their feats ready for this fight, and it is going to be a two V three for the game on the A point. But no, actually on Flask, uh, maybe an honorable move here is deciding to go out and take this fight on to B. Gravity looking to maybe get that Fury Flask back and ultimately, uh, you know, Scorpion wanting to counter with that Phalanx, I'm sure. TKS have a lot of minions at their back here. I mean, they need to fight and they need to fight now, um, but they don't want to make the move just then. Phalanx almost coming up off of CD here. And who makes the first move? Uh, so, Hiki, I, I feel I, like you, well, you need to pull the trigger. I can tell you, I can tell you exactly what's happening. It's Scorpion and... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not remembering who, uh, yeah, Scorpion and Wheat. Uh, they're trying to force the points. They're trying to make sure that On Flask has to come to them by farming these minions in middle, and that's exactly what happened here. On Flask now being forced to approach here. Scorpion and Wheat both sitting at about half health. Fusion, oh no, Wheat just gets absolutely obliterated. That Fury Flask comes through as we called it out. The Phalanx not even able to be popped. On Flask with the composure. Really comes through in clutch in the end. Vayne Noir <laughs> saving the game by himself in that 1v3 scenario. What a ridiculous way to start this series. On Flask, uh, on Q, finishing things up with the nuke Flask right at the end. Uh, let's look. Gothic Noir, 11 takedowns, 4 deaths. On Flask overall, just really playing incredibly well. Look at Scorpion's renown, 873, 777 renown for Wheat. Of course, they were alive uh, longer than their teammates at the end, but you could tell this was a map that could have gone either way. It was just On Flask taking some important uh, objectives right when it mattered most. Yeah, we want to take a look right now here at Plucky sitting at three and five on the Warlord. This was sort of the left field pick that we didn't see coming. Uh, I thought it might just be a map pick. You know, there's a lot of opportunities for ledges on high for it, so it's possible yeah. they'll be swapping this Warlord out going into game number two, but it's also possible that Clucky's just like, hey, this is the hero that I'm comfortable on. He didn't play terribly. I just think that they had such a rough start uh, with all of those ledges. Uh, honestly, being able to even break it back into double breaking was ridiculous. And as I shouted out three different times now, Vaynor saved the game. It really looked like they were going to be able to clutch it out there on point C, but able to stay alive just long enough to make sure that they couldn't force a double breaking at the worst possible time. Uh, wow, I, I just can't believe that game. That, that's, that might be one of the best games of For Honor I've ever watched. Yeah, it was definitely good. And of course, we're watching uh, North America For Honor. So, you know, you would expect that. So, Hinky, I won't tell Vivid Nas. Uh, of course, you know, the EU fanboy over there. But yeah, I mean, and that was TKS that had picked High Fort. So now we're going to go into a map that was not even their preference. And we'll see what they can do. Yo, I'm absolutely sweating after that game. TKS did stumble at the start of the game, but absolutely brought it back in an absolute butt clencher of a game. Of course, Sanctuary Bridge. Usually you get to see the snowballs on this map, so we're hoping to see just as an exciting game as the one that we just had. And TKS need to win this game their team fighting potential later on was pretty good so we're hoping to see a bit more of that here hopefully we don't see cluckies on the warlord i feel like uh you know kind of what the analyst has said it said it there might have just been a pick for the map but hopefully in section group we don't see that it doesn't really work too well and of course we had to see raider on the stalwart banner it didn't really fit too well especially that end game scenario where if he had fire flask he could have done a lot more in that game one yeah, definitely really good analysis coming out from Vivinaz. Um, surprisingly uh, showing us incredible insight there, Vivinaz. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, it's Sanctuary Bridge time. We saw this in Europe typically picked as the first map, and it's definitely super snowball-y. It's interesting to see it picked up here as map number two in North America. And uh, I, I just, I really don't even have a good feeling about how either team uh, approaches this. So Hingy, what do you think? 
honestly, it was incredibly even in the team fights. It was incredibly even in the 2v2s. Both of these teams are incredibly evenly matched. This is this is going to shape up to be a hype series, especially if TKS is able to take this. All right, well, here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. They've got their own home points uh, captured on both sides, and this is where things get typically a little bit sloppy, but you see both teams patient, waiting for the engage, uh, waiting for their opponents to make a mistake and slip up, something that they can take advantage of. And nice job by Willem to get onto Rippy and apply some damage, avoids the kick there as he get back. Nice uh, target swapping to get some damage out. It's actually TKS is really getting the worst of the end of the beat stick here. Who is that? Clucky's dropping first there. And I think TKS is going to get totally shoved back. Fusion is low. Wheat has an opportunity to go ahead and take him down on the back of this fight. But we're going to see Goth Gothic Noir taking down Rippy. And uh, we I think he got that kill. Not not sure, but either way, he's caught by Gothic Noir. Chop over the top. And we, he's going to get sliced through Daisu. Just lose you. Don't lose your head. And team killing service on the back foot quickly. Willem here in this back cap scenario is going to finally get the, the peel there from Vayne Noir, but it looks like Scorpion's trying to stick to him. The reinforcements are coming in, though. This is starting to look a little bit dicey. No, but they are able to get this kill very quickly. Excellent job there with Clucky's working alongside Rippy. Scorpion, oh, they are going to feed Revenge here, but I don't think it's going to matter that much as it looks like young uh, Gravity is the last remaining member of On Flask here. Going to use this Revenge to try and just back off from this fight. Yeah, trying to back off, but he's 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 trying to walk that line so he doesn't get drop attacked. <laughs> you see whoever's up there above him trying to get he'll finally get it. Uh, it was that scorpion waiting there the whole time trying to drop down on it. That's one of the most cruel things when when someone's just on the edge of being in range for that drop attack. I have to say, Willem, I, I really liked that push on to the home point, even though it didn't end up working out for him, because it was a twofold thing. Not only did it really cancel out the ability to heal of the remaining members of TKS, but it also was a really big distraction. It was one of the main reasons Clucky's and Rippy both went down. Willem had moved back over to B, taking a couple of heavies and almost chopping him down, but that's going to be his revenge popped off. And uh, with that, Clucky goes ahead to take a step back with his McDonald's shield there. It looked like Scorpion was going to go ahead and take him, but looks like Scorpion says, uh, yeah, Clucky, you got this. Cluck, 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 take him down. Nice kill on Willem in the B point. Now Young Gravity comes in. He wants a little bit, some chicken nuggets. And it looks like Clucky is going to give it to him. Oh, uh, no, he'll actually go ahead and chase him as he looks to rotate up towards point A. There's some actions happening on Flask. We've got one down, two down. Three down with two executions. Team killing service. Hello. Great chase down there. Using the rush was Clucky's and uh, finally coming alive on this Warlord here. Sitting at three and one. Really big renown lead as well on, on their side. And if you want that renown on anyone, you probably want it on the Warlord because I believe that is who has their flask on the side of TKS. Yeah, the... Uh... Interesting to see on Flask go down to a nice Flask here at the end. But Team Killing Service obviously uh, playing much better than they did in the first map. And just so interesting that they didn't even choose this one. Um, but up about 300 points, approximately a soft lead for them. <laughs> oh, two ledges. Yep. There it is. Getting a little bit of Give revenge here is TKS. Two different ledges there during that fight. Now, unfortunately, Van Nuer finding himself alone in this gank. He does have revenge. Ooh, is able to close out the kill on Clucky's. Uses that tier two to regain his turn. Those lights coming through. Man, Wheat is having a lot of trouble here. Van Nuer sticking those lights out. No light parries to be seen on the side of Wheat. Gonna stick his own light out and commit to that heavy. Gets himself right back into this fight. This 1v1 is semi-important here to make sure that uh, they retake middle. Lands that parry there, just wow. as we're talking about those light parries. Unfortunately, though, is going to be able to get away because Gravity came in from behind. <laughs> yeah, usually Gravity comes from above, but Gravity came in from behind this time. Can he like throw his own and get two kills at the same time? Do it! Do it for America! Do it for North America! Scorpion, he's low. Scorpion, give him the slice who dice who. There's the parry. And young Gravity will turn around. He'll take himself a little bit of a kill and a victory dance. Throwing some heavies, cleaning up some minions, but we can look over towards A. We've got a contested point here. Fusion dropping down low, but the revenge tags are there. He's shoved back. Clucky's the warlord of the year. 
uh, gets the, the shove out of this point A, but not the kill just yet. Fusion, no fear. He's hanging on the edge of the fight, but a nice kick coming in. Gothic Noir is keeping Clucky's out of stamina and on his back foot. He's been there for the whole time, but he really can't do anything. And Fusion, just like a little mosquito pest, keep bugging him. Fusion will eventually just get stabbed. A little light there from Clucky's will be able to take him down. And Clucky's nowhere to go. He's rounded up, but Scorpion is coming in from behind. If he can stay alive just a second longer, Scorpion might be able to peel from Clucky's. He does stay alive. Scorpion peels for him. Is Clucky going to go ahead and drop down and run across the map to try and heal? Not sure how that rotation is going to play out, but Scorpion's here. Wheat's here as well. Big damage coming oh, no. through. Just a little bit of a waste on the flask there from Clucky's. He wanted to throw it before he backed out of the fight. Is able to get out of there thanks to the damage reduction there on the Juggernaut. But now TKS uh, very low on life here. That being said, if you look at the point lead, it is just mounting up and up and up as they have been contesting this point for like the last three minutes. Yeah, I mean, this is night and day. Team Killing Service in complete control over this game. And they're back capping creating a real challenging situation and even in this situation where wheat is like the fact that he got the revenge procked off is amazing um is, is more than they needed on flask are in breaking it looks like tks are going to round this one out here uh if they're able to seal the deal and tie up the series one one uh, a series that we knew was going to be pretty even but it, it's just interesting to see like a one-sided map one into a map one-sided map two uh, even though map one was double break it was like on flask got a huge point lead yeah for sure but now it is tks with about 200 hard point lead here uh looking pretty strong and they were making sure that they didn't overcommit there you know they had one player in the anti-gank scenario but they decided not to back him up so just making sure that they maintain control of this map and have a nice easy road to taking this to a game number three yeah and it looks like they're in a good position to do so Fusion thinking about dropping back to potentially heal, but no one's going to let him there. So he has to stand his ground. In the meantime, Rippy, he's going to go ahead and Rudo run himself up into A, where Scorpion and Gothic Noir were in a 1v1. And it looked like Scorpion was getting not getting the best of that, but he will get himself the execution there at the end. Team Killing Service looking good, looking like they're going to go ahead and close this one out as it's now a three versus four. Young Gravity. Well, uh, he's going to need a little bit more than just throwing some heavy zones uh, to take this in its favor. In fact, they're low. Should be just a matter of time before TKS look to close this out. Doing doing some 360s up on this point A. Rippy shielded up. He wants fusion. Fusion's just going to get slapped around here. We'll see if they the, the show some honor or just destroy this man. They're just trying to end this man's whole career. TKS, they're going to take map two and tie this series up 1-1. One one. I have to say, one of the things that impresses me the most when I watch Team Killing Service is just their ganking, the execution on the ganking. You can tell that they've run it over and over and over again. Even in a situation where you might have seen someone be a little shaken up, Scorpion finding himself low on life, but the rotation comes in from Rippy. They have that absolutely perfect Shinobi gank. Uh, just really impressive stuff, honestly. And we look at the score here, 11-2, 11-2, 13-3. Wheat, 6-2, uh, but still holding it down all right on the Raider. And uh, wow, uh, night and day for Clucky's between first game and this game as well. Yeah, absolutely. And showing an off meta pick to be one of the highest, you know, one of the highest scoring heroes in uh, in the game is pretty impressive. But was it TKS that got the ledges? I, I'm just like blacking out. I just saw people getting ledged into the pit. Um, yeah, no, but was it TKS, TKS was that, the side that got they, the ledges? Mm -hmm, they got two separate ledges in that one B fight about halfway through the game. So, uh, you know, anything you can do, I can do better is I, I think what they were trying to say there. So, um, honestly, you know, we, we called it out as maybe a map pick because High Fort has so many spots to get ledged on. But, I mean, if there's a Warlord on the map and there's even one spot that they can find to throw you off of it, uh, you can bet that they're going to go for it. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, now that now that that's being confirmed, I feel like that was kind of one of the point in the game where you just have a couple extra seconds before you respawn your team, your your opponent takes control over B and suddenly you, you just never find your way back into the game.
Yeah, ha uh, definitely the fastest way to 100 to zero your opponent is to uh, do something that literally takes all of their life away and instantly kills them. Uh, but I believe we have the third map ready to go here in our second series of the day. Vivid Naz, take it away. Well, 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 would you look at that? We're at game three of series two, the first in the NA. And you know what, Cluckies, I take it back. Stay on the Warlord, obviously it looks like a little bit of a comfort pick. But here in Harbor, it is a lot about the 2v2 fights. Now, High 4, we thought it would go in the way of TKS, but I feel like they just had some initial fumbles. Of course, it didn't feel like they were just losing fights. I think it was just mistakes they were making, getting ledged all the time, and just picking some really questionable fights. But going into Harbor, they do have the momentum after winning Game 2, uh, game two so flawlessly. So it's basically TKS to lose at this point, especially with their map selection. Harbor, one of the most interesting maps in uh, in For Honor, I, I think. Um, and I said it before, it, it's just like you have these multiple ways to get over to the points uh, with the ropes, and we've seen that used a little bit. B, being, you know, so hinky, I think something you touch on consistently is that it's, it's, it's very quick to clear out B on Harbor. So we see a lot less focus, although sometimes we do get those team fights as both teams are, you know, they've got A and C capped respectively, so they just clash in B. Um, but just a couple of standout things. Yeah, and if your team kill killing service, you are so happy to have game number three on Harbor. This is definitely a comfort pick for them. Uh, really, we saw this team come alive for the first time on Harbor up against Guidance Gaming when they won that first major. So I have to imagine, uh, you know, a, a shaky start on game number one, but they're probably talking in the comms right now being like, guys, this is our map. Let's just take it home. Take me home. Okay, I, I'll save everybody and not finish that. On Flask, taking a lot of damage early on here. They're down one hero. Make it two as Young Gravity gets Defenders chopped down. Scorpion, he's turning it up. He's getting a nice renowned lead early on here. Uh, it, typically with Scorpion's doing well, TKS is doing well. And we look over to see Gothic Noir is actually getting punished as well. Rippy gets the guard break. Rippy's got the kill. That's actually all the kills in the game going the way of TKS as they've taken A and C. This is insane. I mean, rarely on, on Harbor do we see a team cap both points. It's like, if anything, it's, it's stalled out on the other one, but that is incredible. Yeah, that's just because of how fast Scorpion and Cluckies took care of that fight over on A. The rotations came in quick, but I don't even know that they needed them. And now the respawns are going to be so awkward. Two members with long executions, followed by another member getting long executed behind him. So now the uh, respawn comes in from Vayne Noir, but going to be joining the fight a little bit late. Cluckies on this Warlord, the off meta pick. Just a comfort pick and making it happen. And you know, I think comfort pick is just as important as playing to the meta when you're playing at the highest level. Of course, you want to be playing the strongest hero. But if you've got an edge on a hero like this Warlord, you make it happen. Goes for the headbutt. He'll catch him with a nice heavy. Young Gravity is one attack away from going down. And it's going to be Scorpion that grabs that as he swaps targets. Scorpion almost taking Fusion down with a top heavy. He'll connect. Scorpion gets another one. I mean, Scorpion is just popping off right now. And Clucky's playing so strong here, really just working off of that headbutt, but it looks like On Flask finally going to get some ground on this map as they're going to get this long execution on a Rippy and take over C. That being said, TKS with a pretty sizable lead here early on in the game, and that is just due to the play of Scorpion and Clucky's, as you were pointing out, over on that A point. Clucky's finding himself in the sickle gank. Is going to... No, he's going to get hit by the kick. Gonna try and dodge this. Doesn't bite on that unblockable, but oh. that is going to catch him there. Clucky's going down, and now on Flask looking to put pressure on this point. Wheat just barely avoiding the ledge angle there. Gonna find himself in an awkward position, though. Realizing that the only thing that can really insta-kill him here is that guard break, so making sure he doesn't bite on that. Young Gravity going for it again. I have to imagine Wheat is just going to eat these heavies sitting at this life total. Be yep, and he does right there. Just not wanting to get guard broken here. One right back for him, this Raider versus Raider fight. Oof. They both trade lights, Gravity just barely edging it out there, and on Flask now. A little bit of advantage uh, in the fights right there. Unfortunately, there's a very healthy members on TKS on point A, so they're just gonna back off a few ones. 
Man, uh, watching the two Raiders is, is like watching two heavyweights in the 12th round just throwing these blows. Uh, and eventually, yeah, um, we taking the advantage. Now, Clucky's on the stairs here over by A. He's going to get a kill. He's going to be able to get the execute as well. Great job as Clucky's taking down Willem. I really want to shout out Clucky's for like, this is the fifth time he's just thrown a heavy knowing that he wants to trade and knowing that's what his opponents wants to do. He realizes the Shugo wants to trade with him, but he's like, hey, I got half my life. I can throw this heavy at you. And ultimately that's what allows him to get the kill there. Back over towards we in B. You see Young Gravity is low on health, so he's going to be really cautious here. You see he's getting hit by these minions as well, but a nice parry allows him to trade some damage. Coming back, the old one, two, switches it into guard break. He's going to let loose with the heavy. Yes, he will, but it's Rippy who dances on in on the Shinobi to be able to take the kill. Rippy taking down Young Gravity. Now Rippy looking for Willem. We'll see. Uh, Willem, I, I feel like Willem's been a little bit quiet here as of recent. If he could get this kill onto Rippy, it would be huge for On Flask, as they are currently down about 200 points ish. Willem, careful. Rippy wants to run. Show us the speed, man. That's why he was he was the first pick in the NFL draft right there. And uh, they'll go ahead and drop back onto a young, young gravity. Full health bar, Rippy low, Willem moving in. Look at that heavy damage coming through. The trading coming out of the Shugo. It's nothing you want to mess with. Right now, Wheat, he's shielded up. But the three versus two makes it really awkward here. We'll watch from Fusion's perspective for a second. This cluck is right in the middle. Rippy still alive. Rippy slips out just into the cracks there. And Fusion wants to get the kill. They're like, somebody, somebody just killed Rippy on the side of the fight. And I think they've been so distracted by his little health bar that they're getting destroyed. Rippy stays alive. He's, blah, blah, blah. He's about to get this kill. Come on. Make your move, Fusion. Swing, baby. Swing. Oh, they got the revenge, but he couldn't trick it on. Rippy falls down. It's the 1-2-1-2. One, two, one, two. Everybody dropping, but really, honestly, Rippy literally almost got his revenge triggered off there. That's insane. Cluckies headbutts, but Willem's like, no, you, buddy. He's got, there's no brain cells left between this warlord and the Shigoki. You're just bashing their head against the wall, against each other. Gotham Noir's like, yeah, I'm still over here. If you want to come this way, I'll, I'll, I'll trade blows with you. It's not going to happen. Revenge is there. He's kicked up against the wall. Gotham Noir trying to get a little bit of an interrupt, but it's not going to happen. This is an amazing fight, so he that just continues to keep on giving the fight that never ends. On A over here, oh, he finally gets a match on a full health of Cluckies. So Cluckies played himself over here. You think Cluckies would be getting the ledge? He's the one that got ledged. Man, I, uh, I I really was about to shout out Rippy for coming into that fight late and just trying to stall out as long as possible, but now this is on Flask's turn to try and take back this map here. They have A, they have B, and this is a really important anti-gank on C for Scorpion, sitting at about a third of his life, going to heal back up to about half health. Fusion going to pop Inspire here, trying to help his team out and just get this C fight finished as quick as possible. Rippy now back out onto the map, though. Luckily for them, he's able to rejoin this fight. Ooh, Rippy, however, eating a big heavy there from that external on the Raider. Now a little bit of a 1v1 off to the side here. Shinobi versus Shinobi. The flask did come down. Wasn't sure who threw that one, but it looks as though TKS is the one that's cooking. Clucky's is going to go down. Rippy's going to get a kill of his own. This is really important here. Oh my goodness, the Raider just trying to stay alive, but TKS, he's going to land the guard break, the double dash into the guard break to close it out. Wow. Here is going to be the res onto Clucky's TKS, really saving the game there, making sure that they're able to maintain control of C, ultimately get that execution, and now break back out into B. Wow. I mean, that was really impressive. Uh, team Killing Service <clears throat> held it together. I got to say, Rippy's playing phenomenal right now. But if you're looking at the takedowns, it's Clucky's in the lead again. Ten uh, takedowns, three deaths. What a phenomenal job by Clucky's to come out here. You know, you guys talked about it. Uh, I didn't put as much emphasis on it, but it's having a big impact. 950 to the 860 points overall. Yes, in the lead. Series tied up 1-1. Whoever seals the deal here wins this series. It is a real big deal. This is a high pressure, high stakes situation. Gothic Noir, he's out of stamina. He wanted to drop back and potentially heal to get over on C. This is an, you know, just awkward because you're not even getting over there. You need to get back to A. Willem thinking about moving to A to heal. He finds Rippy taking down Fusion. He's going to peel for Fusion over here. But Rippy With dancing a, uh... around. Rippy just got destroyed. 
Grippy ate that feet and is going to go down. He was doing a good job trying to make sure that they couldn't go back and heal on A. Unfortunately, now, wow, Vaynor holding him off the point, but luckily Scorpion able to come in from behind, and now Vaynor finding himself eating mm. quite a bit of damage, already almost dead. Throws that kick out, but the GB is going to seal it. There it is, and just at the wrong time, I believe Vaynor is not going to be able to come back into this map right here. Desperately trying to get the ledge to, ledge to close out on A, but now the contest comes in from TKS, and this is looking like they might just take the series right now. TKS, blood's in the water. These animals are here. They'll swing. Willem goes down. Scorpion able to seal the deal onto Willem. And down two versus four. We'll give on Flask all the opportunities in the world, but at the end of the day, it's not old gravity, it's young gravity. And this is a scorpion that is deadly, that has venom, and they have attacked. They have applied the service, and there is no fee. It's free. TKS, take the game and the series. Man, I might just have to change my pick from Black Jackals. I don't know. The TKS looked so strong in the series. <laughs> Obviously, they had that early fumble. Uh, you know, they got ledged off on the beginning of High Fort, and that really just put them on the back foot. But without those ledges, you just saw how strong this team is. I mean, even when the games were close, look at the takedown advantage. 11 kills on Scorpion, 13 kills on Cluckies, who, by the way, on that rep 70 Warlord really came alive. Ooh. Clearly, this is a comfort pick for him. And honestly, with characters that dodge so much in the meta, uh, an attack like the Warlord zone attack that has so much range and is undodgeable is really, really strong. So I can see why they want to pick it, especially if it's a comfort pick for them. What a legitimate god. You know, a warlord, nobody else will touch him. The homie's level 70s, like the meta sucks. I'm playing my favorite hero and he goes out and he dominates. I, what more could you want from a series? On Flask, we, winning game one with the Fire Flask, just absolutely dominating. One of the most spectacular ones I've ever seen. And then a basically dead hero <laughs> coming back and owning. The ledge lord was such a pleasure to see on that one. Humanist. Did you think we'd ever see something like that here? I mean, again, this is a year's worth of uh, For Honor culminating in this final. And then we're seeing guys like Warlord coming out, man. Yeah, I'm not surprised to see it. Um, I'm definitely happy to see it. I love when people aren't afraid to take some off meta picks, especially when it's a comfort pick for your squad. I think it makes things interesting. And then you have to realize that, I mean, I, you know, I can't account for all the scrims that this team's had. But you have to imagine that if it's not in the meta, then most of the teams aren't scrimming against it. So when you do get into this right. matchup, you're like, okay, I've played against this hero before, but you have to get reacquainted with it. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take some look at some highlights from that series. So, Hinky, I'd love you to walk us through these and we can relive this beautiful throwdown. Starting things off here, game number one really wasn't how TKS wanted to start. I was about to shout the Warlord out for being the Ledge Lord, and then it was TKS getting double ledge to start the game. They did a good job of clawing their way back in. Honestly, they they were really smart about their rotations. They made sure that they were holding on to A this entire time, and then were able to force this double breaking over here. But it was Vaynor who really saved the game. This one was anyone's game to take. And you're seeing it right here in this situation, Rippy in the anti-gank. But unfortunately for them, right as Rippy rotates back around, he's able to land these parries after the kick, stalling out just enough time, and ultimately playing their point lead to perfection, waiting out their feats until they had the Fury Flask, and that was game number one. Going into game number two now, though, TKS had something to say. They were like, guys, listen, you got a couple cheap ledges in game number one, but that is not how it's going to go down here. Speaking of ledges, you see Scorpion up there just whiffing, making sure he's seeing these indicators, and then finally going for that plunge attack to take out Young Gravity. Very well played there, and ultimately just a slow, methodical performance, really picking on Flask apart, and then finally taking over, and then in game number three, just one of the most impressive performances I think I've seen from this team. Just a ton of good composure, and I have to shout out Plucky's. You know, he, rock he looked a little bit rocky in game one, but in game two and three, he really came alive. He started playing a lot more defensive and not going to the zone necessarily as much. I was noticing in game number one quite a bit, he was overusing zone and then finding himself out of stamina, but just playing off of the headbutt a little bit more and making sure he was playing more solid, ultimately coming back into this game and leading in kills both times, I believe. So really well from uh, Cluckies, but honestly, TKS just doing so well to come back after that misstep and take the seal. Absolutely.
Absolutely. Well, let's take a look at our bracket to remind you where we are here in our North American division. We're going to be seeing Black Jackals versus Team Killing Service coming up, but uh, we're going to need to go to the lowers there and see On Flash and Better Than You. A reminder, lowers, you lose that one, you get knocked out, and soon we will find out who is going to be in that grand finals. But again, one hell of a series there, and that is what we love seeing from North America. EU, they might dominate the meta, but you never know what's coming in NA, and there's tons of room for surprises. I can't wait to see if we have more surprise hero picks coming out. In fact, you know, we had a chance to ask these uh, players who they thought the most impactful hero in the current meta is. So, uh, open up your ears, my friends. Let's take a listen. The hero that was going to be the most impactful in this final was definitely Shinobi. He's been reworked at the start of the season and was a total threat on the battlefield. Always able to be out of range, um, super safe 1v1. His kick was super hard to punish for basically every char in the game. However, there's been a patch that's been changing everything. And some team even stopped running Shinobi for, let's say, Shigoki or Kyoshin. So right now, I would say the most impactful character is probably either Raider or JG. I think what would have been the most important character to have, it would have been Shinobi, but Shinobi unfortunately got a nerf. As of right now, I still think Raider, because he has Fury Flask and that like that two combo, it's, it's super important to have his feats. I'd say Raider probably. Which hero do I think will be the most impactful? I still think it'll be Raider, but I think John who's also being slept on in terms of impact. He has really good peel. He's got really good pressure with the external dodge attacks and really good pressure with his unblockables. During this finals, I think uh, Raider is going to be the most impactful hero. Um, his feats, Fire Flask is still a very strong feat. Uh, it's pretty much a pocket nuke. It'll wipe an entire team in uh, the matter of seconds. All in all, he's just a very good hero and his mix up is deemed unreactable by most players in the game. So I think it's definitely going to be Raider. All right, well, there's who the players thought would be the most impactful heroes. We see uh, the Raider is ranked down on this medalist, but honestly, we've seen Raider on basically every team. Shinobi, of course, the, the sort of spotlight here as the character that came out of nowhere in this meta after the rework to be the star. A little bit of a nerf sent him a little bit back down, especially because people are now using Jean Hu to counter him. Uh, just a long range on those undodgeable zone attacks to really make sure to keep the Shinobi in check, uh, as well as other things as well. You know, John, who's got great uh, pressure with his heavies as well. Uh, so it's really interesting to see that a lot of teams are still running Shinobi. And of course, uh, as we see in an NA multiple times throughout the year, uh, some surprise picks coming through as well. <laughs> Absolutely. You know... I gotta say though, Orichi, uh, a sad thing. Anime tears are cried out. Those were some hype times when you got to see all that bouncing around. But I leave it. I will say one thing. I've been playing pubs a lot. Oh, like every other human being in the game, I've been spamming pirate. A shout out to Ubi for uh, balancing a hero with a literal gun in the medieval times to not be completely OP. The first time I I purchased <laughs> her, I won't lie to you, I shot someone. They were still alive, and I was wondering, what did I spend my money on? I thought that they would instantly <laughs> die with a, a bullet, but no, it uh, turns out you have to have skill to play the hero, which stinks. So I do hope that we uh, get to see that coming up here. A lot of Shinobi, as we said. Uh, most impactful hero, Humanist. I'm interested in what you think, my friend. Me and uh, Sohinky have been talking forever. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I feel like the Shinobi uh, has been maybe the standout MVP for some of these teams when you see them. It's just, there's such a, it's such a flashy pick, right? So it's dancing around, getting these executions and kills. I think the one of the quietest uh, heroes that's just kind of like solid through all these teams is the the JJ. And we see when they get their tier four unlocked, that really can just completely change team fights. And I know that the tier four feat that most people are talking about is going to be Fire Flask and the Fury Flask with Raider. Um, of course, that's hugely impactful, but you just can't account for like whole team defense when you need it the most. Most important hero agree, out uh, of everybody. Yeah, you think so, uh, so I, Hinky? I was just about to ask. You. One, I, I was just going to throw out that I, I do think that in every meta, what has stuck out to me is that there is one character on the roster that can really confirm basically a 100 to zero or, you know, a 100 to 20 percent uh, gank. Uh, you know, we saw Gladiator with the skewer doing that 
quite a bit. And then we saw the double hug gangs coming in major number three with Shugoki. And now these gangs off of the sickle reign. So Shinobi, you know, I, I would agree with the players that Raider is definitely the most impactful as far as like overall performance in the fights and everything. But that gank off of the Shinobi might be just one of the deadliest ganks that's ever been in For Honor. It's, it's pretty ridiculous. And you saw TKS especially performing it very well. Well, that is the trick of the shinobi you know you're not allowed to show them how deadly you really are it's it's something in the background you know you got this big old raider just busted out molotovs everywhere and then you got this little dude he's like <laughs> throw it in the back that's the way of the ninja man only a ninja could truly see it ladies and gentlemen loser semi-final it is time don't forget you guys in chat can vote we will look at your vote and discuss an exclamation point o f or exclamation point b t you for who you think is going to win this loser's semi-final. Now, you know, uh, most esports, they'll call it the lowers. We call it the losers because you go home if you get beaten. Mount draft here, my friends. Walk me through it. So, Hinky, what are you thinking? On Flask, I think looking to make a statement here that they are better than better than you with these 2v2 <gasps> rotations, you know, saying their twos are better than use and then citadel gate picked by better than you they're like well hey if you happen to be better than us then maybe we'll win out in this team fight and then of course on flask picking sanctuary bridge they're like eh it's probably not gonna even go that far but if it does i think our team fight's better than you wow i did i mean i don't even know what to say off of the back of that <laughs> <laughs> let's just go straight to vivid Nas. let's talk about temple garden once again, we have Temple Garden as one of our choices here. Only Flask hoping to, to start off the, the series with a bang on this one. Of course, we kind of seen a predictable play run this map where instantly teams try and go for that big fight on C while sending one person to B. But some teams have opted to capture that A point. If C is looking like a dire choice, they will rotate a person to A so that the point lead isn't too catastrophic. Absolutely. Well, we shall see. The Temple Garden will be fertilized with blood once more in this bad boy. Let's go ahead mm. and maybe take a look pretty soon at what Twitch chat has predicted. I've made many wrong predictions myself. Uh, gentlemen, coming into this one, before they even go up, what do you guys think? Humanist, you think Twitch chat is on the uh, on Flask train on, on this flask. one after that last game? Okay, take it I'm, easy. I'm thinking Twitch chat predicts on Flask. They're on Flask is going to win. Better than you is not better than me. Is better than me okay all right very defensive for no real reason there thank you very much humanista <laughs> so hinky do you uh do you agree yeah i think so you know there were last minute roster shakeups on the side of better than you and uh, honestly with <coughs> their roster that they had in the lcq i was thinking that they might have a chance to win the entire thing um but you know it, obviously things didn't work out that way and now they find themselves in the lowers against on flask who not only uh, have shown themselves to be very strong, but are definitely warm coming off that series with TKS. So uh, I think Twitch chat might just have it right this time. All right, now I'm going to challenge you here. This does update live. So uh, I know we've heard your real opinion. Convince them otherwise now, so Hanky. I want you to convince them that better than you is going to win, and I want to see that bar go down. Give it your best shot. All right. Oh, buddy. I mean, Tetsu, he's a veteran. Uh, you saw him playing in major number one. So, you know, he's no stranger to competition here. I have to imagine, you know, after that loss, Tetsu really brought the boys together. And he was like, guys, these are the things we need to work on. Let's tighten our game up on Flask. They're easy peasy. We're not even worried about them. The only reason it looked so bad in series number one is because we were against Black Jackals, the guys who were, who were up in first place. So I'm going to go ahead and say better than you, clearly going to win this series. It didn't move. It didn't move at all. But that's okay. Great job, So Hinky. <laughs> really proud of you for your effort. Uh, a fantastic speech. I guess, guys, we'll go ahead and get ready for this. It is going to be time for Better Than You. But will they live up to their name, or will they see the pain, the power of the flask? Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for your lowers. Who loses? Go home. Let's take it. Our beautiful caster. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, one more time. We are ready for the loser's semifinal. This is the best of three. And as Slack said, it's the loser's semifinal. So you lose this series, you're going home. Well, you're not really going anywhere, but you're going to be locked in as the fourth place, which still is some cash in your pocket. I feel like On Flask is the stronger team here, but better than you. Maybe they put it together. They made it this far to the finals. Anything can happen when all the chips are on the table. Anything can happen indeed. And I just have to say, starting out here, 
that if I can't cast someone called the Uwu Gang, I'm definitely at least happy that I get to cast a player named Duty. <laughs> yeah, it feels kind of funny saying uh, Duty in there. There was another name uh, I forget earlier, which uh, was trolling me out a little bit, but whatever the case. Ladies and gentlemen, we are into look at just classic Temple Garden. Look how beautiful this map is, as well as all this beautiful uh, hero armor. But we are under the Tree of Life over here, surrounded by the Piranha Koi Pond, as Willem is ready to murder. The question is, which target is it going to be? Waiting, biding his time on Flask. Have a couple of members that are dropping incredibly low. Off to the side. Can they get taken down? I can't believe they're still alive. Gordonis, oh. he's actually going to win is alive off the flask and then that means he can drop oh. back and get down Mio as well what an insane turn of events Willem bowing 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 I mean not only is he going to get those kills he's going to get the revives you just saw it there Willem already almost on his tier three Beat. That is ridiculous. Just letting those heavies fly. I mean, it felt like a desperation move, but those target swap heavies took them out so easily, and then the dodge attack to finally close out that fight. Willem just with the absolute clutch there. Woo! You love to see it. Now, better than you, what are you gonna do? You're down a couple of points early on. You recollect yourself. You're not controlling one of the, the, the main points A and C. Uh, they've got B, pretty classico, but it's been ignored by On Flask for now. So, with reinforcements, Pilker moves over into C. Mio wants to go ahead and peel for his ally, but in doing so, he just takes more damage. This doesn't look like better than you can even really connect. It's just massive damage coming out from Willem, and they, they're really ignoring him for the most part. Now Mio swings, Young Gravity dropping low. Mio, nice target swapping to go ahead and dodge back, keeps himself out of danger. Swings for Young Gravity, doesn't quite connect there. Willem finally getting low, but Willem able to take one. Cordonis scuffs down to Gothic Noir on the map. Willem gets his tier three feet unlocked as well. Can't believe it, this is insane. Better than you. Three heroes dead on the map. Can you make it four? Can you make it four? No, it's not gonna be four dead at the same time. But uh, Mio taking down Young Gravity. Of course, oh Mio eventually God. getting taken down by Willem and this is just absolutely insane as Willem picks up Young Crafty yeah. off the ground. It, it's it's possible that's the fastest tier four we've ever seen. Willem sitting already on tier four, just playing absolutely out of his mind. People think of JJ as the hero that dodges a lot, but they added those dodge cancels into the Jean Hu and just really just a lot of safe offense, especially up against the JJ there, playing so well as Willem with five and zero oh already. God, that's insane. Five and zero oh early on. Uh, I, I, I don't really know what you... Oh, look at Luke's raining fire arrows down on this bridge. That's interesting. Willem was like, yeah, just come across it. Did split up better than you. Um, but not a lot of devastating damage coming out here. Now, Duty, you're in the wrong place, buddy. Verdonis will throw out a nice zone there, trying to peel for his ally. But Duty, I, he almost... I felt like he was going to get out of there, but they don't control A. So there's nowhere to rotate out to heal to, and they almost are just going to stick around and just fight to their death no matter what happens. Willem, one more attack. He almost gets taken down there. Willem stays alive. Young Gravity takes down Duty. Willem takes down Gordonis. I mean, on Flask or on point. Yeah, using that Tier 3 and Tier 4 early. Very smart, I think, for him. Just like, hey, I got this this early. I might as well use it. You know, it's not necessarily something I need to close the game out with, especially because it's going to be up again when it's later on in the game. And on Flask, they've just maintained control of both of these points so well. There's just nowhere for the side of BTU to heal. Finally, they're able to all move out together and retake B. And I have to imagine, yeah, they're just going to death ball over to one of these points. No, actually splitting up. So deciding that they're going to try and take these 2v2s as their way to get back into the game. But if things go the way they've been going, Willem's just going to tear them apart on C. I have to imagine this is just going to go the same way. Yeah, Willem has just like turned himself into uh, the Temple Garden boss. Basically, uh, point C is a dungeon, and you're going to have to raid yourself over here, put on, put on a clinic if you're going to try and take this guy down, because this is his home point. Pilker getting pounded on here will uh, have his revenge triggered off, but you can see that on Flask was basically like, look, it doesn't matter if his revenge triggers off, just keep hitting the guy. <laughs> They're able to get the kill, and of course, who's going to take it? It's going to be Willem. He's going to get the execute, and this is just on Flask, marching their way in game one towards a just 
pounding of a victory. I don't think we've seen in a game plan executed this well all day. This is ridiculous. Just they have not let go of these points. You know, they picked this map early on for a reason. They believe their 2v2 to be stronger, and they are proving it fight after fight. Literally uh, zero objectives taken on the side of BTU. Only two takedowns is the highest, and Willem sitting up at the top of the board. 760 renown, 8 and 0. Oh, what a beast. That's just absolutely phenomenal. And it uh, looks like C, take it just for a second by Better Than You. Um, but at this point, they're put into breaking. Two heroes incredibly low. The awful, the worst time to be sitting on 5 HP. But Better Than You are doing it. And they're staying alive for a second. Ooh, a nice slip out to the side by Mio, who hasn't really got a lot of work done, unfortunately. Looks like Wardonis will be the first to fall. Duty is going to go down. There's Mio, and that's all she wrote here in match number one for uh, Better Than You. I'm gonna take a second for them to go ahead and chase down Pilker, but on the last, just, that was insane. They didn't even have time to maybe talk about the next game. You know, sometimes when you're in those breaking scenarios and you're 2v4 or something, you're like, all right, guys, just uh, anti-gank for a second. Let's talk about what we did wrong. No, they were decapitated so fast, they probably didn't even have time to talk about what they did wrong. Uh, so they're going to have to re regroup real hard going into game number two here. That was complete domination for On Flask. Yeah, totally. I don't think we didn't even have an uh, opportunity to bring in Vividnos for our in-game expert questions, but uh, there you have it. Look at this Willem, 11 and 0, plus taking in himself an objective. Uh, 9 and 2 for Young Gravity, Fusion at 8 and 1, Gothic Noir at 8 and 0. And it's it's insane that we have multiple players with over 8 kills, and it, and it, <laughs> it just it felt like we're watching Willem just destroy everyone by himself. Yeah, casually, Willem just has 800 more renown than the top player on BTU. I mean, I've I've seen that in matchmaking. I think that's definitely the first time I've seen that in uh, tournament play. That that is that's as best that, that's as best as you can perform. That's that's ridiculous. I guess BTU is uh, their their team name is directed at Twitch chat and the casters. They're, they're better than you, not better than on Flask. I mean, the, every player on BTU is definitely better than me. Uh, I'm regularly given the business in matchmaking, uh, <laughs> as one person in Twitch chat once said to me. But uh, BTU, man, I, I, I don't, I don't really know exactly what I would one thing I would point to that they need to do better. I mean, they just got picked apart the entire match. I think what they really needed to do, honestly, after the retake on B when they were all full health, they needed to death ball onto one of those groups of two so they could have ganked a little bit. They decided to try and break off into those twos, and that's how they were losing the game the whole time. So I think that was the first step. And maybe if they find themselves in a similar situation, that's the thing they need to change. Yeah, I mean, you're pretty creative. I feel like I could watch that game three times and still not come up with a way for them to try and uh, make that one competitive. But we're going into uh, our second map here in, in just a second. And, you know, they've had a, ch a second to you know, recollect themselves. Um, but, you know, I just don't know if it's going to happen, especially on Citadel Gate. Vivinas, tell us all about Citadel Gate and what we might expect here. Ooh, watching on Flash's performance there very much reminded me of being the opposite side of that in my matchmaking lobbies. Uh, not really much to take away from there apart from on Flask, uh, Willem played absolutely exceptional and I feel like BTU really needs to do something to suppress this player. When it comes to Citadel Gate, it will be a lot more about team fighting, alluding to what Sahinki said, probably death balling is maybe your best bet. Your 2v2 matchups aren't really up to par against on Flask and the, you know, the, the level of veterans that they have on that team. So hopefully BTU can claw back something in this game or maybe just let on Flash run away with it. Man, maybe maybe just let on Flask run away with it. Vivinaz, I'm glad you're not the team captain over here because that doesn't seem like a winning strategy. And talking about winning strategies, I think the number one strategy is get money, get paid. Look at this prize pool. This is delicious. $20,500 up for grabs here in the North American uh, Dominion Series Finals. First place, $10,000. Second place, $5,000. And we're trying to figure out right now who's going to be walking away with that $3,500 in their pocket. On Flask looking pretty good for that. But th I mean, this is really nice. So, Inky, this is a lot of money coming out over here. And, and it's great to see it here for the Dominion Series. 
Yeah, it's definitely nice to see some uh, some incentive for players to get into the competitive scene. You know, I think some of the uh, coolest players hang out in sort of the competitives, you know, because they, they all really support each other. You know, when you watch other esports, you know, a lot of these teams, they don't like to share their secrets and stuff, but these teams, they're regularly scrimming together. They're, at, you know, they have watch parties for when other teams are scrimming because, you know, it's really just a big friendly community of people that love this game and, and want to see it played at the highest level. So uh, I hope more people are incentivized when they see this prize pool to get in here and, uh, and try out competitive for honor. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I really hope some of our viewers are inspired today to maybe uh, take it up a notch, spend a little more time practicing and get into the next competitive event uh, for For Honor. And uh, let's go ahead and refocus here. Uh, points A, B and C respectively across the map. This is a wide open map. B, so influential. So Inky, as you talked about earlier, a lot of points to gain by holding B here. And eventually we will see some back capping. I don't know if BTU is going to have that chance though. Let's look early on. You got to take a decent team fight here, at least to the first engage if you're BTU. On flask, we're on point. And right now, we see Fusion on the edge of the fight. Moving in, almost taking down Mio, but thinking about target swapping. Swaps on light. Will he be able to connect with Mio over here? Young Gravity low off to the side. There you go. Fusion's going to take himself for Donis. Now moving back. It's Gothic Moore taking down Duty. Rip Duty. Pilker. He's low. He's got Willem out of stamina. Willem, he can just hang over here. The minions aren't doing too much damage to him. And with that, he can just go ahead and drop right back and heal on up. I have to imagine this is a call that just because they feel so confident, but normally this move from Willem wouldn't be so smart on Citadel Gate. Finds himself at half-life with all of these respawns coming in, but they did win that fight very convincingly. I just want to point out the clear communication that these guys have. You saw that one bash come in from Vayne and they must have called it out because as soon as the bash landed, three players turned onto Mio, took him from 100 down to about half-life. So that's just one of these reasons that the team fight is so good on the side of On Flask. On Flask doing work right now. It's Mio low, Gradonis is low as well, and... Fusion looks like he's gonna get chopped down as a nice heavy comes over the top. Pilker actually connecting, but guess what? It's Gothic Noir. He's here to play, and it should be a matter of time. After the guard break, wall splat, a little damage coming through. Gordonis, nice combo up uh, onto Gothic Noir, but it feels like just a matter of time before he's gonna get chunked down. Does get kicked from behind. That's gonna trigger off the revenge. Gordonis is like, oh, come on, man! Why would you do that? That's exactly what I just trolled my team out <laughs> These guys, they're good at For Honor, they're comedy as well. What a funny situation to be in. Gothic Noir back against the wall, tier three feet unlocked already. And he thought he was, Duty thought he was in a 1v1, but Gothic, uh, Fusion comes in like, nah, bud. Sorry, we're not playing honorably. We're playing for Keith, we're playing to win. Duty, little spinning roundhouse kick there. He's gonna be stunned up. Comes through with the top, Fusion. He's got the kill, another top that becomes through Pilker. You're standing your ground, there's not much you can do. Try to throw a zone or something. Oh my gosh, Fusion's just letting these tops fly. And now, man, better than you finding themselves in the exact same situation as last map. Nowhere to heal, however, it looks as though they're challenging the home point of On Flask here, and this is a little bit of a bigger map. So this might be a little bit more successful as far as the retake goes, especially because Gothic Noir finds himself so low right now. GB's gonna come through, land a little bit of damage onto Young Gravity, but already sitting over half revenge, so they're not gonna wanna touch him too many more times. Almost got the revenge now, and this is turning into a problem here as Willem has come back into support. Another member from On Flask joining the fight though, the Shinobi comes in, but that revenge is finally triggered off. And now, oh, Raider on Raider action, able to dodge that external heavy. Does land the guard break though, this is gonna be a throw, but really good job from Mio there to hold Young Gravity off from being able to close that kill out. And now On Flask is finding themselves behind a little bit. However, Vaynor coming in with the uh, respawn now. It's the kick onto Mio, and that is going to be a kill. It looks like Willem had revenge triggered off at the back side of the fight. Vaynor holding duty back out, and now he's going to be forced to use that run and retreat. Not able to pursue his Vaynor because of the fact that he was out of stamina. Woo! Just need to take a breath there. Fusion, speaking of out of stamina, is out of stamina as he comes into our screen, but it's Pilker who doesn't have the HP. It's Pilker who's getting murdered here. Fusion stuck up against the wall by Gordonis. You know, Gordonis is one of the guys that I feel is 
I, you know, well, I guess there's not a lot of impact coming out of BTU, but I just felt like this, uh, this Raider hasn't been landing as much as you'd like to see out of him. Willem comes in as long as long along with Neo and Gotham Noir showing up to the party as well. But you see these fights are just really so long and extended. And at the same time, On Flask has control over everything else on the map. So it's just like, yeah, BTU, you can try and win these fights, but they're not even winning these fights that they're fully committing to. Yeah, Willem getting guard broken on the backside of the fight. Van Noor finding himself low as well. Ooh, Jenna actually missed the bow and gonna get guard broken for it. Gordonis is gonna close out the kill on Willem and now finally, the side of better than you is getting a little bit of footing here, but that tier four is gonna come out onto Young Gravity, get some shields and now gonna be fighting. Duty the Heavy comes through. He just throws it, committing to it. Nice cancel there into the light. Tries to roll out of the fight, but now he's finding himself out of stamina, doing some good job stalling for Vayne Noir, who's trying to just Naruto run his way out. Going around the pillars, just trying to stall as much as he can. Oh, he almost got that ledge there. Good job from Duty, making sure that couldn't happen. Gonna get the long execute. And it was Fusion coming in, trying to join the fight, but ultimately held off of the point by Pilker. Great job there to make sure that they couldn't come in and, and keep on reinforcing this fight. On Flask are just marching their way forward slowly but surely, and they know that extra $1,500 is coming their way, which is really nice to think that you're just, you know, you're already dominating this victory. All you got to do is close it out, and it's money in your pocket. Great light parry there from Fusion in this 1v1 against Mio. I have to wonder why he's not getting back up there, because it looked like one of his teammates is there on the point. Nice parry there from Mio, and that is going to be a kill. I guess uh, they, they just trusted Mio to finish that fight. He's going to get the long execute, but oh no, the Raider is here. We just went away from it, but I think that, yeah, Young Gravity was able to kill Mio there during that long execution. Now Gordon is finding himself get low. Young Gravity gets two. It's a disaster. Pilker finding himself on the outside of the fight is going to trigger that, uh, that trap there and try and push in onto the home point of BTU. Great job there from Young Gravity. Pilker doing the best to stick these lights out, but ultimately, oh, Young Gravity is going to get the parry, and now the rest of On Flask is flooding in. Yeah, On Flask is going to be flooding in, but uh, yeah, I got to say, BTU, the last two minutes, three minutes of uh, this match here has been about the best I've seen them play all day, and I don't know if it's because On Flask has realized that they're this close to victory and they can just kind of slow roll it. Um, my guess is that's what it is, but definitely BTU taking advantage of the small mistakes and small missteps to go ahead and pull themselves uh, within 300 points here. On Flask about to put BTU into breaking. There's one hero down for better than you. And what does Willem want to do? Just he's been playing so studly today. Has these fire arrows ready to fire. Where will they come down? BTU Mio getting sliced up. This B lane, so much emphasis on it. On Flask. 20 points, 10 points away from putting BTU into breaking. Four seconds on the respawn. BTU almost, they're going to lose another one right now as they get put into breaking. Oh, very unfortunate. They will not be having that respawn. And now on Flask, just continue walking forward like the Terminator. BTU know that their time is up. Two heroes down. It is a two versus four. And better than you's fate has been sealed. It's just a matter of style and time before On Flask is going to close this out. Yeah, pushing into the point. I believe it was Vaynor coming in from the backside. is going to drop this nail bomb, and that should be all she wrote. On Flask looking so strong, and honestly, this is just a testament to how good TKS is because, you know, they, while the series was close, TKS is able to beat these guys, and look how far the space is between Better Than You and On Flask. Getting that triangle execution there, a little bit of disrespect. That is going to be it. BTU is knocked out, and it is on Flask that has secured at least third place. Fantastic. Thank you so much, gentlemen. A hell of a game that we see here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the scoreboard. Oh, my goodness gracious. Better than you, our first uh, team eliminated here in North America as On Flask survive, move on. Uh, that first game was quite quick. Uh, the uh, little bit more of a fighting game too there, but uh, oh boy, Young Gravity with the level 70. Oy, that's uh, that's a hard thing to stand up against, my friends. So uh, so Hinky, 
looking pretty solid on that game as we will have to say to our friends there from on flask but uh anyway uh you would have still a very sad story a little bit for uh, uh better than you um any closing thoughts for your boys yeah i would change the u to the and i i feel like it would make a little more sense thematically um work on uh you know some of this team fighting some of this individual uh skills and mechanics but yeah they just felt a little outclassed today not gonna lie mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so hinky uh what are you expected from on flash did you think it'd be that easy uh you know it's tough to say when when your first opponent is black jackals if black jackals are just that good or if there is really that much of a skill gap and i think on flask answered it there was that much of a skill gap better than you you know it's a, a hard spot for them to be in not having their lcp roster but that's the way it goes sometimes uh not able to pull it together last minute but uh good on them for showing up and, and putting on a good show in the tournament ultimately didn't go their way but hopefully we'll see them back next time Yep, yep. Hope to see them back once more. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the highlights from Better Than You and from Unclass. So, Hickey, why don't you walk us through this? Yeah, this was perhaps the most dominant game we've seen all day. It was on Flask taking point A and point C and never giving it up. Willem, I think, had one of the fastest tier fours I've ever seen, and they just snowballed their victory from there. Uh, I think there was a little bit of a misstep. I called it out between matches where BTU could have gone for a death ball strategy to try and retake C, but instead opted to go into those 2v2s that they'd been losing all game. And uh, wow, on Flask just out Flask better than you. It was absolute destruction in game number one and game number two was not much different. Citadel Gate, we don't usually expect to see these double home point captures just because the map is so large and reinforcing your enemy's home point isn't usually much of an option unless you're absolutely stomping, but it was on Flask holding onto these home points for quite some time, getting a big point lead. BTU showed up a little bit more in this game. You know, Gordanus had some good plays. Uh, ultimately though, on Flask, just, just absolutely outplaying BTU here. And this is the ending moments with that nail bomb. Closing things out, moving them on to that loser spot. Ouch. All right. Well, let's go ahead and, and update you on our bracket here. As we have been discussing, better than you will be seen again as they are taken out of our tournament here. And we are moving on soon to the winner's final. We're going to find out who's going to be joining on Flask in that lowers. But more importantly, who are first team in the grand finals of the last Dominion series, the final event here as well for this season. Ah, very exciting to see who's going to make it in this team of, I mean, Black Jackals just looking so strong. Team killing service looking absolutely stellar. So we'll see who will be taking it in this very important match. Uh, we, we just, you did say that you thought maybe uh, we were seeing a Black Jackals better than you last time as potentially uh, our finals. But this, this might be a uh, pre-final uh, preview right here, my friends. Black Jackals and Team Killing Service looking pretty strong. Yeah, I think we're about to see just how close these teams are right now because we saw that TKS and On Flask were very evenly matched. So seeing TKS versus Black Jackals, we're really going to be able to get a, a barometer reading for just how far out ahead Black Jackals may be or if everyone's just about the same. So if this series is close, then honestly, it could go any way. One of these three teams can win, which is for us, the viewers, the most exciting outcome. But obviously, if Black Jackals just steamroll team killing service, then it might just see it be a battle for second place at that point. Also, Hinky, I can just let you know right now it is going to be a close matchup, so you can just you know, put those worries to rest. Just enjoy yourself. Do some casting. It's going to be great. I am. Damn. All right. I'm going to write that one down, my friends. I'm hype as hell. If you're wrong, I'm going to let you have it so badly on this panel. You are going to hope absolutely it, regret it. All right. All right. <laughs> so, let's go ahead. We had a fantastic opportunity to catch up with some of our players uh, uh, earlier this week, my friends. And uh, we're going to be going up to that very soon as we will give you a little insight. So, Hinky, I believe you got to meet with Egg earlier this week. So uh, let's take a listen. 
Yo, Egg, what's going on, dude? Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're just going to have a quick conversation about the uh, the major here and more so about you. We really want to get to know you as one of our main competitors here. And speaking of competition, the first question I want to ask you is, you know, a lot of people play For Honor casually. What was it that made you, Egg, want to take this to the next level and get into the actual competitive scene? It's a good question. It's a uh, question of that or the answer to that, sorry, is actually pretty simple. It's my friends all the time. Anything involving competition, we like to better ourselves and we fight each other a lot. So it started off as onesies <laughs> and then we noticed that twosies were getting popular. So we did more twosies. That was Mo and, Mo and I. And then when foursies really started popping off, that's when we joined that side. You know, we started doing a lot of scrims and for glory. And yeah, from there just took off, just trying to better ourselves, get better than everyone else, pretty much. Gotcha. So was, yeah. was eSports ever like a big goal of yours or was it just like you love For Honor and this was kind of like the next step of your love for the game? No, this was the first game like multiplayer based, I guess you could say that, that uh, I wanted to go competitive. And before this, it was really just like Fallout New Vegas and Skyrim, like any Bethesda oh, damn, that's crazy. RPG games. Yeah, I only ever played RPGs. Wow. But, yeah. So going from RPGs to uh, competitive For Honor, competing at a... A game that's really technical must have been quite a shift. Oh yeah, absolutely. I was only just used to left-clicking, killing death claws, killing super <laughs> mutants, whatever it was. That's all I did. So I know you and Mo both uh, competed in the first major, but Black Jackals, they were kind of an unknown going into major number three. Uh, it seems like a lot of guys are putting you as their favorite to win. Do you prefer it when you were kind of more unknown, or, or is it kind of nice being at the top? To be honest, I'm kind of indifferent about it because Mo and I have been playing for so long, uh, as well as um, our other players, well, not really, not so much Speg. He kind of came in a little bit er uh, later. Mm -hmm. But uh, we just play as friends pretty much and play as best as we can. Our synergy is really good, so we just play normally. So Black Jackals, as we just talked about, there, you guys are kind of considered uh, to be at the top, but if there's any team that's really scaring you guys or a team that you think might be tough to beat who you think that's going to be as of now lately we've been scrimming a good amount because i came back from a little hiatus it would be btu they've taken mm -hmm. the most maps off of us still pretty much every scrim session we have played but they've gotten very close sometimes and into double breaking situations so that's btu i'd say so when Black Jackals wins the tournament. Do you have uh, any plans for the money? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm actually working right now at a, uh, a hospital as a physical therapist aide, and that's what I want to do as my career. So I'd put that into PT school, or that would nice. go to that. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, so uh, the last okay. question I've got prepared is what are your wishes for things to add or change when and if, let's just say when, uh, they make a For Honor too. What I would like to see added is definitely warriors from different cultures, which I know they're doing mm. right now, but they can definitely expand on that in the future. So Yeah, for sure. Yeah, more heroes, different cultures. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much, Egg, for joining us. I appreciate it, and uh, best of luck to you and Black Jackals in the tournament. Thank you for having me, so thank you. Hello. That was one of the better interviews I've ever seen. Welcome to Winner's Finals, by the way. It is time to find out who's going to the Grand Finals and who will be facing off in the lowers. Don't forget, my friends, it's almost time for you to start voting, and we will see those votes very soon. So uh, hold on to those votes for now. I'm just, there it is. That is exclamation point BLJ or exclamation point TKS for Team Killing Service. Boys! I love Egg. I know. I, I I don't know what to say. I, I'm still starstruck by the interview. What a humble, kind boy. What a nice lad. I like that Egg character, you know? Uh, played RPGs and started playing competitive For Honor. A uh, uh, humble boy. Like him very much. I, a little biased now, I have to say. I'm all about that Egg <laughs> in this trying time. Humanist, uh, uh, did he win you over as well, or are you still a scorpion main here? No, I, I just can't trust physical therapists. Uh, it's something about that. Stuff, okay. So, uh, no, <laughs> it's just scary. He seems like a, a super nice dude. 
uh, of course, and, and to see that, you know, he may even have a career as like an esports physical therapist. You know, that's that's the thing. Hey. There's a little niche there moving forward. Um, but a super nice guy. Both of these teams, you know, I'll be happy if either one of them take it. Black Jackals look great. I'm I'm still favoring TKS though. Just kind of a fan of TKS. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, All that right. was well, really so interesting. The maps, my friend. So Hinky, the maps. Please, this is more interesting than anything you could have ever thought of. What do you? What interests you from this uh, map draft? Uh, well, Black Jackals picking Overwatch here. We've seen the teams really kind of all devote three to C starting out. So uh, we'll see if if they want to take an advantage in those early team fights. And of course, TKS in the winners finals, they want to have a comfort pick as their first pick. They pick Harbor. It's been their best map for basically the entirety of the Dominion series, so not surprised to see that in map number two. And then Sanctuary Bit Bridge, Black Jackal, once again, it seems like favoring themselves in these team fights. And if it comes to it, they want to just show it and hammer it home in that game number three. Yeah, indeed. I like to see Overwatch as the first map in this series. Let's check if Vivinaz is still awake. He can tell us all about how we might see this play out. Look. I know Black Jackals probably favor themselves on Overwatch, but we saw apart from, let's say, the start of the first game for TKS, we saw a stellar performance when it came to these split map setups. And Overwatch, you do expect this a lot, especially in the initial phase. You'll see a split between C and B, and hopefully, if this can play to TKS's favor, this will really help me in my prediction. Look, please, I really need this. I am begging you, TKS, don't let me down. <laughs> Well, as uh, Vivid uh, literally begs anyone to get one of his uh, predictions right on this entirety of the series, we're going to be uh, going in real soon. Here we have our results from the voting, my friends. Black Jackals leading ahead, very strong. These guys are feeling the egg. They're feeling the omelet. But Team Killing Service, not the biggest discrepancy we've ever seen, actually. Uh, with the team so heavily favored as Black Jackals, uh, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty okay number, I'd say, Humanist. Yeah, you know, honestly, I'm just daydreaming about how cool an in-person live finals would have been in Vegas. But now we'll snap back to it. And I just got to say, they don't know what they're talking about. Team Killing Service is going to take this. This should be 90 to 10. Chat, you will Jesus. Oh. Okay, okay. Uh, you daydreaming of uh, Team Killing Service as well coming through here, so we can... I think if Team K, uh, TKS wants to win this one, they really have to set the tone in game number one here. You know, Overwatch is one of these maps that while it does start out kind of team fight heavy, sort of breaks down as the map plays out into these 2v2 scenarios a lot of the time. So theoretically, that favors TKS's play style. If they win this first map going into Harbor, I have to imagine they might feel pretty strong closing out in the 2-0. Uh, we'll have to see how this game plays out, but I think this first game is really going to set the tone for the entire series. All right, gentlemen. Well, I hope you're excited to be some of the only people in the world that enjoy Overwatch Esports as our first map will be Overwatch here. Black Jackals heading up versus, you know them, you love them, Team Killing Service. Let's get into this game. Let's see if the egg can be cracked and let's see if some killing service actually occurs. Take it away. About to scramble some eggs up in here. TKS up against the black jackals and ladies and gentlemen this is going to be a spicy one Kalakis on this warlord uh we've seen it we've seen it time and again and it has really been impactful yeah i'm definitely looking to Kalakis to come out strong here he was shaky starting the last series but honestly it's hard to not be shaky when in the first initial team fight two of your teammates get completely destroyed and ledged in the first like 30 seconds of the game so uh, no opportunities for that here we'll see if we can have Cluckies come out strong it looks like they put him on middle so interesting to see uh, that they set him up in that one view. nice Moe's got the easy cape on you'd love to see it and uh, I'd love to see this be a bloodbath coming down to a 1v1 typically not what we see but early on both teams playing this Nice and slow, patient. It's Rippy who's taken a lot of damage. Not really great if you're the Shinobi, you'd like to dance around. Nice dodge out to the side there. He wants to isolate someone, he wants to draw them apart. Looks like Jaku saw taking down We Plucky's falling as well, TKS getting mowed down a little bit, but standing on your ground. Rippy needs to continue to hold on here. 
and hopefully at least take one kill taking down Kusan Mago. But he's actually going to get the hug. That's revenge procked off. Revenge should give Rippy enough time to just slice and dice, just throw some attacks, but the parry's there. Can he get it? He's got his tier one feet unlocked. If he can get it, oh yeah, he's got a little bit of heal off the back of it. Scorpion getting kill as well. TKS, who were the first two heroes dropped on the map, take the C fight, and that's incredibly important. I want to highlight the play of Scorpion there. He used to do this quite a bit as Nobushi, but doing just as good of a job here on the JJ. He's very good at isolating heroes in the middle of a fight. We saw Mo completely isolated back out of the fight. You saw Kusada Mago panicking a little bit, trying to make sure he could come and back him up because you don't want JJ you know, to be on the very edge and zoned out. You want him to be in the middle of the fight with these big unblockables. So really well done from Scorpion to make sure that Mo couldn't have as much of an impact as they needed. And that's ultimately why they were able to make that comeback. Speaking of Mo, Mo isolated on the edge of the fight by Clucky, who's just headbanging over here. Give him the headbutt. That's going to be the guard break into the top. Mo looking to, to target swap and to potentially apply some damage, but look at all these minions around. This is so hard to try and get anything done. Mo out of stamina, ledged up against the side there, and Scorpion actually going to be the one to take the kill. Scorpion standing his ground for his team and playing with no fear as Rippy takes down Kusada Mago, and this is uh, approximately 200 point lead here in the first two and a half minutes of this one. Really well played from Clucky's there, isolating Mo once again. I think this must be something that TKS has targeted. Like, hey, Mo's been having a lot of effect in these team fights, especially earlier on today. Let's make sure that we can isolate him and, and minimize his effect. I uh, also want to shout out on the side of Black Jackals, the Shinobi player. Interesting use of Kiai there to make sure that he could just back out and go on to A so that they didn't lose too much. Definitely a veteran. Watch uh, Rippy as he gets on to Jafu here. A lot of damage coming out, Rippy. CGB back the other way. He'll go ahead and get a little storming tap, but it's not enough. This this Shinobi is ready to deal damage. And Jafu wants to peel for his teammate, so he gets back in there trying to get around some minions. Or there's really nothing that he can do. I think you have to accept your fate, except for unless you get an ally to come up, like Willen finds Rippy in a 1v1 off to the side. And if there's going to be anybody to take down Rippy, it's going to be Willen. Willen doing a great job making sure that Rippy couldn't get away to heal on C. Lucky's getting an execution himself, though, but he's going to get pulled down by the Sickle Rain. This should be a kill on him. Yes, excellently executed there on the side of Black Jackals between Will Lin and Mo. Now Scorpion's going to find himself in a 1v2 scenario here up against the, uh, the gank of the Shinobi gets hit by the Sickle Rain. This might just be 100 to zero. No, they mess it up a little bit. I don't, I'm not sure why he went for the zone there. Maybe finding himself low on stamina was Mo. And now the reinforcements are going to come in. Yeah, or it possibly he might have seen Rippy coming down. Either way, yeah, it looked like they might get 100 to zero. And Scorpion does get caught out in 50 to zero there as he wasn't able to get any defense off. And with that, it leaves Rippy in a situation where he's slightly outnumbered, although his allies have made the rotate over. There, and this is the Will Lin we know and love, getting these executes off on the Shinobi and moving forward here. He's going to continue to apply pressure so fast, so agile in and around these fights. Cluckies, he's going to go ahead and dodge back. Throws Will Lin up against the wall. He's out of stamina. It'll just take a second to go ahead and re regroup himself. Jafu coming down the stairs as well to go ahead and peel. And this is, uh, you know, Wheat playing a little bit quietly. Needs to have an impact on this Raider. We'll see if that's going to happen as Will Lins over here has his eyes on him. We're actually Will in. He wants Kalecki's. I don't know what's going to happen. Jafu finally getting his stamina back up. Wheat stamina as well, but with the guard break, that'll be the kill. That'll be the execute. There it goes. You hit, buddy. Scorpion coming into the fight late now, and this is this is a very important life here with two teammates dead on the side of TKS. Hicks is going to come through, confirming the heavy, confirming another heavy. He had revenge for a second there, and now Rippy just coming in trying to hold on to this point. Points are relatively even, but Black Jackals have come back very, very strong here, maintaining control of A this entire time, and now they're going to be executing this double hug gank here, I have to imagine. No, able to get out of it is Rippy. Trying to stay alive here. This is extremely important. Oh, Lands the parry. Well done. And now Clucky's coming in, reinforcing from behind. Oh. Excellent. Gonna actually dodge the kick. So Rippy finding himself in trouble up against the wall with Mo. Clucky's doing go. his best to peel for him, but I have to imagine Rippy's gonna find himself in a world of hurt right now as he's trying to get off of the point. 
Glockies <laughs> is just trying to help his buddy out, but he's just getting shredded over here. I did see that picture in picture, E Star's uh, production. That was really a, a beautiful thing. You love to see it. As we say it, Rippy gets chopped down by Mo. Scorpion has rejoined the party, and with the guard break, they'll be able to give him a couple of top heavies, and he's down to 30% health. Make that 5% health. Really not where Scorpion wants to be. He wants to be just, you know, living through these fights, trying to be able to do something for his allies, and he absolutely does nothing in this engage. He is executed off, and Black Jackals go from being down to being up by nearly 300 points, and they're about to put TKS into breaking right here, right now. It was such a prolonged fight on C, and for about half of it, TKS had control of B, but ultimately, inside of Black Jackals, they, they took control of B back, and then they went back to C repeatedly over and over again, finally winning that fight, and the entire time, TKS was basically earning no points, which is why you see such a big point lead on Black Jackals after they finally closed the fight. Black Jackals, they've got TKS in breaking. This is going to be the team fight to define this match right here. Possibly beginning to define who's going to be winning the finals overall. But let's see. We're moving in here. Black Jackals have lost one TKS. They remain alive for the time being. They have to win this fight. They have to win this fight and then continue to stay alive. Maybe grab a point that they can heal up on. Bucky's looking to go ahead and get some damage down from above, but it's Will Lin, the master of disaster, who, oh, they said Rippy's isolated. Get over here, Will Lin. Destroy this man. Bucky's looking to get the ledge, but he's not quite going to get it. He does get back, avoid the, the kick there, but moving in is Will Lin, who's going to get the execute off. That's TKS down two versus four in breaking. And there's just don't see a way back for them in this one. That was an incredibly important heal as it looked as though Willen was going to get ledged there. And then TKS might have been able to take back point C, ultimately unbreak. Uh, but the peel came through, made sure Willen didn't go down. And now just Black Jackals taking game number one despite such an early lead from TKS. Yeah, uh, like you said, you know, this is the end of the game. They know that they're not going to win this. Are they talking to each other? Are they are they talking about what went wrong, what they can do potentially in map number two? Whatever the case is, this is going to be game number one going over to Black Jackals in this winner's final best of three series. TKS down one will regroup. And, uh, Black Jackals, they're, they're a strong team. They could have had to lead the entire game. They did drop back a little bit, but they play tight, keep it together, and able to walk away with it here in game number one. Yeah, man. Well, Lynn, 11-0 on the Shinobi, was playing so well the entire time. Mo was silenced early on in the game, but ultimately, as soon as it reached the mid-game, came back incredibly strong. It was just Team Killing Service doing their best to hold on to point C the entire game, but ultimately, they were just giving up the rest of the map. I have to imagine that's where they went wrong. Uh, I think if you're TKS, you really want to talk about your early successes going into map number two. You know, that's not necessarily the one they had to win. That was Black Jackal's pick. Uh, so Harbor, this is the one that they are very confident on. And if TKS can win anywhere, it's on the next map. Black Jackals, they take their own map. Now it's TKS on Harbor, you say. And um, I, I don't know, man. I, if I'm TKS, I'm sweating a little bit right now. I think they're sweating, but what you have to do, I think, going into a game number two after a loss like that is just talk about what you did right, you know? Uh, talking about what you did wrong is important too, but I think it's very easy to get down on yourselves in these high pressure situations. I think it's very important to talk about, hey, this is what we were doing right, more of this, you know, maybe here's where we slipped up a little bit. Maybe we triggered off revenge a few times that we we didn't need to, making that fight on C last a little longer. Uh, but our early ganks were really good. Our early team fight was really good. Scorpion, keep up that isolation on Mo, and uh, let's get back into it on Harbor. Harbor is our second map of this series. Of course, TKS are on the back foot here, trying to look for a win to progress to the grand finals, or even have a chance to progress to the grand finals at this stage. Um, Black Jackals have been a strong performer, especially in these 2v2 setups. So it'll be interesting to see how they fare up on Harbor against TKS, who have been notorious to be very good on this map. Notoriously good on this map. I've said it before, if you guys are just joining, Harbor is definitely one of the most fun maps 
in the entire map pool. There's just so many ways to get around the map. It's it's interesting. Yeah, it, lo it looks as though we lost humanists there for a second, but uh, going into harbor, you know, we, we see TKS, they really like this 2v2 split. We've also seen this map played differently though. It's possible that Black Jackals, knowing that they have the stronger team fight, are gonna wanna force maybe a three-man rotation onto C. It's gonna be interesting to see exactly how this game starts. Kicking things off here, game number two of our winner's finals. And this is very interesting. Yeah, we do see a three-man rotation in onto the C point from Black Jackals, the 2v2 that we predicted on the side of TKS. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this fight plays out. It looks like TKS is deciding that they want to rotate in, but Black Jackal's just matching them move for move. Let's go, baby. This is what it's all about. And we're going to be fighting over on B. Not a lot of minions that you got to deal with here, and they're going to be fighting on the edge. To start things off, it's Will Lin, one of the most important characters for Black Jackal's. And he's taking a lot of chunk damage. Mo has his back to some minions, maybe thinking about dropping back for a heal or repositioning to take down Wheat. Wheat, you can't allow him to connect like this. Wheat shoved back down the ramp. It's Cluck, he's moving forward to Clucky's peel. Or who do you want? You want Will Lin? <laughs> it's like crazy because you get onto Will Lin and then he, he dashes back 20 meters. You have to immediately just go ahead and retarget. Will Lin with his ally down. We'll be going 1v1 with Wheat. doing such a good job of avoiding the damage there and and they're just deciding to back him off light parry on the cluckies the heavy's gonna come through but that's not gonna be enough light parry right back at you cluckies is going to get the kill here on will in unless someone comes in and uh, disrupts this execution but kusada mago is busy here fighting up against scorpion and rippy rippy full health but taking a little top damage from mo mo looking for the guard break but it's gonna be countered off it's Rippy that wants to get do a little damage on a Kasada Mago who is focused on his ally. Uh, Clucky's not really able to confirm any damage, potentially can actually, you know, I'd love to see it going the other way where you have Clucky's trying to peel as Rippy's the one getting damage off, but it's it's a little awkward here as Rippy trying to do some peeling for Clucky's and both low health. Uh, I'd love to be a fly in the wall in their room right now, just listening to exactly what they're saying. Oh, a nice dodge on the headbutt, but he will be caught. Kasada Mago closing that one out. Black Jackals controlling C, controlling B, and thus far controlling the series. Yeah, I have to question the rotation there from Clucky's. You know, they won that fight in middle, and I understand why he wanted to get onto C point, but Mo had full health, and they never retook B. So this entire time, it has been TKS losing out on points to Black Jackals, who have just been controlling middle and C this entire time. We're seeing exactly why teams tend to prioritize that C point, because of the fact that you can get such a big point in there. Well, C being the focal point, but of course you're occasionally going to find yourself fighting over A, and that's where TKS find themselves right now. It's Cluckies and Scorpion. Scorpion, quiet in the series thus far. And the question is, is it Black ja Jackals who have told him to be quiet or is it him just not having that connection just yet rippy doing a little ninja moves over here trying to just get the kick on kasada maga who is currently out of stamina clucky's up against the wall kasada mago dropping down low scorpion incredibly low but he just keeps throwing blows mo maybe gonna go down to scorpion goes down to mo Yeah, it looked like Scorpion wanted that big external, but he kept on getting interrupted by lights, unfortunately. You know, he doesn't have armor on those unblockable heavies, so, uh, I don't believe so. Uh, ultimately not able to close out that fight, and Black Jackals uh, still prolonging this fight onto A as Scorpion is now trying to flood back into the point. It looks like Wheat was able to close things out for Team TKS. So at the very least, holding on to point A, and now you see with point B, they have even things out, but this could be easily flipped. The hard point leads still slightly in favor of Black Jackals. How dare you, Sohinki? TKS are having the hardest point lead of their life right now. I'm just kidding. It is B. It's Will Lin. He's respawned. He's back out on the Cluckies and immediately just dishing out massive damage. 
Will Lynn, elusive, connecting onto Clucky's here. Clucky's guard broken up. He's vulnerable. He's taken a lot of damage down below 50% health with the backflip. Will Lynn able to reposition, regroup himself. Looks like they want Scorpion, but Scorpion's going to go ahead and draw back. Nice job between Clucky's and Scorpion. Just uh, kind of dodging out this damage back and forth, repositioning and juggling that damage. Look at the one-two over the top, and they got him. They connected onto Will Lynn, and it looks like he'll try to get the execution, but that is stalled off by Jafu. Jafu is probably going to pay for this with his life, but at least he did stall out that execution. And this entire time, they've been boosting A, so TKS, coming back here, you know, this was kind of how Black Jackals took the first game, making sure that they're kind of keeping the points in mind in the midst of all this intense fighting. And is TKS right now really making sure they're boosting A, they have control of B, and they are back into the lead. <laughs> Black Jackals sitting down on C, just looking at the fish jumping, and why not? It's pretty beautiful. Um, it, you can see and take this high point over this harbor map. Shout out to these map designers. Just once again, I'm going to say it. I love it. It's such a beautiful game. Wheat, 60% health. He's going to swing for the fences. Kusatamagu will instantly get his stamina recovered there as he takes down Clucky's B. It's getting messy. Mo comes over the top with a heavy. He's going to throw over the top again, but predicted. I thought the parry was there. It's not going to be happening today. And Mo able to take such an important kill with less than 100 point lead towards TKS. A contested. C in favor of Black Jackals, and it looks like Black Jackals are going to be taking point B here as well as Scorpion Falls. Scorpion Falls, and, and you heard Vaynor in the initial audio talking about how unreactable that Raider offense is with basically, you know, no revenge on him and one bit of life. There's not much that Scorpion can do in that situation. So ultimately falling down, uh, looks as though someone jumped down from the top there to, to not have to respawn, uh, but Mo. Now moving in onto the C point, heavily contested by TKS. Now this is a very, very important fight as we look up at the points. Everything basically even, even with Black Jackals controlling B. So if TKS is able to take this fight, this is going to be them taking a stranglehold of the game. But just as I say that, Rippy comes out uh, or gets absolutely zoned out of the fight by Mo, who's going to get that execution, wow. and his Black Jackals taking a very convincing victory. Yeah, I mean. Ultimately, uh, Black Jackals looked so good in game one. A lot of people think they're the favorite overall for these finals. That was in favor of Team Killing Service in a three versus three, and they just got outplayed. Um, but uh, quick, as quickly as they get outplayed, they regroup, have B, contest on A, and they very well could tie up this series. But Black Jackals, my goodness, I love the way they're approaching these fights, potentially making a new fan over here. Rippy, Dippy, do you cannot afford to go down like you did in the last fight so quickly. Will in, nice parry off. He's trying to get on to Wheat, who's pinned up against the wall, but a nice dodge out by Wheat on the side, continually buying time. Will in will eventually be able to get the kill, but Rippy, he wants on to Will in. Will in will reposition out of the way. You got to deal with this Raider if you want to get over to the Shobi. It's not going to happen. Mo, one over the top. Mo takes Scorpion. Mo takes Rippy down. Black Jackals take the fight. It looks like this is it. They're going to be able to shove Cluckies or get the kill. Whoa! Black Jackals, they take A, C, and B when it mattered most. And ladies and gentlemen, this looks like Black Jackals is about to close Team Killing Service out in style. I don't know who made the call, but man, that was such a fast rotation by the entirety of Black Jackals onto the A point. Noticing that TKS was low. Worst possible timing to get ledged there, unfortunately, for Clucky. He's going to find himself out of the rest of this fight. It was TKS, though, uh, that was able to take back B. They are in a position where if someone's able to get peeled out of the fight, they might be able to unbreak on A. You know, perhaps Rippy might go and try to make that play, but it looks as though he's just going to stay here and attempt to make this last stand. Kusatamago finds himself incredibly low. This could be the fight that they're looking for. Rippy zoned out of the fight now. Going to get guard broken out of that double dash. But unfortunately, Scorpion, the last one left here, is ultimately going to go down, and that is Black Jackals taking a convincing 2-0. TKS had moments where they shined in this series, but ultimately did not win a game. Black Jackals moving on to your grand finals. Fantastic. Black Jackals absolutely dominating there. And uh, whew, that was uh, that was something up 2 and 12 on Mo there. Goodness gracious. Oy, oy, oy. 12 takedowns, 2 deaths. Oh, 
what do you do against that guy? <laughs> I mean, well, there, there was a little bit of a question here. You know, team killing service. How much of a fight are they going to be able to put up? Uh, will we see them? They look absolutely great, but uh, Black Jackals is, I mean, I think you said it before the series, so Hinky, we're going to find out if these guys are just untouchable and it's a fight for second, or if there's any hope for somebody to take them down. Uh, that hope is diminishing, my friend. That was an absolute shuddering victory coming out for the Black Jackals. I, I got the chills here, Mr. Humanist. How you feeling on that one? That was a, ooh, a scary, scary yeah. thing we just witnessed. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, Black Jackals, they just look so dominant. And there there were times where, you know, TKS were able to, it felt like, hey, you continue doing this, you might have a chance to win this game, but immediately just ripped back and taken from them. And, uh, you know, credit to Mo, he's, he's playing well. He had the most kills there, the most renown on his team. But once again, it's Will Lin that's standing out for me. Uh, he, with nine kills, it's like the team's... He's getting so much done that you have to you have to constantly worry about what he's doing, where he is, that the rest of his team can pretty much just do what they want. I'm a simple man, you know. I look at kill, death, that's all that matter to me. Object or uh, you know, objectives no matter to me. Play game no matter to me. How about you, so Hinky? Uh what were you thinking about that one? And uh, after that we'll walk you through on uh, the replay. It looked like TKS had an idea of what they wanted to do early on on Overwatch. We're going to be taking a look right here. They had some success when they were able to zone Mo out of these fights. You saw exactly what can happen when you just let Mo run rampant. He goes 12-2 and two and absolutely demolishes. So understandable why they targeted this player specifically to try and make sure he couldn't have an impact. And they had success early on. But ultimately, as soon as the fights kind of broke down a little bit, this C fight lasted forever. And it was Black Jackals making sure that they were paying attention to the point lead, making sure they had control of A and B the entire time. So when this fight on C ultimately went their way, it was really hard for the side of TKS to get back into the game just because they were so far behind in points. Game number two, this was TKS's comfort pick on Harbor. And once again, early on, they were looking pretty strong here. But I mean, what do you even say? Black Jackals, like every time you think that they might be down, they make these really crazy calls that like the rotations come in so fast. It was the end of the game specifically, I remember, that the points were pretty even, but it was two players pretty low on the side of A, on the side of TKS, and then all of a sudden, the entirety of Black Jackal's team is just there. They force the breaking with Clucky's off of the ledge. He's not even able to join the breaking fight. And you're seeing that right here. The kick off from Will Lin, not even bothering to parry that heavy. <laughs> And that is going to do it. Black Jackals moving on to your grand finals. Well played. Woo! Black Jackals so dominant in both of their series here today. They look like the team to beat. But we'll need to find out who can possibly stand up to these Goliaths of For Honor in our lower bracket final. It's going to be Team Killing Service versus On Flask. Two teams that we have seen do exceptionally well and we'll have to see how they now fare again. And we've seen this before. Team Killing Service pulled out that one, but it was one of our closer matches here. Uh, on Flask, uh, now we'll have to see if they can survive and thrive. Uh, no Warlord this time, though. So uh, maybe everything will be okay. Whoa, what do I know? Could be anything, gentlemen. Very frightening. Anyway, we asked people... What was the toughest challenge that they might be able to face here at the tournament? And what team was the scariest? So uh, perhaps now, well, I know what it is now that we're at the tournament. Well, let's see what they had to say before they got here. Which roster are we the most afraid of? I'm not really afraid of any roster, to be honest. But the one that will be the most challenging is Black Jackals. They're mechanically as good as us, and they're rotationally a little better than us. So we're going to have to play really well to beat them. So the team that poses the biggest challenge to our team is Black Jackals. It's probably one of the only team that we're struggling a lot to beat in scrims. The matches are the toughest one by far. But I would say that every team in this tournament can be a tough match. Because every team is playing in a different way in his own freeway and makes it different to fight each team. Uh, the opponent's roster that I think is going to pose the biggest challenge is BTU. Um, they're new kids on the block, we haven't really seen much of them. A lot of them are from console, and I guess all in all, it's just gonna be 
a bit of a rude awakening. Uh, we kind of look down on console, but I, I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna bring the heat. The teams that our team worries about the most. I mean, I would say TKS and BTU. They're both pretty even. Um, I think that they're definitely gonna put up a challenge. Uh, they've gotten better. Like these, these teams have definitely gotten better. I I'm surprised. BTU has been putting in a bunch of practice. They got um, all four players are really good. Same with TKS. They're all solid players, and I think that this tourney we're gonna have it's it's gonna be good. I, I feel like they're probably gonna be closed games, and I I'm looking forward to the challenge. They're all, all both teams are great. So humble, so humble coming out from Mo there. I have to say though, Tetsu with the milk. I mean, that was the most aggressive <laughs> maneuver I have ever seen. He took a, a moment to drink that milk, look directly at the camera and talk some mad shit. Now granted, they were eliminated first. That's the end of that statement. But anyway, he can have all the milk he wants now <laughs> as he watches the rest of the Dominion series. And we are getting ready for the rest of this game here we are gonna see now the losers final coming up gonna be pretty hype uh we're gonna get into it very soon but the uh, humanist oh there we go don't speak humanist do not speak right now don't forget what? guys exclamation point uh of or tks to let us know who you guys think is going to win who will have to face off against the deadly black jackals in the grand finals and who will be going home i would just like to remind you guys this is the final losers final that we will see this season in the dominion series so it is all on the line it is all as hype as humanly possible now humanist now you may go please regale us with your i was just gonna intellect. say don't type of in the chat you will be instantly banned slacks didn't warn Whoa. you only tks is uh, is currently allowed in the chat so don't do that we want to retain our viewership so just don't make any mistakes guys Good God, this man just lies every time I work with him. I, I don't know if he has some kind of mental condition or something. He's actually psychotic. I do. Uh, <laughs> <thank you though. laughs> what do you think about this man? I just want to say, you know that glass of milk was warm too. That, that's the thing you that really gets was, me. That's... You know it was hot. You, you oh, don't drink your milk warm? No, not a fan no, of the warm milk. I, I like a nice uh, cold glass of milk if I'm going with that. All right, getting oh. a look at the map draft now. TKS choosing Overwatch. You know, they did come out strong against Black Jackals on this map, even though it didn't ultimately go their way. So I'm not surprised to see him picking it first. Sanctuary Bridge for On Flask. Also not a surprise. We saw that they really favor their team fight. And of course, TKS with this map pick advantage is going to end it if they get to game number three on their comfort pick of Harbor. Uh, really what we expect from these two teams, you know, we saw them face off earlier in the day. They were probably two of the closest, or, or the closest series we maybe even witnessed this entire Dominion series. Uh, so I'm looking forward to another close one and we'll see who's going to the final. So we start off this loser series with Overwatch, a staple map in the Dominion series here today. But of course, Team Killing Service very much favors this map in the essence that it is a 2v2 map and they have been performing exceptionally well when it comes down to it. They do favor these sort of maps, especially last time around when we saw them kind of clutch it out on Harbor. And what they need to do and make sure this time around is not allow on Flask to gang uh, gang up on them and loot for these team fights. When on Flask get these team fights, they do look like the better side. So Team Killing Service really needs to avoid them at all costs. Absolutely. But what you should not avoid at all cost in my best throw I've ever done is your own rewards, my friends. Now, don't don't forget, you got to be answering questions. You've been watching hopefully all day. If you're just tuning in, you still have time to pick up some sick rewards here. Please go to the Twitch. I'm be I'm literally begging you, please open up your extension and answer those beautiful questions to get your points. Your boy over here, number 362, I'm out, baby. I got my 80 points, but there's still time for you to get the fairy tale winter battle outfit. That's right. You can craft your own tail and uh, get this beautiful, beautiful uh, dress here. I'm not sure how they had those dyes back then in Samurai time. I think that must have been very rare, but who gave it to them? The Ice Fairies, of course. Read a book for once in your life, so hinky, and you'll know 
that the ice fairies were the ones that provided those beautiful blue dyes and those beautiful ornaments. What kind of sword is that? I'm not a big enough of a nerd to know, but the fairies surely do. And finally, the sword of ice effect. I don't see a sword, but I do see, oh, there it is. I do see ice <laughs> and there it is. Ice, gun, swords, what more could you ask for? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the lower bracket finals. Uh, a lot of you guys say the losers finals. I'm not about that, all right? Everyone here is a winner except for the guys who lose. Now, here we go. Team killing service on Flask. Chat has voted on Flask. What was once their boys, their proud boys. The, the Flask has been thrown out like the milk. It is gonzo. Uh, a, a humanist, can you believe this? This, this betrayal, I would say, from chat. It's really just unbelievable, but if, you know, anyone's going to stab you in the back, it's going to be Twitch chat, so no surprise there. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not surprised to see this, you know. <laughs> uh, I, I, I wouldn't imagine Twitch chat would ever pick uh, what they would consider to be an underdog. You know, a few brave souls, perhaps, but definitely not surprised to see it going this way. That being said, I would be surprised if this was not a close series. It's going to be awesome. Let's get to it. Well, let's get to it indeed. We will see who is correct here. The analysts, the chat, the players, or myself. Team Killing Service, they are going to face off against the man, the myth, the legend, the drinkers themselves, the on flask. You better not be near that flask or you're going to get burned. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. The lower finals. Take it away. Oof. The time is here. And as Slack said, these teams have everything on the line. This is the loser bracket final slacks. You were saying it before, and now you're calling it the lower bracket finals. Whatever. We know what it really is. And only I could, the only thing I can say is so hinky that I know for sure whoever wins this is going to the grand finals and locking in a guaranteed $5,000 for themselves. So <laughs> this is a very big series here. Yeah, our team is basically playing for $1,500 right now. Uh, as we see this 3v3 breaking out onto the C point. See who gets this early advantage here as Willen finds himself getting guard broken early on. He was playing so strong in the previous series, but already finding himself pretty low. And now it's breaking out just into a total 4v4. Uh, I think both players on middle just decided to rotate. Uh, but we see Vayne Nowhere coming in, trying to get this early rotation on his Shinobi, give his team the advantage, but Rippy is here as well. So much action going on on the point. Fusion finding himself low as well. And it looks as though the Jean Hu on the side of On Flask gets taken out. Really well done there. Whoa. Rippy getting the heavy and lands the guard break. Nice. TKS finding himself with the early advantage, but they are very low. And Vayne Nawir on the side of On Flask is very healthy. So revenge was triggered off. That's going to be a problem. Lucky's gets the revenge. He's going to get the knockdown into the heavy. That's wow. That is zero to death. That is an early triple cap. TKS, they were low on life, but ultimately they clutch it out. Man, so Hinky, you're just, you're doing all the work. This is great. I didn't have to say anything. Uh, but what I'm thinking here the whole time is uh, Vivendaz said TKS had to simply avoid team fights at all costs. And there's no way to avoid the team fight on C, and they dominated it. That was a, a really good performance, and honestly, it could have gone anyone's way. It was the Jean Hu Willem on the side of On Flask that really got caught out early on. That ended up spelling the demise for that team fight. We'll see if On Flask comes back strong. Fusion? Well, I'd rather we'll watch from Rippy. They're continuously, I've seen a lot of guard breaks landing onto On Flask. Uh, I don't know what the, the cause for that is necessarily. Willem looking like going to be the target, but Rippy moves in onto Fusion. He's going to go ahead and faint on in as uh, it looks like they may want to go ahead and take down Wheat here, but Wheat backing down the stairs, so you have to kind of deal with Rippy. Rippy gets knocked back, looking to get on the Fusion. It's not going to be happening. Willem, he's down. He's low. Willem's chopped down. It looks like he just jumped right on the Fusion. Come on, just land one attack. He'll get the guard break. Should be able to pick up Wheat here. I'm um, not sure if anybody else can rotate in to stop this. Man, I, I, it was a little bit of a misstep from On Flask, but Rippy playing so well in that fight. He had the kick onto uh, the JJ, making sure that he was able to hit that onto Fusion, and then target swapping the Sickle Rain onto Gothic Noir, making sure to take him out as well. So really well done closing that fight out. Rippy playing very strong here in game number one. 
So, Hinky, you're beautiful and you have a big brain, but we have another beautiful big brain, our in-game analyst. Uh, that's Viv and Nas. And, Nas, you said that TKS had to avoid team fights at all costs, yet here we are. What are you thinking about how this is playing out? Yeah, I completely bite my tongue, and I just want to kind of piggyback on what Sahinki said there. Rippy is playing completely out of his mind. His ganking capabilities have been absolutely incredible. And just seeing the setup of how TKS have gone about the map, capturing both C and A, and even forcing members of uh, on Flash to actually commit suicide on the minion wave just to get respawns because they have nowhere to go to heal up on any point. Yeah, I actually, uh, I didn't catch some of that. Um as far as the, them killing themselves, but that's a really good thing to go ahead and point out there, Bibinaz. And as we get right back into this, it's TKS on the back foot. They just like the, lost the fight on C, and suddenly they lose the fight on A. And maybe when you're talking about team fights, it's the 2v2s that weren't doing so good for us, or maybe the, just the series of events that didn't quite go their way. Sometimes you don't land a couple attacks, get that parry off, and suddenly you're down 50% health. But whatever the case is, on Flask have pulled themselves back in. They are basically, I mean, nearly identical tied up of all. It's C and A being held by On Flask at this point. Yeah, unfortunately, Rippy couldn't survive the double caster's curse. It was myself first and then Naz on top of it. Really cursing him into oblivion, was immediately eliminated out of that fight after we were both shouting out how well he's playing, but now Rippy <laughs> coming back in strong. Two players on the side of on class finding themselves very low, trying to use this uh, bear trap to their advantage here. And as far as positioning goes, not triggering it off, surprisingly. <laughs> Rippy able to find fusion here with the guard break. Well done there. It's not going to be able to chase him into this uh, bear trap, though. And that looks like it's finally triggered off. Fusion not long for this world. The GB is going to close out the kill to get the execution. TKS coming back strong. Yeah, <clears throat> get the execution. The fireworks are there. Cluckies, I thought he was going to die before Rippy could get here, but he stays alive. The headbutt into the, the sickle rain. Gothic Noir, he's going to try and get the kick there, but it's not going to land. Hello, this is my sickle. He's uh, one light away. We'll go ahead and get that blocked off. Rippy eyeing Gothic Noir. He's going to go ahead and uh, just jump off the edge. That's <laughs> you, you love to see it. Young that Gravity a chopped down 100 to 0. Yeah. 100 to 0 there. Excellent gank. And I want to point out the that was really good composure on the side of TKS. Realizing the revenge was a little bit high there. Ultimately forcing that ledge uh, so that they wouldn't get the defender right now. But Rippy gets his tier 4 unlocked anyway. He's going to pop down that nail bomb. And that should secure that fight on the A point. Uh, Scorpion finds himself alone here. But it is fusion that will eventually bleed out. That is going to be it. Uh, actually, no, sorry, excuse me. Scorpion finding himself in a uh, 2v2 scenario now as Clucky's is coming back. This way. Yeah, Clucky's coming back over, but TKS taking another one. Scorpion able to take down Willem. Important that Scorpion's getting some kills, getting some renown here. But, uh, you know, the longer they fight, more people are just flooding in. We do see this usually on C, but occasionally the fight does spill out onto A. And looks like right now on Flash said, look, we need to grab A because we need a point to heal on this map. That's more important than anything. Scorpion almost going down, but Revenge being triggered off. It's going to get the guard break, but not able to follow up. There's the follow up. Gothic War is chopped down as Scorpion able to seal the deal. Such an important kill when it looked like he could have just dropped down there. Fusion into a 2v1. Clucky's is low, but once again, Willem has respawned and flooded his way back out onto the map. But ladies and gentlemen, look at the points tks has got on flask in breaking right now on flask have to win this fight and rippy just needs to survive but he has got the barrier he's got the shield and he's going to be able to get one kill for himself tks doing exactly what they need to do here is on flask on the back foot down three versus four gothic noir trying to get the pick up but rippy not gonna have it moving on in looking for the kick gothic noir looking to potentially apply some damage here but he wants to pick up as well it's definitely not gonna happen with scorpion joining the party and you have one more member of on flask that needs to get on in here I'm surprised they didn't go for the unbreak on B. They can't do it now, as you see TKS is above 1,100 points, but initially they went up the ladder, and instead of going for the unbreak, they decided to go for the res. It didn't end up working out for them. The reinforcements came in from Scorpion. Lucky's breaking onto the point now as well, and Young Gravity going to get absolutely... Oh, no, that was actually Willem's tier four, but the heal's going to come through, and it's just a matter of time before TKS takes this game number one. Woo! 
MKS. And you know, it looks like uh, Twitch chat was correct in this prediction. And my memory is not failing me on Flask. Only have Yunk Gravity uh, <laughs> remaining. And he does get the ledge style points. Style points for Young Gravity here. But they're going to have to, uh, you know, recollect themselves here. Moving forward, hopefully they're talking about it and not getting tilted right now. Because this is seriously a stressful situation uh, to be in, to be losing your first map in a best of three, especially when you're in the, the loser's final. And not exactly where you want to be, but I believe that was TKS's pick. So once again, just kind of holding serve. It's not over for on flash just yet. But we shouted out Rippy early on, and for good reason. We may have cast or cursed him for one death, but he went 12-2, and two, playing so well that entire game. And uh, honestly, I think why they had such good control of the map, even when they lost A and C, it was Rippy coming in and making sure to land these ganks that uh, TKS is just so good at. And that was how they really got control of the map back. TKS holding serve, now going on to on flash. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... TKS, they looked good. I you know, I was just relying on my analyst to give me all of the proper information. Vivinaz says TKS has to avoid the fight. They take the four verse four, they dominate, and just rolled on from there. So I literally don't know what to expect moving forward. So Hinky, you're going to have to just do all the big brain for me. Uh, well, it's getting late in the day, but the, the brain has been activated by lots and lots of caffeine. So I'm, uh, I'm going to do my best here <laughs> to activate the big brain for you. Uh, but on Flask, you know, they kept it pretty close. They actually were able to flip control at one point of that match. So uh, not all is lost for them. You know, they may have dropped map number one, but they're going into their comfort pick now. We'll see if they can hold and go on to game number two. I, I, I feel like this is pretty evenly matched team. Obviously, TKS winning that first fight convincingly, and and then maybe a couple of those fights after, it's, it's pretty easy to seal the deal when you win that first fight so hard and you're capturing a couple of those points. So uh, on flats can definitely do it. We saw them take the high fort map earlier um, and, and we went into that super double breaking. I mean, uh, on flask had more points than anyone I've ever seen at like 1600 total points uh, there at the end. But we have Vividnos ready to talk about map number two. Let us know how this is all going to play out. Look, I just want to set the record straight. We did not cast a curse Rippy. We actually gave him a caster buff. That's why the end he ended up going 12 and 2. But we are going into Sanctuary Bridge, one of the staple maps of the Dominion series. And of course, this map is all about the snowball potential. We see that initial fight that goes over on B and usually dictates the early pace of this game. Of course, we saw Team Killing Service put up some really good team fights. So even though they didn't select this map, they might have a good chance of taking this game two against Onflas, who are basically breaking and are looking to fight their way back into this tournament. On Flask, in breaking for their tournament life, but they are on their comfort pick. They've been showing really strong team fight all day. So we have to see them come out really strong here. That being said, their confidence might be a little shaken. They did lose that initial team fight uh, last map on Overwatch. So uh, hopefully they can regroup a little bit. Honestly, it's 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 looking a little dire for them, but they are on their comfort pick. We'll see if they can come back. Uh, just hopefully regain their nerves and, and bring it home for the grand finals. Ooh, Sanctuary Bridge. This is what it comes down to, huh? Uh, you know, I, I'm just hoping they'll see some nice ledges into the pits. Uh, a style, extra style bonus points if we see one of these gates fall and, and get like a little trap gate kill um besides that this is just so exciting because this is definitely one of the maps that goes into double breaking so frequently back caps are there there are gambles to be made and right now if you're on flask this is the time to put in everything that you know about this game and deliver it ladies and gentlemen we have loaded into the map minions are making their way out into point b as point C and A capped respectively. And we're gonna have this uh, 3v3 turn into a four versus four. This is everything here. I mean, I, I'm not expecting TKS to necessarily win the, the early fight like they did on Overwatch, but if they do it, I'm thinking this is theirs. I would have to agree with you there, but it looks as though other than uh, Gravity, 
is the side of TKS is losing more life, but now uh, Vaynerweer zoned out of the fight a little bit by Cluckies. Uh, able to get back in there, though, because Fusion came and peeled for him. Now Scorpion's finding himself in this little bit of a 1v1 now. 2v2 play continuing. Young Gravity very low. Going to try and find his way out of this fight, I would imagine. Doesn't manage to land that guard break onto Rippy. Weed actually gets an execution in the back line and now on Flash, finding themselves losing this fight pretty convincingly. Gravity trying to get out of there, but he's not going to make his way out. This is going to be... Oh, the minion's actually going to interrupt this long execution. But that being said, it's still going to be a long spawn timer. It was the Shinobi, uh, Vaynerware, with the presence of mind to get back onto his home point to at least hold this down so it's not a triple cap. But TKS coming out with the dominant win in that early team. I would like to see if, if For Honor could add, like, if a minion interrupts your execution, you can turn around and just rip the minion in half and just let your rage out onto him. But let's talk about what's happening here. Gothic Noir with his team dropping low. This is not too good. Scorpion, can he connect on the kill? There's a lot of interrupt, a lot of damage coming through. It's Gothic Noir is going to fall. It's Rippy taking the kill. And Scorpion hanging with a sliver of health on the edge. Fusion wants to be able to get the kill, but Rippy continuously is there getting the kicks, landing the damage as well. Wheat low as well. Scorpion's going to go and squirt out of here. I don't know what the what the play is for him, but A-Zone being contested is massive damage comes firing on through. And all I see is uh, TKS outnumbering well, as I say that. Now we're going to have another one, Gothic Mark, making the rotate after he has respawned. Let's fight. This is the fight that just goes on and on and on, and finally Onflash gets the advantage simply because they just respawning here next to their home point Cluckies. Flushed out down the side, uh, and Fusion trolled out by the clip. You know, you see the big golden M on Clucky's shield, and I gotta say, I'm loving it. He's playing so well today. Ultimately going to get caught, though, by Vayne Nawir here. Oh, uh, but great job trying to get out of the zone there. You know, he came in late into that fight. Now, he's kind of questioning the rotation at first, but they were able to get that kill onto Willem because of that excellent gank. Good communication there. Ultimately, it is on Flask getting control of the map back. But Clucky's doing a good job of sort of stemming the bleeding and making sure it wasn't too bad. Yeah, Rippy moving in uh, feistily, but immediately taking a bit of chunk damage. As you see, Fusion constantly aware where the Snobia is, and they get him knocked against the ledge, and a little one-two over the top. Rippy, you cannot allow that to happen, and he is going to be chunked down by Willem on the backside. Willem, a great kill, a nice read there by him to go ahead and just swap targets and to get onto him. Gothic Noir, what's the play? A lot of minion disruption going, and he wants to go ahead and dip back. You can tell he's feeling very uncomfortable. Scorpion happy about that. I'll take this time to go ahead and clear out B. This should be going back over to the side of TKS here any moment. Great read there by Fusion. Gonna get the guard break as well off the dodge of Fusion. Clucky's going to get another big kill here, and they needed that one, closing that out quickly. Now Gravity finds himself in a gank scenario here. Gonna have to play out of his mind if he doesn't want to give up control of the entire map, but that is going to be the Shinobi gank coming through. They trigger off the revenge a little bit. Uh, I actually thought that second guard break landed for a second, which would have been a disaster for Rippy, but ultimately just going to use this revenge to get out of the fight as TKS takes control of the map. Yeah, that was a really nice gank there by TKS, and right at the most opportune time, up 700 to 450 points of on flask. On flask, you, you got to be uh, talking on the mic right now. If this is not the time to be quiet. This is not the time to be giving up and, and feeling sorry for yourself. You have to pull this back. You have to win this match if you're going to tie this series up and have a chance of going to the grand finals. Team Killing Service, they can smell victory in the air, but Wheat, he's incredibly low. Rippy, you don't want to let Wheat fall. Get in there. Slice you, dice you. Gothic Noir looking for the kick. He's not going to land it. Rippy right in the thick of things. He's got a, uh, an army of minions behind him. Scorpion able to take down Gothic Noir. Fusion, Scorpion, spinning. Like this beautiful waltz that they're doing right here in the middle of this map. Look at how chaotic and just absolutely insane this is. But they continue to maintain their composure. Willem healed up. He's going to drop down from his home point. A scorpion slightly overextended. Can't really get back. Willem able to secure that kill on his screen. That was really good job by Gravity, making sure that he was able to save the life of 
uh, I believe it was the Shinobi trying to get out of the fight there. It might have been the uh, the JJ, actually. Uh, but really nice peel there to, to minimize the damage that TKS was doing. And now, they on Flask, this is their moment to get back and get control of the map here. That being said, Vayne Nuir in the back line, finding himself a little bit low, but the peel does come through. That being said, oh, I, I don't know if I like the decision there to get back up into the fight, but now Vayne Nuir going to back off and go heal. And now it's the side of TKS, who's a little bit on the back foot. Oh. Scorpion now. Two, going to get guard broken. The GB. No, actually, they missed the timing on that. So Scorpion's actually able to stop that gank from coming through. Going to have revenge as well. So I have to imagine TKS is going to be able to get back into this fight. They do land the guard break, but Scorpion, excellent timing there. Oh, nice. my gosh, the damage on that revenge heavy. Going to oh, land the guard break as him. well. Scorpion! Wow. Unbelievable! He lands guard break into a top heavy, right into another guard break, and he's still alive through all this after staying alive with revenge. This is exactly what TKS need to seal the deal here in game two. It's tight. It's on a knife's edge. But TKS have the lead, this point lead right now. It's phenomenal plays like that from Scorpion that has got them this far in the Dominion series. And ladies and gentlemen, here we are, 50 points away from TKS sealing the deal taking this win against on flask and moving themselves into the grand finals locking in five grand for themselves here i can't believe how tight this is on flask cannot afford any mistakes and willem he's chugged down the sickle rain from above willem one light he's guard broken he's dead oh rippy's God. doing it right now Fusion trying to get the kill, but Rippy stays alive on Flasker and breaking one down. Scorpion lands another GB into the top. He's taking him down. What an absolute madman. TKS have the lead, have the advantage. And this is a numbers advantage as well. It looks like on Flask are on their last leg. And this last leg is about to get kicked in right at the knee. What an incredible play from Rippy. So he lands the sickle rain there, and that is, wow, that's gonna be the end there. But he landed the sickle rain. He could have closed it out with the light follow-up, but he saw that they were about to enter into breaking. So he literally did nothing. He stared him directly in the face, waited for the breaking to take over, and then landed that light attack to ultimately eliminate him from the game permanently. Such good veteran decision-making, TKS. You know, it was a very, very close, maybe even the closest series we saw in their first series today, but TKS coming out as the better team here in the uh, lower bracket finals. Just absolutely insane. Uh, there's not a ton of kills. We saw games with over 20 kills, uh, 13 kills, 15 kills, 9 kills, 10 kills. The six kills for Cluckies, uh, seven for Scorpion, and seven for Rippy. Um, we didn't even see a lot of these uh, high tier feats getting unlocked, but it was just. It was the way they played together. Uh, this, this, that was the. I think that's the best performance I've seen out of TKS from 50% of of that Sanctuary Bridge match on through the end. Uh, they were playing so phenomenally. Scorpion really, absolutely, just came alive. Yeah, Scorpion played super well, especially toward the end of that second game. But let's take a look at game number one. This is where things started off strong. You know, you were calling out Naz quite a bit. Uh, that they, he was saying that they didn't want these team fights, but TKS came back. To, they must have been listening to the broadcast. They wanted to prove him wrong. Rippy playing so well this entire series, and that initial fight went TKS's way. They never really gave back control of this map. Uh, on Flask had one moment where they flipped things back into their control, but TKS, they, they just came back with such veteran decision making. And I have to, I mean, we've been saying it all day, but Rippy on this Shinobi, he just felt feels really at home. I believe he was playing their Shugoki before. Uh, so obviously they're opting to not go with that character and, and Rippy definitely looks much more comfortable here in this assassin. And that's game number one here. <laughs> Young Gravity able to get that ledge at the end, but going into game number two, TKS once again with these early team fight victories, they almost overstepped themselves. You know, we almost, we almost saw them pull a, uh, I'll call it a set mix. I don't want to call him out too much, but I just remember his team always overextending on this map. Uh, but that being said, Clucky's had a really good job in an anti-gang scenario to make sure they didn't give back up too much of the map. And here's that play we were talking about at the end. Rippy noticing that they're going back into breaking, closing that kill out. TKS, moving on to your grand finals. And here you can see the bracket, of course. Team Black Jackals and Team Killing Service will move on to your grand finals of North America here at the finals 
of the Dominion series and a gentleman that is some Mizaru that we saw right there. Yes, that's <laughs> right, my friends. I have my own disgusting Viking flask that I took off a of Viking. I actually filled this with gasoline and we're going to light it on fire right now to celebrate on flask. Let's go. Just kidding. We're not. Gentlemen, they did it. They, they did it. <laughs> Well, absolutely I thought you got a new there microphone go. for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> then my quality went way down. Don't make fun yeah. of my word and costume, okay? I've been practicing my Mizarus, uh all day against my dog, just running at him, Mizaru? shoulder bashing him. Also, that's, this is real chain mail, by the way. It's like 50 pounds. Uh, I am, my poor dilapidated body can barely sit up right now. But you know who couldn't sit up in that series, of course, or boys on flask. Uh, any final thoughts for them here before they exit out here, uh, Mr. Humanist? No, I mean, I just want to give them, <laughs> let's go, give them credit for all the hard work that they put in. I mean, they're going to be walking away with, uh, I think, $3,500 or something like that for competing here at the grand finals. Um, a stellar team all around. I hope that we see them again. Don't give up. Don't be feeling too bad about yourself because this is, I mean, you're, you you put yourself into a top three team in all of North America. That's that's really credit for something. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we did want to say, I, me cosplaying, I, I would love to be a part of the Four Honor community. I feel like you're not a real Four Honor player unless you cosplay as your favorite hero. We asked the pro players why they love the community, what they love the most about the community. So before we get into the grand finals, guys, we're here because of you. Let's hear what they have to say. I'd say the thing that I find just most impactful or what my favorite thing about the For Honor community is, is just kind of the brotherhood that, that it kind of brings everybody together. Um, a lot of teams have kind of shifted and I'd say there's 20 or so guys that have played in NA competitive and we've all grown to become really good friends uh, we all hang out outside of scrims we like to VC we like to play other games and I feel like I've made long-lasting friends and I'm hoping to someday meet them in real life my favorite thing about the foreign community or more more specifically the foreign competitive community is every everyone that plays this game at eye level is passionate about it a lot of passionate people ready to put the time to improve and I've received a lot of advices from multiple high level players that helped me get better, get a better, better player myself and just an overall this game has really been a passion for me as well since I started playing it I've been putting a lot of time and it's been a really great time playing this game with everyone, everyone else. The best thing about the front community is that since it's a smaller game and a smaller competitive community everyone knows each other it, it, it makes it really fun to have a community of of everyone who loves the game and always comes back so yeah i think that's that's what makes it pretty unique and that's why i like the community what is it about the foreign community that i like the most and keeps me coming back really it's how helpful everybody's been there's been people like vain noir who's helped every team i've been on since the beginning everybody at least in the competitive community has been very helpful and very nice and very good to work with And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the grand final of the Dominion Series, North America. We have been looking for the greatest team in North America. Don't forget, exclamation points on there for both of those teams, guys. But I'm just so excited. This has been a year in the making. We already have the map draft going. I mean, I could talk to you guys for hours, but so hinky, talk to me about these maps. Before I get into the maps, I just want to say excellent cosplays, Slacks. I'd really love to see Thank what you, you could do with a Shaman or perhaps a Nusha cosplay, uh, but but maybe we'll save that for next Dominion series. And uh, as we're going to look at this map draft, it is basically the same as last time, and I'm not surprised to see this. You know, TKS, they have to be saying to themselves, hey, you know, we even though it was a 2-0, we didn't lose by that much on either map. Uh, so they're just going to run it back. Overwatch, first map. Uh, for game number one, Harbor, their comfort pick for game number two. And if it gets that far, of course, Black Jackals did pick Sanctuary Bridge last time as well. They seem to really believe that they just have the edge in team fighting. And we'll see if we even get that far or if it's a, a swift 2-0 like last time. Or potentially the last time today, if we don't get a bracket reset, 
we are seeing Overwatch yeah. as our first map. After the last series, I feel like uh, Team Kill and Severs don't feel as bad as this map being selected by the Black Jackals. They did put in a pretty stellar performance against OnFlash. Even though, I know you called me out multiple times, I did say for them to avoid the team fights. They played absolutely amazingly, but I feel like when Rippy shines, you see those ganks being on point. I feel very much TKS can take this if they have the setup done properly. A very bold prediction. TKS even having a chance against these guys that we have seen absolutely dominating so far. But you know who makes bold predictions all the time? Twitch chat. Let's see what you guys voted on very shortly. It looks like a 50-50 for now, but I'm sure... Whoa, I, that will probably change as soon as humanists start... Yeah, there we go. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, 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 yeah, whoa, uh, whoa. Twitch, you're wrong! It's oh. going to be Black Jackals. It's going to be a 2-0. Uh, it's going to happen fast uh, before you can blink your eyes. Before Slacks could get, get this helmet off, it's going to be Black yeah. Jackals taking this grand finals. Oh, man. I mean, uh, surely they're the favorites, but uh, Team Killing Service, they've already got a lot of information about these guys, right? So, Hinky, they already lost to him once. You know, people talk about sort of the lower bracket advantage sometimes in that you're the one that gets to make the adjustment. Black Jackals, they won the match. Mm. All that they're thinking of themselves is, hey, let's just go out and try the same thing. But TKS are the ones that get to assess what they did wrong and make a change. So we'll see how things uh, play out, I think, in this game number one. We'll see if they're able to change up their strategy or if it's uh, Black Jackals. You know, I did pick them to win, so I have to say I do disagree with Twitch chat here a little bit. I think Black Jackals are probably going to take this, but I wouldn't uh, be surprised to see TKS make this a little bit more. All right, guys. Well, it's about time for us to go to our grand final. Look, I know that Griffin was a, uh, a law bringer, not a warden, but, uh, you know, uh, I will have to quote him here. Show yourselves! Black Jackals versus our boys Team Killing Service. Welcome to the grand finals of North America. Let's bring them out and let's see some bloodshed. Woo! This is what it all comes down to here at the end. Black Jackals versus Team Killing Service in our grand final best of three for the Dominion series in North America. So, Hinky, it's been an honor and a pleasure to be casting here with you all the way into this grand final. And and it's just insane that we got here so fast. I, I want this to be a full reset into two best of threes because... You know, as much as I said, Black Jackals might just give us the 2-0 here. I don't want this to end. I don't want it to end either, my friend. It has been an absolute pleasure. The grand finals of the grand finals. Uh, interesting rotations here from Rippy and Lucky's already to yeah. set things off. Trying to turn this into a 2v1 in middle and then Scorpion rotating in to back up. So they're actually turning this into a 3v2. Uh, getting a little bit of an early advantage here. Already capped C. It looks as though Black Jackals might have been uh, trying to cap A at the start. And wow, Plucky's going to get caught out here from Mo, though, who says, you're not getting away from me, son. Willin now trying to put the pressure on the Rippy, and Mo gets the guard break. That is going to be that. Black Jackals taking an early advantage. Yeah, but you know, you know what I'm seeing there is Black Jackals playing with no fear, and TKS feel like they're playing super defensively. Clucky's had 30% health and tried to run away instead of just standing his ground. He gets executed from behind, and now TKS, uh, you know, they haven't lost anything just yet, but they feel like they're on the back foot for sure. And, and as I say, the Scorpion, just with a sliver of health, turns around to find he's surrounded by three members of the Black Jackals. The Black Jackals in here like a pack of hyenas just feeding on the corpses of team killing service this is our first map in this best of three grand final and anything could happen cluckies playing this warlord and the only player to do it in the the finals here today for europe and north america i got we got to give a lot of credit to cluckies again so they're able to find one kill, make it two. Kusatamago goes down, Mo dropping as well. Rippy getting both of the kills. Great to see him going onto the Shinobi. And with that, he's quickly right back over into B as TKS on point and making these quick rotations. 
to say, this is kind of the reverse of what happened in the first series. You know, it was TKS with the early control of C and then Black Jackals off of the respawns, prolonging that fight and ultimately taking it. But it was the exact opposite here. The respawns came in from Clucky's. They accidentally went for that long execution. That cost them a lot of life uh, on the side of Black Jackals. I believe it was Mo. So Clucky's able to come in with Rippy, retake control of C, and now TKS looking to take a stranglehold on this game as this mid fight breaks out. Mid-fight breaking out, super important that you're not throwing anything away here. You got to be super careful about how you're looking to apply damage because if you leave yourself open, you can get 100 to 0. These professional players, they know all of the combos to throw. Kasatamago eating a couple of heavies, rethinks things. He's going to go ahead and drop back there. Rippy taking Will Lin down. And now it's Mo left to his own devices. And that's going to be the heavy over the top. Rippy able to get another one. Rippy is on fire. And when Rippy's been going hard, we've been seeing TKS doing incredibly well. Oh, nice headbutt there. Attempt, but Clucky's in there to peel. Clucky's knocked back. And uh, it looks like Kasada Mago taking down Scorpion. And Scorpion takes down Jalhu. This one is just back and forth. Nobody running away with it early. And this is exactly what you'd expect to see here in the first game of our grand final. I can't hate on the decision too much for Clucky's to go up and try and back up Scorpion on A, but ultimately this C and B control has been working out for them, and now it just felt like a little bit of a throw as Rippy's finding himself 1v1 against Mo here. Already chopped down to about a third of his life. Scorpion's going to come in off of the respawn and hopefully allow Rippy to heal on C, but nothing doing. Will Lin chasing down along uh, with gravity here. Sorry, not gravity. Will Lin ultimately going to get the kill there. I was going to say, gravity is always a factor, um, but maybe not so much uh, here at this one. Jafu with Clucky's right down below C point. Nice view on for the cameraman to go ahead and show us where all that action's happening. Kasada Mago flexing, fainting onto Wheat. Wheat with a little bit of a dodge back there, rolling, repositioning, biding his time. B capped by TKS, A and C contested. Wheat just waiting for Rippy to get on target from behind. Guard break there. Does leave Rippy open for a second, but able to recover. Kasada Mago buying a lot of time over here. I mean, at some point, you have to try and apply a bit of damage. They do get the disrupt, but we almost going down to Kasada Mago, able to connect with a heavy over here. Will he throw the attack? No, disrupted. Will he come over the top with a heavy? Can't quite get it. He's out of stamina. Just, they finally turned it around. We blocked off with this attack that we threw, and he oh. finally will get it. We're going to get the execution and some fireworks as well. That was actually a pretty smart decision to let that heavy rip through because I think he was probably expecting the GB there, ultimately why he got hit. Rippy now coming in to back up A because they're able to close out that fight. Lucky's finding himself really low though. Excellent deflect there from Willen, keeping himself alive, but ultimately it's a matter of time. And Jafu, out of stamina, doing his best. He's gonna get guard broken. The sickle ring comes through into the GB, but it is Mo coming in, backing it up now. This fight's pretty even. McClucky zoned out of the fight. is going to get killed by Mo, and now Rippy's just going to stall for time. TKS, though, with about a 200-point lead, even without B control. So even if this fight doesn't quite go their way, Rippy doing a good enough job that I think that they're going to hold on to C and maintain, maintain this point control. I'll see if they can maintain the point control as Rippy eats a bunch of damage coming in. Will Lin comboing up over here with Mo to go ahead and take him down. And, uh, you know, but give us a second. We could bring in Mibinaz to talk about what's going on here. TKS, you know, I called you out a little bit before what you said about TKS and avoiding team fights. What, what do you think they're doing here that's working so well? Find themselves almost 300 points above Black Jackals. I think it was just the patience that they're playing with. They've been super patient. I, uh, I think Tsuhinki alluded to earlier. They didn't very much go for that C and B control. And they very much steadfast in that. The only time they slipped up is when Clucky's kind of decided to go help out um, Scorpion when they pushed to A. And all of a sudden, things started falling apart. But as soon as they, they kind of went back to that C and B control, you do see them very much always winning out on these fights around those areas. Makes sense to me, and as you say that, Bibinaz, we see Cluckies and Rippy chunking down on this B point, taking two members of Black Jackals down. And I gotta say, a week there's Rippy getting the nice execution, and <laughs> it's funny with the easy cape there. Rippy, indeed, finding that one easy. I think Wheat's having a hell of a game here. So Hinky, what do you think? Wheat playing really well, and I have to say, like, I, you know, he's played all right all day, but I, he's never been the standout player. 
It's very interesting to see the Raider uh, with that stalwart banner as opposed to uh, rocking the blast, but obviously it's something that they've worked out in their team fights. But Rippy, of course, you know, we've been shouting him out all day. He's done so well this game with the rotations. Obviously, that's the one of the biggest strengths of the Shinobi is just how fast he can rotate. And it looks as though TKS in this breaking scenario making a statement and taking game number one. TKS. Ladies and gentlemen, very welcome to see TKS uh, come in here after I uh, cast a curse Black Jackals. Black Jackals, this is their first loss on the day, is it not? I, I do believe you're correct. And uh, TKS, this is this is not their map. This was the map that Black Jackals picked. And now they get to go in the harbor. This is exactly what we talked about in the first series, where if they're able to take Black Jackals map, they have a lot of confidence going into their comfort pick, and TKS has to be feeling pretty good about that right now and trying to get this Grand Finals reset. Yeah, definitely got to be feeling really good. And, and, you know, it's interesting to see Wheat with only four kills, but just maybe it was it was the use of these heavies, the zones. Uh, things were chaotic uh, down in that B point, and really everyone putting it together for Team Killing Service. You, you love to see it here in the grand finals that it's you know not going to be a 2-0 uh, for Black Jackals, no matter case, but we're going to be moving forward here. Moving forward, and uh, I also just wanted to shout out Clucky's. You know, we're talking about Rippy all day, but Clucky's, ever since that one slip up in that first game of the day on High Fort, has been playing so, so well. The Warlord pick is really working out for them. I'm not sure if they've been scrimming with this or not. You know, I didn't actually get a chance to see any of TKS's scrims. So it's possible this was a little bit of a surprise to some of the teams here today. And ultimately, you know, Warlord's always been such a strong character. Fell off a little bit when that uh, crashing charge got nerfed a bit, but uh, ultimately still very, very solid. Yeah, I mean, I said it earlier, I'll say it again. Yeah, I think one of these heroes that's that's not just like devastated as far as what he can do. If you have a player that's really good on that hero, you pick it, you gotta give them a chance. You know, you're gonna be landing all of, all of the abilities, all of the attacks, the combos that you need to. Clucky is doing a great job there. And we, we talked about it, but now we're moving into map number two on Harbor. And this is TKS's comfort pick. You know, they did get beat on it earlier, but this 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 really is where they shine, these 2v2 scenarios. So Vivid Nas, why don't you break it down for us? Coming off of that game, TKS must really be feeling themselves. Of course, as you kind of said there, TKS is like the harbor map. They've had even though you know, we've had a bit of slip-ups so far in this Dominion series in Harbor. This is a staple map for themselves. What's really important about Harbor in general is if you're fighting on that C and A point, you need to finish off uh, the fights as quick as possible, just so you kind of cut off the Serpent's head and don't allow for any of the people, uh, enemy respawning, to come on the point. Cut off the Serpent's head. Let's see if they can do it. Harbor, this is potentially the map that's going to send TKS to a grand final reset or do the Black Jackals come in, take a win and one more step on their way towards a grand final victory only time will tell and all of these players have begun to become friends of time as time is the only thing that has taken them down yeah, all of these players with a very unique relationship with time. As uh, my vocal cords are definitely feeling the time that we've been talking. <laughs> and my vocal cords definitely want Black Jackals to, uh, to get uh, two games in a row here. But my heart says I want TKS to win and bring this to a grand final reset. We've earned it. We, we've, we've waited this long to get to the finals. I want to see a reset, damn it. Uh, let's see if uh, TKS are going to give it to us. Ladies and gentlemen, we are into the map and we're going to be into B. Lucky's eating a lot of damage in the middle of this fight. Not exactly where he wants to be. No landing uh, some pretty good damage there. And now we see Jafu coming in, trying to land those hits onto Rippy as he's repeating in the back. Nice GB onto Mo. Going to close things out there. Pretty even fight thus far. Will Lin finding himself a little bit in trouble here as now he's finding himself 2v1, but the backup is going to come into Usada Mago. He's trying to get in there, and that revenge, if not giving them the fight, is at least going to give him the ability to run away from the fight. Will Lin 
throwing these kicks out. Lands that uh, that sickle rain, and now it's Rippy who's forced to try and run away. Ooh you saw Willen thinking about chasing that down, but just look at just holding the revenge. And it almost gives me a bit of anxiety to see it <laughs> not procked off. He'll finally do so. Give himself a Naruto run back over towards C. Excellent fight on B early on here. And Rippy not going down, but just having to drop back and go ahead and heal. Scorpion and Cluckies. Two versus three on C. We have Willen down low, but he able to get Clucky stalled up where they can go through and confirm that damage. A great job by the Black Jackals on C to take down Cluckies and Scorpion and do it very quickly to the point where they're able to heal back up and make other rotations. And now they're breaking back out onto B. Rippy finding himself all alone here up against three. Definitely not where he wants to be. Sadamago holding down that C point. And it is TKS on their comfort pick, finding themselves a little bit behind. However, this gang seems to have gone awry a little bit as Rippy's finding himself with almost full revenge meter. So they're going to back off and just let this 1v1 happen. All these flips coming in. Neutral guard break is going to catch Will in. Goes for it again, but the key eye is going to make sure that Rippy is out of stamina. Will in with a little bit of advantage. That guard break's going to come through, and one more little mix is going to close this out for him. Nice deflect oh, though. Oh my god, he's still Neutral alive. GB, it's anyone's match. Nice GB it. again, Rippy, Rippy with Rippy the clutch. Too. Oh god, I, I thought Rippy was going down. Dude, those are the plays right there. And as we say it, Willen drops, Wheat takes down Jafusa, and Black Jackals, you know, they have the point lead, but TKS seem to be making the clutch plays across the map. Oh man, I cannot believe the composure from Rippy. I mean, how many good things can we say about him today? He's getting a little greedy at this point. He's just trying to hog all the spotlight. That was a ridiculous 1v1 finding himself low on life there. Team Killing Service, 520 points to the 458. 466, I could just keep counting it up the whole time. Black Jackals though, it's a close game. We, he's low. He has enemies from the front and behind. Scorpion coming up the ramp, trying to join his team in B. It's an awkward position, and Mo seeing an opportunity to squirt up towards A. It looked like there was a ledge potential uh, attack there, but it was whiffed. Willen taking down Wheat. Jafasat, he's going to be able to get himself a kill onto Rippy. And with that, they've got B. They've got C. He can get back and heal. Mo and Willen, they're contesting on A, but it's Scorpion and Clucky's that are going to look to make this defense, and they're doing a pretty good job thus far. Will Lin, he's got Clucky's up against the wall, connected, good damages there. Can they get the shove, maybe throw Will Lin off the ledge? It's not going to happen. Scorpion, low stamina, he wants to drop back. Rippy's here. Rippy should be trying to get onto Will Lin, but Will Lin being uh, evasive until he's connected. Rippy does get the kill, and with that, it's going to be a new brutal run back over to C because C's being contested. Look at these quick rotations. I mean, that was instant. As soon as Rippy got that kill, he was flooding out of A. Now A, it's Kusada Mago left in a 1v1 with Scorpion. Headbutt turns into the whiff. Scorpion faints out. Counter guard break is there. Another CGB. Scorpion just kind of playing with his food. Really got to watch the positioning here as any GB in that one position could have ended up with him getting ledged. And that is going to be Usada, Mago, and Scorpion. This is a very important fight. Oh, he's going to land the heavy and get the heavy execution here as well. The long execution. And it looks as though TKS already also took control of A. Uh, sorry, also con took control of C. So now the, the dreaded situation, there is no home point for Black Jackals to heal on. Where do they go? Uh, I don't know, but Jafasa just flooded into A, and I forget, I don't know, I didn't quite see who it was, his ally. I saw them, that they were standing right on the ramp above B. They must have gone to contest A, or just clear out B. Whatever the case, Jafu's left to his own devices. He eventually will get a little bit of a, a help here, as willing on the respawn. Oh, Rippy caught with a couple heavy attacks, and Jafu's going to come around from the side, hit that kill. Willen actually getting the kill, rather. Oh, but Revenge, he almost wasn't oh. able to trigger it, but Wheat able to trigger it and stay alive. Willen thinks he can slice through even all of that shield barrier damage. Wall knock. He's going to get the knee. Willen only needs one light, one kick to knock him off to get that kill, and he's going to get it right there. Mo takes down Cluck. He's Willen taking down Wheat. And uh, Willen starting to come into his own here. 14 minutes in, Black Jackals have a very strong advantage at this point with C and B going their way. TKS, things are really getting tight for them. 
TKS, yeah, things are getting tight, but we did see Wheat unlocked Fury Flask, so look to see him use this here to get TKS back into the game. It's going to have to be a good one, and this is a perfect opportunity right now as the fight has broken out fully onto B, both teams here in mass, and Rippy doing the best he can, but I really want to keep my eyes on Wheat trying to move in through the back of the fight here, get that flash down. Clucky's is going to go down. It's just seeming like he's a little bit too late. Scorpion's going to retreat back to his home point to try and heal up. Uh, and, and here's Wheat in this 1v2 scenario. Actually just eats the heavy. GB's going to come through. Light doesn't close it out, though. So now Wheat finding himself in a little bit of advantage. The out of stamina light, though. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Wheat gets taken down by the out of stamina light. Yeah, I mean, he's running a little bit different of a build, didn't have the Fury Flash to throw it. Even having his Tier 4 unlocked, it's just not able to, to capitalize with his team. Look at the point score, though. This is Black Jack who's about to put Team Killing Service into breaking, and there is blood on the map right now. Black Jackals, they have an opportunity to seal the deal here on Harbor. Willen, he's low, TKS is breaking, things are dire, Clucky's moves on in, can Clucky's get anything, nice track to come on through, and that's going to be a rally coming through by TKS to get a respawn on the map, Black Jackals though still oh! have the advantage by about 150 points, nice shove off the ledge, Clucky's, but then he drops down! With his dying breath off of the back of getting hit by that nail bomb, Manages to get the ledge and make this actually winnable for Scorpion. What a heroic play here. Gonna land the guard break. Kusada Mago gets hit by the heavy. Rippy coming in now. Ooh. That is going to be a kill. TKS really needed this one. We'll have to see if they're able to flood back out. But unfortunately for TKS, it does look like they are breaking with one member down. And that is 1,100 points for Black Jackals. What a heroic effort from Clucky's. But it looks like Black Jackals have the advantage here. TKS breaking. I'm shaking. This is so intense of a situation. Four versus three. You can still make an amazing play. It don't count anyone out at this point, although Rippy is low. Moe's burning on fire. Rippy's gonna fall. Black Jackals looking like they're gonna secure map number two here on Harbor. A, what, a map that was just back and forth, but Black Jackals making the most important plays when it mattered the most. It's all a matter of timing as uh, so thematic here in the grand finals. Black Jackals coming through, tying the series up one to one. They are one game away from locking in $10,000 and being the grand finals champions. I mean, this is just insane. You'll love to see it. This is what it's all about. Going into game number three. I, I you know, I really thought that TKS had the advantage early on there. But ultimately, look at the score. It really tells the story here. Will Lin, 12 and 4 on the Shinobi. Jafu, 9 and 4. Kusada Mago, 8 and 2. And 11 and 3 on Mo. When Mo and Will Lin are popping off, this team just performs so, so well. And now they're heading in to map number 3 with their map pick, Sanctuary Bridge. Whew. I mean, I, yeah, they got the kills. I'm looking at the objectives though as well. They had nine taken to the to the three of TKS. Um, I, I'm just I'm ready for map three. I think it's Sanctuary Bridge. Um, so if Vivinaz is here and ready to break it down for us, I think we should just keep on rolling. Look, possibly. Oh, <laughs> my right, well, bad. Uh, now Jumping the gun. On, uh, yeah. On, on a little bit of a break, but uh, I mean, let's talk about this because we the 2v2 map that we expected TKS to have the advantage on is the one they lost, and the more team fight focused map that we expected Black Jackals to win is the one that TKS won. We're going to do another team fight map, so I really think this is anyone's game here. You know, it's so hard to guess who's going to come out on top. Really, every single fight is on, on a knife's edge. So. Yeah, absolutely. Knife's edge. This could go either way. Okay, and possibly for the last time here today, we have Sanctuary Bridge. If we're kind of following the pattern, Black Jackal selected the first map, they lost it. TKS selected the second map, they lost it. So if all goes to plan, my boys at TKS may be able to clutch out here on Sanctuary Bridge. We did see them lose out against Black Jackals on this one last time around, but hopefully they'll be a bit better at performing on these uh, early team fights to snowball their victory. 
Oof. Snowballing a victory on Sanctuary Bridge to potentially win the grand final to take home all the money, money, the glory, the honor, the respect of your peers. So hinky. Do you think Black Jackals take this? Or do you think TKS reset us and send us into our second best of three? You know, Harbor has just been such a strong map the entire Dominion series for TKS. I can't see how they wouldn't be a little bit shaken coming off of that loss. That being said, they did win out on Overwatch, a map they weren't expected to win, so they can do it again. They probably have to be talking about that going into this game number three. I think they can do it. I think we can get to a reset, but only time will tell. Only time will tell. And here we are, points A, B, and C, as we'll go in to B with a soft little uh, curvy angle by the camera. Shout out to the cameramen and women that have been working today. They're playing their own game and it's been so smooth. So as we get into this, you gotta just respect all the work that everybody's putting into this production. We'll watch Job, who's been chunked down below 50%. Rippy's gonna connect, put him down below 30% health. Switching back over to Willen. Willen, he's getting thrown around like a ragdoll. Rippy is just playing like he is the boss over here. You better listen to what Rippy's saying, or he's about to Rippy you throw out Job. Jumping back in. Rippy, will he be able to get it? He's got it. Wheat Scott caught Kusadamago. Willen's down a Scorpion. TKS, take three. They don't lose anybody. What a phenomenal start. A phenomenal start, but Scorpion and Gluckies are going to have to get this kill finished very quickly if they not want to not face the entirety of Black Jackals coming in off the respawn. They managed to do it with that double headbutt gank. Wheat coming in as well, so... TKS with complete control of this map. It was so important they finished that kill quickly and they came up big. Coming up big, I, I mean, it's, uh, I'd call it coming up huge. Whatever the case, you can see Black Jaggles, they're a little shaken. They're really taking their time to think about where they're going to move across this map and they're waiting for Mo to get out here as well. Now Mo's going to be... Looks as though uh, Will Lin actually in the back of that fight is trying to go for the home point, but he's going to get caught out by Rippy. A little bit of a Shinobi mirror going on here. Wheat finding himself in a 1v2 situation against Jafu and uh, Usada Mago. Lucky's gets into the mix here as well, and now no one on either home point has broken out into another all-out 4v4. Scorpion trying to catch this back cap attempt is going to get chased uh, down, though. Getting held off of that point by Mo. Mo is going to make sure he tries and takes this back cap. Scorpion not able. To, oh, actually, no, they do get up there in time. Rippy's able to catch him, but finding himself with one HP, and have to play very elusive. Mo and Scorpion both pretty equal life. Rippy actually lands the sickle rain, but one zone, anything is going to finish him off here. He's going to land that kick into the roll, into the kick again. Rippy once again on low life, finding himself in a disadvantageous situation, but coming up pretty big here, and now making this very winnable oh. one two for Scorpion, who actually is going to catch him with that zone off the Sifu stance. Gang's going to come through, though. Ab actually able to dodge the hug. Unblockable gets parried, though, and that will be the end for Scorpion. That being said, look up at the score. Black Jackals have taken back a big portion of the map, but TKS's early advantage is still intact. So, Hinky, don't you dare tell me where to look on my screen. I, I was going to look at the score anyway, and you're right. It's, uh, it's a very tight one. Um, TKS appeared to be running away with it, but this is Sanctuary Bridge. This is the magic. I mean, you make one wrong move, and everything can go against you. You could go from a triple cap to being triple capped yourself in the other direction. Right now, Black Jackals were able to re-secure their own home point. Now moving out into B, and uh, you got you got to know that right now, Clucky's He's just sweating bullets over here, looking for that ledge. Every single chance he gets, so dangerous, gonna run under the gate. Is everybody kind of squirting up towards uh, this A point? And it looks like Willen's gonna hold Clucky's off down here on the ledge, meaning there's a 2v1 up on the high point. This is a good job by Willen, I think, because he wants to keep the disruption, but Clucky's looking for the ledge, the Warlord, he's got it. Right when it mattered the most, he gets up there. He's gonna fight Kusada Magu, one over the top. He's gonna be getting the execution off the back of this. And uh, Kluckies really just making two absolutely clutch oh. plays for his team. 
and Rippy, he's going to be able to come over the top and get the kill as well. Rippy getting himself an execution. Black Jackals have three executed members across the map. It is 900 to the 280 points over here. Uh, TKS it left me almost speechless. What an incredible play from Rippy. Really tricky with his mix-ups. You saw him land that deflect, and then he just stared him in the face. And the thing that most people want to do after the deflect from Shinobi is dodge, because they expect that kick to come in. He's able to catch the dodge with the guard break, close out that kill, and now Team Killing Service finds himself breaking the Black Jackals 1,000 to 300 points. Absolutely dominant. All right, this is literally what it all comes down to. Uh, just take that back. They have rally, so very important for Black Jackals to go ahead and rally. Quickly right back into breaking, though. Uh, as quickly as they rally, they are broken. Blood is in the water. TKS, they have a couple low members on their team, but Raider looking healthy. Warlord looking healthy. Black Jackals. Looks like JJ dropping down low there. Mo wants to get back. Clucky's so just going to try and zone him right there. Not quite going to connect. See, Clucky's continuing to chase. What are you, what are you doing, Mo? What are you doing, Mo? Oh, he's not gonna get it. Clucky's got himself the kill. Will Lin, he's low. Rippy and Wheat are there. They're gonna be able to get it, and that leaves only Shugo on the map. Ladies and gentlemen, Team Killing Service will not go quietly into the night. They will stand tall and they will be taking the first best of three series to reset this grand finals bracket. What a phenomenal performance from TKS here at the end. They'll get the ledge, don't get the ledge kill, but it's just a matter of time. There you go. We will take it with some style points at the end. Defenders win, TKS are here for real. One of the biggest advantages of having the Shinobi in your lineup is that ability right there. You saw Rippy multiple times noticing the low players on the side of Black Jackals and just immediately using that Naruto run, as we call it, to get onto the point and stop those heals from happening. Ultimately, the, the resources from TKS, the, the backup came in and they were able to put enough pressure to put them into an early breaking TKS, forcing the bracket reset. Yeah, forcing the reset. Clucky's... Th Three objectives taken, six kills, one death. It's phenomenal. Slacks, what do you think about this? I think this is exactly what we were looking for, gentlemen. This was the match that honor is made out of. Zero Mizaru. Fantastic, all right? That's what I want to see. The bracket reset. You just don't see this in other esports. You just don't see the boys coming back being able to win it again, but that is the joy of For Honor. If you want to take out your opponent, you don't just get them weak, you got to execute their asses. And that's what brings us here today, my friends. I am so pumped for the bracket reset. One more chance in NA to take it all after this entire Dominion series. That's the shit I'm talking about. In fact, show me the bracket. I want to show them the bracket reset for you nerds out there that don't know esports. You know, those nerds out there that don't know a bracket. All right, take a look at where we at here. Team Killing Service, we are back again with this reset because Killing Service came in from those lowers. They get to go in and Black Jackals gets one more chance. Now, this is a massive, massive thing because of momentum. You know, Team Killing Service, they've been playing and just winning and winning and winning in these lowers after losing at the beginning. But now, my friends, Black Jackals can maybe take advantage of that momentum. Maybe they're starting to get a little bit tired. So let's go ahead. Whew, I got to come to, I literally didn't let a single other person talk on this panel. Gentlemen, I am so sorry. <laughs> I just, you guys get to talk all the time, all right? I am so hyped. We actually have the map draft. No breaks. Let's go fast past this. And here we go. Mr. Sohanky, what do you think about these picks? I gotta say, Slacks, I really appreciate the break for my vocal cords. Uh, but as you see here, we're just running it back. It was Black Jackals in the first series with these maps getting the victory. It was TKS in the second series in our grand finals. But there is an L next to both of their names now. This is it. This is the finals. This is the final finals. And we're going to see who comes out on top in this dire situation. Ooh. Hell yeah, hell yeah. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a look at this map right here, at this game right here. We got predictions. 
The uh, Twitch chat, they do say, indeed, Black Jackals will be taking it now before they thought it was team killing service. Things have changed. And I know they're very, very excited in the chat. All those guys trying to get their viewer rewards. You get some bonus time here, my friend. So answer the questions immediately because you're running out of time, much like we are running out of games. This is it. The final series. No redos. Humanist. What do you think about these boys? Uh, oh, well, are we in the I game? Mean, okay, we're... Go, humanist, go! Flex, you're killing me! Yes, yeah, shut up! The game is starting! It's <laughs> Black Jackals versus Team Killing Service. Gentlemen, please Flex. take it away for the grand final of finals resets. For honor, baby! Let's go! Dominate! Do yourself! <laughs> I think I finally figured it out here. Team Service has two L's in their team name. Black Jackals only has one L in their team name. Therefore, this is Black Jackals best of three. They're about to run through it here. I don't have any more caster curses left in me, so Inky. So as we move in this, there is only truth that will be spoken. Well, the truth that's going to be spoken is going to be spoken in blood right now on the c point we'll see how these teams decide to play it i wouldn't be surprised to see tks go with more of a team fight focus as they were the ones with the advantage in that department in this previous grand final series will Lin hanging out on the back of this fight He's gonna try and do what he can to get in and make sure that wheat doesn't get those big externals see who gets the advantage here yeah, I love that Willen was actually emoting uh, in the beginning of that fight. We really low. Willen could go ahead and try to get onto him, um, but he's kind of zoned out right there. Scorpion, very low. Scorpion, important that he lasts and survives through these fights for his teammates. Wheat, right in between two members. He gets himself out back against the wall. Scorpion's very low. Scorpion goes down. Willen, he's going to be able to get that one. Looks like TKS on the back foot. Two down, one executed here early on. Black Jackals have the advantage. Jop will go down. Rick finally able to get that one. Clucky's remains alive. C point not captured just yet. No points captured on the map. Mo, you got to connect on this one. But he's got the block. He's got the damage. Clucky's, does he have the skills to make the to pay the bills? He will be taken down as well. He gets not one, but two and an honorable kill here. And a lot of renown going the way of Will Lin, which has been super quick for Black Jackals when they're winning. Yeah, Will Lin already with two tiers unlocked, and you saw that key eye come through. That was really the reason that Lucky's coming off of the back of that B fight wasn't able to have much of an advantage. Now TKS doing their best to get any room on this map here, but Scorpion finds himself very low against three members of the Black Jackals. Swarming like a pack of jackals. It's Scorpion chunked down by his counterpart, JJ. Mo able to get that and able to... Uh, to get an execution off the back of it. And Wheat just absolutely dumpstered. Look at his corpse there. Just It's just completely spread out as Casada Mahago took everything, left nothing. A little bit of his emotes coming through. Jafu's having a good time over here. I think that's one of the things, uh, I mean, you pointed it out uh, as a funny thing, but Will Lin was emoting at the start, but it's important when you're in these high pressure situations that you remember, hey, this is supposed to be fun too. You know, it is a competition. We are playing for a lot of money, but this is ultimately what we love to do. It's nice to see Black Jackals playing loose here in the end. Playing loose and, uh, you know, it's tier three feet. It's been unlocked by Will Lin here in the first two and a half minutes or so. So this is exactly what you need if you're looking for a snowball. Rippy low on stamina, but wanting to get onto Mo. Looks like he's finally got Mo isolated on the side. Trying to get a disable, something to follow up with the top on. If he can get uh, some sickle rain coming through as well, but it's Will Lin who's being the real disruptor. He's low, one heavy, would take down Will Lin. He's got wheat pushed up against the edge. I can't believe Mo's still alive here. Can't believe Will Lin's still alive. Oh my God, finally, Mo's gonna be able to take down wheat. Will Lin, he's gonna get chunked down with Rippy takes two. And with that, Rippy will be able to get the revive on point C. Black Jackals were doing an incredible job of surviving. They were both extremely low. Ultimately, though, Rippy clutching it out, making sure he gets that revive. Now we see this all-important gank coming in. Kusada Mago is going to go down to Clucky's. That is both home points, and we see this all day today. When you have control of both home points, you basically control the flow of the entire match. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there when there is nowhere to heal on the map, this suddenly gets a lot harder. It's it's already a tough situation, but it becomes nigh impossible if you got half your health bar and nowhere to heal on the map. A and Z controlled. B is in control of the Black Jackals. Jafu just clearing out, farming these minions down here. He wants to go ahead and get some of these feats unlocked. Uh, but we look over back on C, and it's Will in with... Remember, he had that tier 3 feet unlocked pretty early. Hasn't unlocked the fourth just yet. Rippy dancing around himself. Rippy, he's doing pretty good with his renown level as well. Rippy hanging on the edge of the fight. Nobody quite able to connect as he's remained elusive. Rippy gets on to Willen, but Willen able to dodge back. Nice parry there. Rippy takes huge chunk damage from Willen as the guard break comes right back the other way. He's knocked back. Oh, they give him the one, two, and Willen lights out, baby. They'll turn around and they're going to land the one, two onto Mo as well. Mo. Buying some timers is he able to get a parry back off onto Weep, but a great job here by Rippy and company. Uh, TKS, a great fight on C in just when they needed it. Executing that 2v2 to perfection, and honestly, the speed with which that gank comes through when it's done properly is so unexpected. We just saw they were taken down from about 80% to 20% and maybe a half of a second in the midst of a 2v2 where you might expect a peel to come through, but nothing doing. TKS playing out of their minds. And that is going to be a nail bomb as well on the side of Rippy, going to make sure that they actually are able to take control and maintain control of A. I think Will Lin dropped his nail bomb as well. Oh, great job from Clucky's just to trigger it off, making sure since he was about to die anyway. Now I believe they're probably going to try and go for this res after they get this gank. Yeah, definitely. This is a great highlight by you, Sohinki. So important that he could. you would love to see the nail bomb go off right in the middle of a big team fight. But Willen really not able to connect. And he's just sitting on a sliver of life. He's going to get destroyed. Rippy able to take that one. Jafu now left to his own devices over here on A, the point that they rarely seem to be focusing on, but a two versus two, this literally just comes down to skill and micro play right here. You have to land your, your attacks, your abilities. You can't land, let the damage just be landing on you. You have to remain elusive. And as I say this, it's Jafu catching Rippy with a nice heavy there and putting him down for a dirt nap. TKS have the advantage right now, but only by about 100 points here. This is anybody's game. Anybody's game and Clucky's doing a great job. It was 1v3, but Kusada Mago deciding that he really wanted to go and try and stop that heal from Scorpion. But uh, I don't know what it is about Clucky's. They just cannot get the skill on him. And Clucky's going to find himself a kill there as well, forcing Mo out of the point. Oh, I believe we have a, a little bit of an error. I'm not sure if that is from. I believe that was the game. My bad. I, I pulled the cable. I pulled the cable. Wow. Things were getting a little, out of a, a little out of hand. You know, they nobody they shouldn't have given me this much power, so he, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I mean the master router sitting right behind you, uh, maybe not the best idea, especially since uh, I know for a fact that you've been doing some illegal betting on this. So, uh, you know, just absolutely despicable. Can't believe you. It's illegal in some countries, so he. So, <laughs> but we don't have to focus in on that. Um, the, the, so this was going pretty well here uh, for TKS. Black Jackals were, what, only about 100 points uh, behind there, 600 to 500-ish. A pretty even matchup thus far. It was a really even match, and uh, I, I just hope that TKS can maintain their composure. You know, it's such a hard battle to keep the Black Jackals down, and the fact that they have the advantage in that game and then the disconnect comes through, it's going to be very frustrating. Uh, so hopefully they're able to maintain their composure, just realize, hey, we did it once, we can do it again and uh, maintain control of the game in, in this uh, in this redo. Hello, I, I'm back. I'm back from uh, the volcano, my friends. Uh, uh, it was uh, I was d busy doing something, but the crusade's off for now. I have returned uh, with some news. We, we are going to try to get back into that one. Uh, but there is a chance that uh, the players may have to continue without us. They may have to keep fighting for their lives, and then we will see how it turns out here. Now, you guys thought this is a 49 to 51 percent here as uh, we must see what will happen here with these teams in the grand finals uh, an air of mystery very important to have in uh, these grand fights you know the fog of war as they call it it's a real thing uh humanist please don't laugh at me uh but uh yes uh, an incredible match that we've been seeing so far we'll see if we can't jump back into that bad boy welcome to the world 
of online tournaments. Ah, uh, one day when the world is a uh, better suited, hopefully not turns out like the land from For Honor, which is irrevitably effed up. I right, let me tell you, I don't know if you guys know the lore, but it's a goddamn shit show out there in the For Honor world, okay? But uh, maybe the real world will be able to catch up again one day. Uh, so, Hinky, uh, I obviously we want to get back in there, but uh, we will talk for now. How are you feeling, buddy? You doing all right? Uh, you, you, you think we're gonna make it through this match? Will we be able to get back in, brother? I think we will. And I just want to talk about something you just said. And I think if there's one thing that this mm. entire Dominion series has proved to me, it's that a land Dominion series would be super hype. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to get back to. We all want to be in Vegas. Uh, that way, at least the losers can go throw some craps or something like that, you know. Uh, but oh. a, a land Dominion Series finals, man, nothing would beat that. That would be so sick. So that's really what I'm looking forward to, being able to, to get back in person, uh, do these in-person events, have an audience even. How amazing would that be? Absolutely. Uh, uh, Humanist, what is your dream of the future here? Uh, do you have any? I have a dream, Slacks. Well, that's that a shame. Uh, get rid of humanists if you could. Uh, thank you so land. much. Uh, th th Don't th you th dare. Th 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 get them out. Get them out. Uh, we're going to bring you back in, uh, my boy Vivid Nas here, for a little discussion. Now, Vivid Nas, uh, you <laughs> get the humanist out. All right? I'm not kidding around. I want him out of here. I don't care about his dreams and admirations, okay? I dream that you would actually take point B for once in your goddamn life, which you never do. He always goes for the enemy back cap. Anyway, Vivid, my friend, we made some predictions for who would take this series. We made some predictions for who will take this game. You both said the opposite one. And I want to know if you guys felt differently. Now, Black Jackals versus Team Killing Service, my friends, as we wait to see the results of that game and if we can get back in the wit. You still feeling confident, Vivid? I feel TKS getting the bracket reset is very much just what they do best. These guys are very composed when it comes to these uh, these finals. We've seen them in the, in the previous majors when they've made it to the finals and they have been on point. There's just no stopping them. And I feel like Black Jackals have played very good up to the grand finals, but we felt they were they, they've, they've kind of faltered a bit after the reset or even before the reset. Mo hasn't really been playing up to up, up, up to scratch compared to how he played up to the grand final. So I'm very confident that TKS has has got what it takes to to actually seal this one through. And when we saw there before the the crash, uh, TKS was winning. So uh, on a map that Black Jackal selected once again. So I, honestly, if if that doesn't say TKS is gonna take this one through, then I don't know what is. The dream there, but. The Black Jackals, you know, they've been looking strong. They've gotten some hits here. So, Hinky, do you agree? Or do you think your boys are still, your prediction still strong? I think my prediction is still strong, but I, I will say I, I did predict TKS like the last three majors. So, I'm not surprised to see that it's these two teams. Uh, definitely the two teams that I was targeting to be the best in NA. So, really not a big surprise to me that they're both in the finals here. Uh, it is a surprise to me, however, that that they were able to claw their way back into this so well. Uh, we'll see how they're able to compose themselves. You know, this this is a very unfortunate scenario because it's one of those things where, you know, momentum is a big thing in a tournament. When TKS had the momentum, they were really taking it to them on Overwatch once again. Uh, Black Jackals, they're, they're kind of getting a second chance at life here in this reset. Very fortunate for them, very unfortunate for them. Absolutely. Well, you know what? Talk about second chances and some more life here. Uh, you guys in the chat should be ecstatic. More time for you to get your viewer re rewards, my friends, as we do some slight repairs here. But while we're fixing our on-fire servers, why don't we go ahead and check in with our boy Egg, who's playing right now. In case you missed this interview that we did earlier, so Hinky got a chance to catch up with the wonderful Egg. Uh, have an Egg in this trying time, if you will. Yo, Egg, what's going on, dude? Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're just going to have a quick conversation about the uh, the major here and more so about you. We really want to get to know you as one of our main competitors here. And speaking of competition, the first question I want to ask you is, you know, a lot of people play For Honor casually. What was it that made you, Egg, want to take this to the next level and get into the actual competitive scene? It's a good question. It's a uh, question of that or the answer to that, sorry, is actually pretty simple. It's my friends all the time 
anything involving competition, we like to better ourselves and we fight each other a lot. So it started off as onesies <laughs> and then we noticed that twosies were getting popular. So we did more twosies. That was Mo and, Mo and I. And then when foursies really started popping off, that's when we joined that side. You know, we started doing a lot of scrims and for glory. And yeah, from there just took off, just trying to better ourselves, get better than everyone else, pretty much. Gotcha. So was yeah. was esports ever like a big goal of yours, or was it just like you love for honor, and this was kind of like the next step of your love for the game? No, this was the first game like multiplayer based. I guess you could say that that uh, I wanted to go competitive, and before this, it was really just like Fallout New Vegas and Skyrim, like any Bethesda oh, damn, that's crazy. RPG games. Yeah, I only ever played RPGs. Wow. So, yeah. so going from RPGs to uh, competitive for honor, competing at a a game that's really technical must have been quite a shift. Oh yeah, absolutely. I was only just used to left clicking, killing death claws, killing super <laughs> mutants, whatever it was. That's all I did. So I know you and Mo both uh, competed in the first major, but Black Jackals, they were kind of an unknown going into major number three. Uh, it seems like a lot of guys are putting you as their favorite to win. Do you prefer it when you were kind of more unknown or, or is it kind of nice being at the top? To be honest, I'm kind of indifferent about it because Mo and I have been playing for so long, uh, as well as um, our other players, well, not really, not so much Speg. He kind of came in a little bit er uh, later. Mm -hmm. But uh, we just play as friends pretty much and play as best as we can. Our synergy is really good, so we just play normally. So Black Jackals, as we just talked about, there, you guys are kind of considered uh, to be at the top, but if there's any team that's really scaring you guys or a team that you think might be tough to beat who you think that's going to be as of now lately we've been scrimming a good amount because i came back from a little hiatus it would be btu they've taken mm -hmm. the most maps off of us. still pretty much every scrim session we have played but they've gotten very close sometimes and into double breaking situations so that's btu i'd say so when Black Jackals wins the tournament. Do you have uh, any plans for the money? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm actually working right now at a, uh, a hospital as a physical therapist aide, and that's what I want to do as my career. So I would put that into PT school, or that would nice. go to that. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, so uh, the last question okay. I've got prepared is what are your wishes for things to add or change when and if, let's just say when, uh, they make a for honor too. What I would like to see added is definitely warriors from different cultures, which I know they're doing mm -hmm. right now, but they can definitely expand on that in the future. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, more heroes, different cultures. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much, Egg, for joining us. I appreciate it, and uh, best of luck to you and Black Jackals in the tournament. Thank you for having me. So thank you. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to get back into the game. We have spoken to the teams. We have uh, looked at the rule book, and I've got some great news for you. It is time for the grand <coughs> finals reset. We're bringing it back to the beginning, baby. That is right. The pirate has stolen your game, and we are starting all over again. Black Jackals, we get to see them fight for that grand finals reset one more time versus Team Killing Service. Buckling, get ready. Ahoy, the mateys. We're back in again. Take it away, my wonderful captain. Wow, nobody can really do it like you can, Slacks. Uh, it's just it's a thing of beauty to be here with you hosting this. And uh, it's, uh, it's some deja vu. You thought we did the the grand final reset. We're doing it again, Sohiki. You like it? Uh, well, I do like that we're getting to see more for honor. It, you know, it uh, hurts a little bit if TKS ends up losing this game, but uh, let's not let's not jump ahead of ourselves. Let's just get into the match here. We're seeing this typical three and one split. Let's see who comes out on top in this early fight. I mean, this is literally what it all comes down to. We've we've seen both of these teams. Uh, it's gone both ways, rather. Each team capable of taking these 3v3, 4v4 team fights. Uh, and I would say Team, team Killing Service has kind of warmed up as the day has gone on. As we say this, Wheat catching Will and for some nice heavy damage coming from the right side. Rippy getting chomped down. Rippy's got to be backed up the stairs to reposition, look for an opening. He's just not moved target. You see he wants in. He sees Will in. Will is like, okay, buddy, ask you as well. Rippy, nice roundhouse there. 
moves in. Oh, he's got Malin. That was the opening they were looking for. They pulled the trigger. TKS, take down two on C. Bo, all he can do is stall out. Well, I say all he can do is stall out, but those are some low health bars. Actually, perfectly played. He might be able to get close here, but it's not. It's perfectly played in reverse. King killing service. Doing absolutely everything that they needed to on this C point. Yeah, Mo doing his best to stall there, and uh, we're seeing a little bit of a ladder dance here, but Kusana Mongo was going to wish that he had just gotten up on the point and maybe jumped off the ledge as he's going to get finished off. Need some renown right there. Reinforcements are coming in on the side of Black Jackals, but a great early fight there. Oh, and that's going to be a ledge for Cluckies. Very well done. Jafu finding himself in a 2v1 now. Wheat and Cluckies here with this gank. The headbutt, ooh, a little bit missed time there, it looked like. Like he's going to eat a little bit of damage, but now uh, some more re uh, reinforcements coming in, allowing Clunkies to get back and heal on the seat. Yeah, this Warlord hero is uh, not too shabby. Jafu, low health, but almost has revenge triggered. They will be able to get the kill before that's going to be procced off. And Scorpion is rewarded for his long run across this perilous bridge that's barely being held together. Scorpion coming in here hot and heavy from the left side of the stairs on point C. He's going to be met by Will and, and Mo. Scorpion turning it up. His ally Rippy is shoved up in the corner and just getting absolutely abused right now. Scorpion, can you do anything? No. Rippy is chunked down. Black Jackals connecting on almost everything there. And they're going to take Scorpion down from almost 75% of his health. Uh, that was incredibly well comboed up. Very well comboed, but a, a slight misstep there. They actually missed out on the heavy that would have given them the execution. Slightly mistimed it, and it was the sickle rain that finished off the kill. So unfortunately for them, Scorpion has already respawned, missing out on an opportunity for one of those long executions. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite them. Rippy and Cluck, he's moving in unison together here onto Mo, but Mo defending incredibly well. It's Cluckies that's taken the damage, and as you said, Scorpion back out on the map. He came in to B as well. Clucky is really not able to do anything, and he's going to try and squirt out the edge of this fight as he's incredibly low. Rippy not able to connect either. In fact, he's going to be guard broken and chopped with the 1-2 here. He's got to be back on the edge of the fight, but it's Will Lin, I think, that's back over there. Rippy has the revenge. Can he get something done? Can he get the kill here? Yeah, Rippy's got it! Playing the style, Rippy getting the kill here at the end. That revenge was playing a big deal for him. Unfortunately, though, did eat that unblockable at the end there. I think he was just not wanting to get guard broken, but ultimately ended up going down. Luckily, on the side of TKS, Luckies was coming in off of the respawn. So now TKS, they've had control of A this entire time. Even though C has flipped, they also have strong control of middle. We'll see if they want to maintain this AB controller if they're going to shift their focus back over to C. You look at the takedowns across the board, nothing really standing out like some of these just insane high kill games that we've had before, but these are just slow and steady team fights. It's methodical play and team killing service has a strong advantage here. Uh, it's not a screaming advantage, but a couple hundred points, especially when you're in the grand finals, feels pretty good on a map like Overwatch that you have to be in control of to be in the lead. Again, these Shinobis finding each other in the middle of this chaotic battlefield. And look at these guys dance. It is a thing of beauty to watch. Um, uh, really talented players play on these Shinobis. Fainting out into the guard break. And uh, Rippy coming through. He's going to get the execution on Will in. And he's going to win that Shinobi battle. Scorpion now. This is pretty important. Is being chased down by Kusada Mago on a sliver of life. Wheat really needs to win this. Excellent dodge to get rid of that unblockable and is going to close that kill out. Noticing the uh, gank coming in from Mo, so will a uh, be able to back off from this fight. Mo being forced to go back in and heal up on C though. And unfortunately, on the edge of that fight, what we called out at the start, Scorpion does go down to Kusada Mago. So now nowhere to heal for TKS. They're in a lot of trouble. are in a lot of trouble and i'm just going to be jumping in here stealing humanist's spot as they do want us to have the analysts go against each other for their predicted picks here so far black jackals do seem to have the lead quite convincingly actually they do have both of the home points both c and a leaving tks in a very tricky situation here sankey yeah, fortunately for them, they're all relatively healthy, and I think what they're going to look to do is rotate in off of this B point. They decided, it looks like, to send 
their team up to A. Interesting rotation through the C point to maybe make uh, Black Jackals flinch a little bit, but uh, giving Plucky's a little bit of space, he's gonna eat the heavy from Kusada Mago though. Not exactly what you wanna do to start this fight. Does manage to avoid that external from the Raider though. It's definitely not where he wants to be. Able to parry off that heavy. Pretty, I mean, it's definitely deceptively difficult to avoid those heavies because it is a variable timing, but Clucky's gonna get heavy out of this fight, the Demon Ball coming through. Scorpion taken down there, and now Clucky's gets guard Ooh. broken. Luckily for them, no executions, but man, convincing for Black Jackals. Yeah, and 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 Team Kill and Summer just losing players all across the map. Mo here on the long execute on Wheat. And it's almost like TKS just kind of need to wait for all of these respawns. They're losing that midpoint. They've lost both of the home points. And you just got to kind of re-strategize at this point and just kind of decide where you want to go. Looking at the Renown across the board, mostly tier fours are being unlocked here from the from the Black Jackals. Team Killing Service do have a way to go when it comes to the Renown. Mostly, most of them are on one or two feet. You can see their Cluckies, who is running the flask for this team, is only on rush which is uh, pretty worrisome when you have the Shigoki on the enemy team with all four feats. Yeah, we saw the situation earlier. I think it was on Flask where, once again, uh, they, there was control of both home points, and rather than try and death ball on one of the points, they instead went and uh, went for the 2v2s. I think TKS is kind of making the same mistake here. They're panicking just a little bit, trying to take too much of the map at once, really wanting to just win their 2v2s. And I understand they trust them, but this is the Black Jackals we're talking about. They're not going to be easy 2v2s, and especially when you have nowhere to heal, it's going to be really rough. I guess I guess they thought Wheat's got Star Wars banner. They do have an advantage when it comes to here, and I'm pretty sure Mo has already used the flags. And oh my, oh my god! That is so unfortunate there for Mo, as the ledge just kind of appears out of nowhere, and he falls to his demise. Just trying to see what he can do. Does have the revenge here. Let's rip on Rip. Service is important. That is execution. Oh, back at the, from the back, Wheat gets villain and knocks him into the ledge. And all of a sudden, they're out of breaking and could possibly break Black Jackals here with two members executed, Tanky. That's the first time I've ever seen your own team breaking actually be an advantage. The pit opens up underneath of his feet, and that is going to give TKS the advantage there. What an absolutely unfortunate turn of events if you're a fan of the Black Jackals. And now TKS, with control of C, with no control way. of B, is going to look to just force this breaking here. It looks like it's going to be a double breaking. The highest of drama in this bracket reset. 4v4 double breaking scenario. Black Jackals, team killing service. The life is pretty even, but unfortunately it is already one down Ooh, on the side no! of Black Jackals. Moe's going to get taken down as well. Four versus two. It's Will Lin very low on the Shinobi as well over on the C point. Kusada Mago trying to do his best up against Rippy and the likes of Cluckies, but this double headbutt gank along with the Sickle Rain is going to make short work of him. I'm not sure where Will Lin is on the map, but that is going to be yet 1100 points. They even unbreak. What an unfortunate turn of events. I don't think I've seen anything like that in my history of casting and playing for honor. The breaking scenario for your Look. team actually working out in your favor. <laughs> that was absolutely ridiculous. Kusada Mago is just not long for the world. Does manage to get the kill onto Rippy, but ultimately it is just a matter yeah, of time before TKS know. takes care You know what? It feels like TKS loves producing these high stake games for us. Every time they seem to be on my screen, the games always deliver. And what a first game on this bracket reset, Sahinki. Team Killing Service taking the map once again on Overwatch with us moving into Harbor for game two. Yeah, perhaps a little bit of karma on their side there. And uh, I was going to shout him out before that reset uh, happened due to that disconnect earlier, but we once again coming up big on this Raider. We've kind of been waiting for Wheat to come alive all day, and he's doing it at the exact right time, 12 and two, able to get that stalwart banner down in that fight when it really mattered. And and I mean, I mean, what do you, what, what more can you say? Karma was just kind of on TKS' side there. That was so crazy. Uh, I'm surprised he ended up in that situation no, noticing that the breaking was coming. You must, you must feel absolutely terrible being the Black Jackals knowing Basically, you lost that to the environment, I feel like. Uh, partly the reason you had Mo falling down, 
and a Willen tried to come to support and Wheat just managed to grab him with a good GB and all of a sudden <laughs> you find yourself in the breaking scenario and I was gonna say the EU side was more so dictated by how well the Raiders played and I feel like the NA side is dictated by how well the Shinobis have been playing but to see Wheat actually come out clutch for TKS and possibly the first game that he's played super well and to, to get this victory is so important here for TKS. Yeah, and with this Grand Finals reset, TKS taking an advantage, looking to maybe get a lion's share of this prize pool here today. These players are playing for quite a lot of Skrilla. Humanist, run us through it. Or potentially not, but I, I can run us through it. First place going to be taking home at $10,000. This is a $5,000 Bracket reset, essentially. Second place is going to be taking home the five grand. Third place, 3,500. And our last place team, better than you, just for making it here through that LCQ, are going to be running home with $2,000. Definitely nothing to sneeze at. Uh, really happy to see these prize pools growing for Dominion. And hopefully into the next Dominion series, they get even bigger. Yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's great to be winning this to get that honor, the credibility and the community is one thing to get that sweet cash in your hand surely is another thing and tks really have worked so incredibly hard to find themselves here in this series up one game in the best of three which has already been reset uh unbelievable to be here so hinky and you know no matter which way this goes i feel like this has just been an incredible grand final Definitely the most tightly contested series I think that we have seen yet. Obviously, we had that really close one with KS and on flash to start the day off, but this is proving to be even closer contested. Uh, normally, I would give the advantage to TKS going in on Harbor, but we did see them drop this map earlier, so this early fight is going to determine quite a bit. Yep. Uh, a and B capped early by TKS, Black Jackals, of course, going for C, and quickly everybody just comes into B. There's not a lot of minions to deal with here, but there are a lot of your opponent's heroes to deal with, and you have to be careful with these big zones that get thrown out. Everybody gets so tight together like that, it's really easy to get caught out. Speaking of caught out, it's Will Lin, who found himself right in the middle of things, and he, he moves over to the side, and the minions are like, nah, we shan't go this way, buddy. Will and really know where to go for him. Scorpion falls, Rippy able to take the will and then Rippy sucked it out to the side of this one. It's Kusada Mago who really turned up in that first mat uh, here in the bracket reset. And he's gonna try and get out of here, but no, Shinobi's not gonna let this happen. You literally have to play absolutely perfect or you're dead. And he's dead, but the oh! no, I saw Mogo up there earlier. He came back down, but he must have snuck back up there. You don't see that very often here in the professional Dominion series. Oh, Rippy just a little too focused on making sure he got that kill. And I mean, it was a really good pursuit. I honestly, I didn't even see Mogo up there. So uh, I'm not surprised that that drop kill was able to come in. And now Scorpion was trying to stall out on this point, but it's going to get executed. Really bad situation here now for TKS. Rippy's going to have to do quite a bit of anti-ganking. He's basically anti-ganking for his tournament life right here in this gank scenario up against Jafu and Will In. Able to dodge the kick. Very lucky to get out of that gank with his life. Now Clucky's excellent job from Rippy, making sure he can survive until the reinforcements came in. We'll see if Clucky is able to put some pressure here, but that Ki is going to come out just in time. And now uh, Kusada Mago joining the fight as well. But just enough anti-ganking once again. The JJ's coming in as well. Scorpion flooding back onto this point. This is really anyone's match. I mean, not only did Rippy stay alive, he dished out damage at that moment. I mean, so it, you said it when it's the most important, the most pressure moment of the entire tournament. Rippy turns it up. Kasada Mago will go and watch over his shoulders. He tries to stay alive. Not going to happen. Is Scorpion finally able to secure a kill for himself? It's important to Scorpion. I feel like he's, he's kind of, you know, not falling flat. But he's been a little bit more quiet in the last couple of matches. It's, it's so incredibly important for team killing service. They need this JJ to be getting work, to be getting these feats unlocked. So he has that phalanx uh, rather early uh, if he's going to get it at all. 
and Wheat, the player that TKS needed and turned up in the last match here, best of, in the first game of this best of three, joins the party. Jafu's low. Bucky's able to get himself a parry, trying to stay alive. Not going to happen. I think it was a storming tap that might have finished him off there. And with that, Blackjack was able to swarm over here onto Wheat, who thought he had an opening. Uh, and now he does, actually, with revenge and not a lot of stamina. Wheat's going to swing around, able to get one, turning. Wheat looking for more. Not going to be able to quite secure the kill onto, uh, onto two there, but able to definitely get one, and maybe he can get a, a parry off, uh, stay alive a little bit longer. Not going to happen. Wheat does drop down. Scorpion taking Jafu down as well. This is just juggled. This is this awkward kind of juggling of, of uh, team fight deaths and kills here as you have these staggered respawns. Yeah, definitely, and, uh, you know, we definitely, he really did all that he needed to do there. The reinforcements came in from Scorpion and Rippy. Now Rippy's going to get a kill, but I have to point this out. TKS has been letting B go, so this is a really important fight for them to finish. If the reinforcements keep coming in and they don't end up winning C point, then they've been giving up B this entire time, and that is going to be a huge problem for them, although just as I say that, it looks like the control is flipping. Oh, but the revenge from Mo. Dude, they, added, they needed it. They, TKS had to lock that down. Mo able to stay alive with the revenge triggered off. Rippy slips out over here onto the ramp, and he's chopped down, leaving Cluckies in a 1v1 with Jafu. Mo's going to heal up and then come up there and do some work if he needs to. Otherwise, Jafu's just continue to gonna play with his food. It's like, what are you going to do, Cluckies? Are you going to come in here or two heroes full health? No. Nah. He moves up to B. That's really his only decision on the map. When we look over towards A, Scorpion, incredibly low health. Will and trying to just be this slippery shinobi, something that you can't land any attack on. But matter of fact, they can. And Scorpion not only stays alive, he gets the kill. Unbelievable. Now Moe's here. He's like, I know how to play Zhang Jun too uh, with my easy cape. He's up against the wall. Scorpion looking to confirm damage off the back of Rippy. Getting the engaged and they've got him down 30% health. But it's going to be Mo getting the kill onto Scorpion. He's outnumbered, though, and overpowered. With that, Rippy will be getting the revive over here onto Scorpion, picking him up. He's actually going to let his ally do that. Yeah, looking to split the Renown there and hopefully uh, help uh, Cluckies get his feats. Really smart decision-making there, splitting out the Renown. And we called it out a little bit earlier during that C fight, but... It was a good job by TKS to make sure they reclaimed B, and even though they ended up losing out on C, now they have a big point lead, and they're making sure that they maintain that. That is always something they've been really good at, making sure that they're playing sort of the meta game, the macro game, on top of these fights. They're doing a good job here in this grand finals. Oh my gosh, the meta game, the macro game, the micro game, all the games coming together right now, and Mo stays alive! Nice parry! Uh, looks like Rippy was going to try and finish that off. Uh, Mo, does he have that revenge meter all the way up? Not quite, not quite all the way up. So Scorpion takes advantage of that, able to secure the kill before revenge is procked off. And ladies and gentlemen, look at this team killing service up one to zero in this best of three grand final here. Up a couple of hundred points. They have control on the map. They have control over A. There's a contest down in C. This is really important that Cluckies takes a good, clean fight here. If he can stall out on C, this could be just what team killing service need to lock this down and potentially take game two and the grand finals they could smell it 900 points they're 100 points away from putting black jackals into breaking and right now rippy is at full health plus he's got a little bit of a shield as well Wheat staying alive but getting chunked down quickly on the backside well and trying to get the kill he will be able to get the kill on the wheat but he's got to deal with rippy rippy the slippy cluckies he's low he's on the edge of the fight cluckies goes down to mo but remember cluckies with the first one here overall Rippy gets the kick, switches back over to Willen. Willen, he's like, uh, uh, left stance, right stance. What? Which is it going to be? Rippy's like, I don't care. Dodge back. Revenge procked off. The tags were there. Rippy's doing it, ladies and gentlemen. Rippy is absolutely playing out of his mind. He's leading the damage. He's got the kill. This is insane in a two versus one situation that not only does Rippy stay alive, but he gets the kill allowing time for TKS to continue to apply the pressure. And it looks like C is where everybody's committing their firepower. Right now, you have to win this if you're Black Jackals. There's really nothing else you can do on, on the map. So you put it all together. Oh my God, my heart is absolutely 
pounding out of my chest right now as Mo swaps targets over onto Clucky's. Clucky's had Jaffe on the side out of stamina. It's Mo. He's guard broken up. Can they connect the damage? No. Clucky shoved up against the wall. Mo stays alive. He's got the phalanx and he's going to go ahead and prop it. Prop it off right here at the, the perfect moment for his team. 10 points. This EKS has got black shackles breaking, but I don't know if they've lo potentially lost this team fight. As I say this, I see Mo incredibly low. And Rippy, he's in there. Rippy potentially get the kill. Well in. What's he gonna do? He wants Rippy, but he knows that he can't allow himself to get caught out as he's jumping around as well. Black Jackals are in breaking. Black Jackals have lost three. Team killing service are gonna do it. There's only one hero left. It's Will Lin. Probably the most dangerous out of everybody for Black Jackals. But King has come through out of the loser's bracket to go for the grand final reset and finally take the grand finals of the Dominion Series. North America Finals 2-0. It doesn't get better than that. How about them, Apple Sohigi? TKS with $10,000 in their pocket and the best Dominion Series 4 Honor team in North America. Unbelievable. Team Killing Service, your North American champions. You talked about it a little bit earlier in the game. You said Scorpion needed to come alive. He's been a little quiet. Well, there you go. 14 and 4 to close out the day. And I gotta talk about Rippy in that last fight on C. What incredible play. Realizing he was so full on revenge and they had tags on him. He had time to just kind of take a 1v1, even though two of them were there. They ended up messing up their gank. Rippy came up big, stalled for just enough time. And ultimately, the reinforcements came in. Team Killing Service are your champions. Absolutely unbelievable from the lowers. Coming in, got beat, game came back. Unbelievable job. Black Jackals looks absolutely invincible, but that's for honor, baby. It ain't over until the last person falls with the breaking boys. Unbelievable ending, and I am so, so honored to be able to watch that entire series from the redo to the redo to the let's go. I mean, you could say Black Jackals, maybe they got a little tired, maybe they're a little, you know, exhausted. Killing service went in lowers. They came out of the lowers. They went through the reset. They did it all, baby. That is such momentum and such oh, just endurance from this team to take it with an unbelievable victory. Congratulations. Oh, boy. We're supposed to be looking. Jeez. I mean, Humanist. Listen, I've been interrupting you this entire time as kind of a may may, if I may, but not this time, buddy. This will be your last time on the show. We're going to go to the post game. We're going to wrap this whole thing up, the post show. Humanist, this is your moment. I won't interrupt you. Please, please take your time. I, I really don't believe you when you say that, but we'll go ahead and take this moment anyway, Slacks. Uh, what an incredible performance out of Team Killing Service. Uh, you know, I believed in them the whole time. I just had to cast a curse, Black Jackals. Uh, ultimately, Black Jack was a phenomenal team. They could have, if things went their way, they could have been the champions here, but that's not what happened. TKS, I mean, they ground this out so hard. This would just smash mouth for honor, and they did it the hardest possible way they could have done it. So I'm super proud of Team Killing Service, all of these guys, dude. I hope they go and celebrate together after this huge, huge win. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Humanist. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Thank you for casting all day, being our analyst all day. You're an absolute god. So round of applause for our boy Humanist, who deserves just as much praise as Team Killing Service. Now get the hell out of here, yeah. for God's sakes. We're going to the post show. Ah. Let's get ready for action. Where's my helmet? It's time for the post show. <laughs> Oh, welcome. Welcome, friends, to the post show where we're going to talk about not only uh, NA, which is our big focus, but kind of the whole day. We still got Viv and Nas here? Why is it like 4 a.m. in EU? What are you doing here? Jesus. It doesn't welcome matter. I win. Back. <laughs> Finally, the greatest had to gift. Get one. You had to get one. On the last show, the last game. Well done, Viv and my God. Take your moment, sir. Take your moment. Look, everyone's going to have recency bias. I've actually always predicted the, the right winners in all of these situations. TKS, I, you, you know what? I knew they wouldn't fail me. I knew all I had to do was make sure I get the last prediction right. And that's all that people will remember. They'll be like, ah, crap, Vivid Naz, that guy who predicted TKS to win. Yeah, of course, that's me.
It, I, well, you know, if that's all you got, you're known for in your entire career, hats off to you, buddy. Uh, well done. <laughs> that's great. Good for you. So, Inky, uh, before we go and uh, wrap up the day, uh, any words for that series, man? Thank you for all your hard work today, by the way, buddy. Great analytical uh, activities. Uh, well, thank you, sir. You know, I talked to Scorpion before the finals. I said, how you guys feeling? And he told me, he said, we're feeling very confident. We think we can win this thing. And ultimately, it was my bad. I didn't trust him. I thought Black Jackals were going to run away with it, especially after that first series they played. But man, did they ever prove me wrong. What an exciting series to close it out. I couldn't have asked for any more in the grand finals. Just really cool stuff. As a fan of For Honor, I mean, you got to be so excited for that. Absolutely. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a look at that bracket. It's all filled out from both EU and NA, my friends. Time to see where we ended up. And yes, of course, Team Killing Service, a 2-0 in the Grand Finals reset. Uh, an unbelievable story that we've seen a few times, <coughs> something like it, quite like this in For Honor. And uh, I, it just goes to show what a fun eSport this game can be. The resets, the, the breakings, the counter breakings, the overall just excitement of this has been an absolute wonderful day. But of course, we couldn't get any of this done without you guys. Thank you so much to the viewers. Thank you so much to the community. Uh, and thank you to the players. You guys are absolutely incredible. And thank you, of course, to Eastar Studio, who put on this fantastic production, and Ubisoft, who made all this happen. So I'm not going to close us out yet. I'm going to let you guys have your final words. So uh, the floor is yours, please. Uh, so, Hinky, uh, take us out, buddy. How you feeling? Any final words? I'm feeling great. You know, I I think when I first saw For Honor for the first time at E3, I said to myself, this game could be so hyped to watch as an eSport. It was something that I always wanted. I always believed in back in the days where us casters had to let the competitors kill us so we could just cast the game. And it's come such a long way since then. I'm so excited to be able to cast the Dominion series. Uh, I say this all the time. I feel very humbled that the community uh, supports us here as the casters for this. There's a lot of people that could be taking these seats. You know, Norgaz, he did the LCQ. He does a phenomenal job casting. Got to shout him out. A lot of the content creators as well, you know, Freeze, uh, uh, Kenzo, Mr. Sheep. There's so many people. Clutchmeister, of course, who's streaming this game every day. There, there's so many people in this community that could take these seats. Uh, so it's an honor and a privilege to have them. And it's so much fun. Uh, I just hope we have another Dominion series so we can do it all again. Vivid, please take your moment, sir. Please say goodbye. Yeah, it's a, it's a privilege to always do these. Of course, it's very late in the night. So usually if you see fatigue in my eyes, it's usually from passion. I always enjoy doing this. We've been doing this since 2017. I actually got recently was reminded of the first time I ever went casting for For Honor. And honestly, it's been such a journey and such an experience to be able to to be integrated in this community, always come back to this community with open arms. And we couldn't have been able to do this without the support of Ubisoft, uh, E-Stars. And I'd like to shout out a few of the community members that have really made this experience so much better for all of us. Filthy Spaniard, the work that you do has been yes. absolutely incredible. The Dojo has been absolutely awesome. Norgaz for your casting of the NA side. Even though NA doesn't like the stream in general, we always can rely on your content to be there and help us out. Everyone in the community, competitive community, always helping out whenever we have questions. Um, and yeah, for the viewers at home and for always being supportive of us and these tournaments, thank you very much for all of your time. And it's always been such a pleasure casting these. Oh, well, thank you so much, guys, for all the hard work that you did. It was an absolute joy doing the Dominion series with you. Humanist, I know you're still watching out there. Fantastic job from you as well. And thank you, viewers, who have been with us all day. I hope you guys got your skins that you were after. Thank you, Ubi, for putting on the Dominion series. And thanks to E-Star Studio. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. Thank you all for watching so much. We will see you hopefully again. But for now, I gotta go play some pirate. All right, I'll see you guys on the field. Rotate to be for once in your lives. All right, have a good one, everybody. We'll see you next time. Good night.